And here we go. We have lift off. Propulsion continues to be normal. Our CPA chamber pressure looks good. Following up. You know that's what you were waiting for. We were uh, getting our cameras set as well because we have cameras at a completely different angle here. But let me know if you can hear me right now. John Galloway for NSF. And we are looking at a live feed. I guess just five will work. Um, I, we're looking at a live feed of Space Shuttle Endeavor on its final liftoff out here at the California Science Center in LA environments, in, in LA and surrounding areas. How that sound? Maybe 10 by five there. Could be a little bit loud, but I'm sure Kevin will handle that in just a second. And we can see that they are already start, it's LA-ish. There you go, LAS. You can see they're already starting to nose the shuttle up there because they're going to have to get it into the vertical position because they're stacking shuttle Endeavor on a full stack in the flight configuration. It's actually on the other side of the wall here, over to the right-hand side, and you can't quite see the rest of the stack. They've already got two SRBs in there, and they have the big ET, the orange, I guess we can say, it's orange in this live stream. They've already got that stacked over on the right hand side. And so they're what going to what they're gonna do is verticate. Put this shuttle vertical. There we go. That's not a live view. I think that's a photo from earlier or a photo from a couple days ago where they have that ET and the boosters all set. There you go, it's orange. That's what we can say. So that's the plan here. We've got uh, Jack out there as well. Jack's perspective can't actually see the shuttle, but it will be rising over the wall and getting closer to Jack as they pull it towards this full stack. And we figured we would bring y'all some of these live views. Of course, the museum has the live view. What we're seeing right now, you can see the logo on the screen, California Science Center, Sci Science Center, I guess, um, has this feed over on this side. We just had Jack there, so we could only put one camera and we opted to get on the closer side over towards the... Hey, look at that. That's Jack's camera. We might actually have Jock's, Jack uh, as well here. That is our feed from Jack's perspective. And Jack's, we've got a couple cameras there. Jack is actually going to be able to zoom in on his operated camera as the shuttle swings closer. I think... That's the rear crane with the green sling, I think we see there. And then is that the front of the shuttle? Or am I, no, that is a green sling in the back. It is, you can see it right there. And is that the shuttle that's actually rising vertically on the right-hand side of all the scaffolding, potentially? Somebody A-B test that and tell me if that thing's moving. That helicopter in the background's moving. Anyways, folks, that's the plan this evening. We wanted to bring you all some live views. The museum has this fantastic view. Please make sure you go over to the museum's official channel. Follow them on social. We've got some links and stuff like that. Massive thanks to them for supporting us and letting Jack get out there and set up one of our cameras. But we are going to watch this because this is sort of the back view. It's wrapped, by the way. That is Space Shuttle Endeavor, but it's been wrapped to protect it while they had it outside and while it's going through this operation here. You know, I haven't actually seen the underside of it yet. It should whenever it, we should be able to see it when it comes over the wall. But uh, I wonder if they've cut out holes where it's supposed to mount onto the stack or if they're going to certainly they're not going to cut that. Somebody's got to get up there and bolt it. I think we're going to be able to see that as it comes over the other way. 
I'm not sure. I know Jack is going to be super busy out there, so I'm not sure. Yes, a shuttle wrap supreme. Thank you, Corey. Um, I, I don't know if Jack's going to be able to talk with us. We may have the potential to hang out with Jack. We may have some other special guests joining us as well. But for now, since this is the view we have over on this side, we're going to continue watching as the California Science Center verticates. I mean, it was horizontal, rolled over this position, and then moved up vertically. And, uh, oh, Look at this. I think this is some B-roll or something. Is this, this isn't live right now. This is from before. I think that's still from, maybe this is like a roaming camera from their stream. Yeah, because look, the shuttle is up. That looks like they may have a, a roaming camera that's having some problems with stability there, y'all. But look at that. <laughs> that is live right now. There you go. No kidding. Let's hang in there. Again, this, this is probably coming off a cell phone or some sort of a, clearly a mobile camera. You can see how it's moving around here right behind the crane itself. But uh, it looks like there may be some stability problems. Maybe there's like wireless cameras trying to transmit back that are hiccuping a little bit or something like that. But... That is all good. You know something? I appreciate that we have all the, any live coverage of this at all. Look at how it's sort of crinkled up on the side of the shuttle there. I wonder if that's the wrap. Like, I don't know how tight this wrap is, right? Is that the wrap, like, the back of it with the tail looks pretty tight, but is it sort of, like, scooching back as it moves? This is that rooftop camera in the background here. And shortly, we should see it come over the wall, and we should have Jack's view of the underside there. We'll let Jack continue sitting. It's a wrap. It's like the wrap moving around a little bit, right? Um, we'll let Jack continue his setup. He's going to be taking the taking photos and stuff like that. I think he's setting some time ca time lapses and stuff like that as well. But uh, that is the plan here this evening. We don't actually know exactly how long this is going to take. The lift was scheduled to start around 10 p.m. local time, and it's just now. It's 9:59 local time right now. So the lift actually started a little bit earlier than expected, and we don't know exactly how long it's going to take for it to get all the way over the side. But we plan to be here for you for a good amount of time talking about the shuttle. Do I have a friend here with me? Did, I, did somebody just join the chat with me here? It'd be rather rude not to join a stream involving <laughs> the special, so I thought, yeah, might as well join him for a little bit. I mean, we set the stream up for you, Chris. Well, yeah, of course you did, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you could see views of Endeavor. How you doing? I think you um, noted that we're going to see it come over the top into this exhibition, which looks absolutely huge. I'm going on the retirement homes of the shuttles, and you can talk about Intrepid with Enterprise, uh, Jill's with Discovery. Yeah. Um, even the fantastic one, which was the leading one, I would say, the exhibit at KSC Visitor Center for Atlantis. This is probably going to be the best. I, I think this is definitely uh, going to be a challenger against Atlantis over there out at uh, KSCVC. Like, yeah. Atlantis is awesome because it's, like, in the space flight configuration, and it's, like, at a jaunty angle, and it's elevated up. It's got the stars behind it and stuff. But, uh, I, I mean, I, I don't know. A full stack might be even cooler. I may have several shuttle factoids during this. Uh, one of them being uh, Endeavor also, I guess, wow, their camera is all over the place, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, that's cool. We we appreciate them. We appreciate them rolling those cameras out. We need shuttle factoids, though, Chris. It actually is very close up to the show, so that's quite impressive. It's going to be great to see this because this is also being shrink wrapped the same as Atlantis was when she was sent to her exhi exhibition. So it's obviously learned some lessons to protect the TPS and all the workings of the show. So that's an important thing, especially when you're talking about. What is history? And I think people in decades to come will still be looking back on the space shuttle missions, probably with a lot of lessons learned, as we're probably exploring towards City on Mars. But a factoid is, en Endeavour gets the privilege of being the one shuttle that's back in the birthplace of the space shuttle, because all the space shuttles were built in Palmdale, in California. That's right. 
And folks, real quick, uh, if you're just joining us, these are live views from the California Science Center out in L.A. Some of these, when you see their logo on the screen, that's their stream. They've actually got a couple different cameras out there. I think I saw a drone camera. Um, there is a little bit of stuttering and maybe some bitrate issues there, but appreciate the museum getting these feeds spooled up. And we do have our own camera as well if we could really quickly switch over to our view because i want to point out where this is going and why we've set it up this way here we go all right so do you see in the scaffolding the srbs or there's one srb sort of towards us here and you can see the orange et there next to the srb and then you don't see the file with the shuttle on the left hand side and the rest of the stack on the right hand side that's why we set up here in the beginning a little bit tough to see the shuttle you can see it in the background there in that shot behind the scaffolding but as these cranes do their work we're going to get the primo there you go just zooming in for us a little bit we're going to get the primo shot here as it comes around the side and the fun thing is that is actually a real external tank that's not something they've mocked up. That is a real external tank that they've got and they're going to make with Endeavour. So if anyone ever wants to go and visit a space shuttle and see a full stack, this is the one to see. It's really going to be something on my own bucket list. I'm going to tell you that straight away. It really is cool. Look at the helicopters going in the background there as well. <laughs> but thats it looks like it's starting to maybe go to the left a little bit, right, Chris? I would thought so, yeah. It's, it's a question of when we'll see it come rising over the side here. And um, th again, I think one thing people do not appreciate, especially um, people who might be getting to spaceflight just now recently with the big rockets and whatever, is the spatial orbiter was very large itself. Surprisingly large. People tend to think it's like a small plane because it's a, 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 the, the shape of it is like a small plane. It's not like a Boeing. It's like it's squashed up, but it's actually really large. The thing to appreciate about a spatial orbiter is it was a space truck. It was not just some like space plane with passengers on board. The flight deck and the mid deck was where the crew were. That was a pressurized section. But the cargo bay is pretty much most of what you can see there being lifted by the crane. That was where Schultz capability came in because it could lift so much payload and bring it back down to Earth. We've still not got that capability back. They can still not bring back that kind of down mass from the ISS. Yep. It would take about 20 dragons to do that in comparison to what the spatial could do. So it did have some amazing capabilities. It really does. Plus the fact it comes down to that nice landing on the runway, right? As opposed to splashing into the ocean or, I guess, <laughs> impacting the desert relatively in <laughs> difficultly, I guess. Um, anyways... So there you go, folks. You can actually see this is 90 degrees from where we are. You can see the two SRBs on the side and then the ET in the middle there. Chris, it, uh, the, the SRBs clearly aren't going to be loaded, right? They don't no. have actual loaded SRBs. But are is this all certified hardware? Like, is it hardware that could have flown at one point? Yep, you're going to send me down a rabbit hole about the SRBs now because Do it. <laughs> the SRBs were classes reusable. They always said, oh, the SRBs are reusable because we bring them back from the ocean and we reuse them. It was never that really that simple. What they would do is they'd bring them back. They would then take them to take them apart into the segments and then clean out the casings. So all that was really left was the motor end and the casings. And that's what you're seeing now. You're seeing the casings being reassembled to represent a stacked booster. And that's basically how they always did it in the special program as it was. You actually found mismatches with the casings. You'd see... Um, casing numbers for like STS-133 would include casings from five missions ago, 10 missions ago, 15 missions ago, and they would mix and match them. There was never the same booster flying twice in in respect of that. So that's what we're seeing. We're seeing empty casings, but flight flown casings, so that's cool. Flight flown casings. The, the ET, I think the ET was actually... Is it ET-94? I had the statistics somewhere because I, I yep. read all the press information and stuff like that. It's, it's an actual ET, right? Yeah. Obviously not flown, because boys and girls, if it had flown, it would be in re-entry and burned up over the Indian Ocean by now. So that's where it is a spare... There's a couple of them, actually. There's a, there's a couple of uh, spare ETs, as we call them, 
which were uh, basically never used. But that is luckily they've got one of them because they're not going to build any more. Do I don't think they've even got the capability of building another one if they wanted to, because the Mashoud assembly facility where they were built is now being retooled for yeah. SLS. You know, hey, looking at the uh, the ET there, like some of the phone looks different. Uh, the foam actually looks different. We've got the orange foam on the top, but then we've got the lighter colored foam. Do you know if they've had to recoat part of this, or why does that, is that just like a protective cover they put on while they're doing this operation? I wonder. It's not what a normal external tank would look like on the pad. It, they actually come out that color, the interstage. You can see there. You, that, that's a color they leave the machine assembly facility looking like. The, like yeah, the that lighter color. color. Yeah. yeah. And then they take them out to the pad, and the sunlight actually tans the firm. Yeah. That's why they go more and more orange. So that's a mismatch. I don't know if that's just being paid for the exhibit or if it's actually just um, the way they've tried to reapply some firm. You can see on the backside there, look, you see it is there more one color on the backside, so it looks like they've done some modifications to it. Yep, yep. And maybe that's for they had to re redo some of it, or I wonder if this is, it looks very orange, Chris. I wonder yep. if this is naturally aged foam, or if this has been redone in such a way to make it the orange color. It looks that very does, orange. That doesn't look natural to me from the external tanks I've seen out of the pad where they've gone orange through tanning process. So it looks like it's had a bit of um, cosmetic work done to it. Sorry about that for a second there. Um, it sounds like there may have been some explanation happening on the live stream with with the science center there but i don't know that i don't know if y'all heard that or not i definitely heard it in my ear because i'm watching both streams at the same time so um chris we still got you yeah all right so that's the plan okay stream didn't hear that i just had that really loud in my ear all of a sudden i was like what just so happened? did i so did I, I <laughs> okay you quiet. heard it too okay i heard it i heard it too and i did not want to talk in case i was talking over somebody commentating so there we go <laughs> okay good deal uh so there you can see the la skyline in the background the shuttle basically fully vertical in this lifting system chris like this is a system that they used when they would integrate the shuttle onto the stack in the vab Right? Yeah, like the shuttle had these rotation attach points on it so that they could do specifically this, right? It's very similar, but I don't think it's exactly similar. I think they've actually made this out of that experience. It's the same attach point, so obviously that's why they designed it that way. But the way a spatial orbiter would be stacked at VAB in KSC is it'd roll out of the OPF on wheels on. Which yep. is, sorry, no, off, we're not on the wheels on. They would take it out on a transporter that's now been retired and then taken by SpaceX. So if you see that transporter with a little cab at the front with lots and lots of wheels taking falcon boosters around that's what used to transport the space shuttles out from the opf into the vab then they'd attach this sling they would raise it off the transporter it was called the orbiter transporter system that's ots as we called it it would hang there for a while then it'd be rotated to this orientation you see right now yep they would then hold it there for half a day while they took detailed photography of the tps on the belly because that photography would then be compared with a photography from the ISS on day three, where they did the RPM with a little flip under the station, and see if any of the tiles looked different from when it was on the ground. And that's where they knew if they had damage or not. Literally, that's how they did it. And once they'd then finished the photography, they'd lift it higher, as they're doing now. They'd take it over the transfer aisle, into the, into the high bay, lower it down onto the external tank, as they're going to do with this situation here. But very, very similar. Very similar. Not yep. sideways, but similar, and then mate it that way. That's called ETSRB Orbiter Mate Operations. There you go. All right. And I guess I guess it's not the exact same lifting jig, I guess, maybe. But the shuttle had these attach points in it because they had to move it like this when they were rolling it around horizontally versus putting it vertically on the stack, right? Yeah, I'm frantically Googling. <laughs> in, fact, I'm, in fact, I'm not just Googling, I'm looking through our own collection here to see if it is the same one. I just can't imagine that after all these years, it still exists. The way that the Perth shuttle was called TNR, T uh, Transition and Retirement Operations. Yep. They scrapped so much history. I was like cringing at some of the things I was hearing they were scrapping. And I've got a funny feeling the actual original sling was, was scrapped. This looks pretty new, yep. but it obviously is based on, this, on the actual attach point, so it's the same kind of design. 
Makes sense. Again, folks, if you're just joining us, uh, the live views, well, I jinxed it. I said live views. Um, the views we've got are coming both from the California Science Center. They set up multiple cameras and they're sharing those online. And we've got our own cameras here as well. This, when you see their logo on the screen, that is one of the cameras they're providing. And when you don't have that logo there, that's one of the cameras that Jack has set up over there. And again, they've got this great shot of the shuttle from this perspective. And when it makes it over this wall, it's going to get into the construction area i guess over near the stack and that is when oh that's a drone shot i think that's also from the science center and it will be coming our way alongside the full stack here chris do we have more uh, shuttle information shuttle trivia I could talk a lot about Endeavour's missions. I mean, I mean let's you know. face it, yeah. The, the big thing about Endeavour's history is that she was not built as the original plan. The original plan involved the orbiters they had, then they lost Challenger. And the United States decided, well, we can't operate with the Iranian shuttles. We need another shuttle back. And they literally made Endeavour out of flight spares. There's very little brand new on Endeavour. Most of it was flight spares that they put together and yep. created the Orbiter Endeavour from. It's cheaper, so everyone liked the idea of it being cheaper, but it made sense also because they knew that those spares were designed very much for the other Orbiters, and that means they could do another mirror Orbiter almost. And that's what Endeavour became. And the first flight wasn't until ooh, STS-49, I'm thinking off the top of my head, 1992. And that was pretty much um, after a flight readiness firing, which was a rare thing because that was only for new orbiters. So that was like a brand new thing after many, many years that did a, uh, pretty much a static fire test. I like bringing it up on the Starbase coverage because we talk about static fires. Really? The static fires? Yeah, yep. even the space shuttle did a static fire. Literally sat on the pad. It was hilarious because they sat on the pad for about 30 seconds. And you can imagine the twang they get from the six seconds yep. during a launch. This... After they finished the flight readiness firing, the, the orbiter was swaying backwards and forwards for a good 10 minutes. Oh, before it just settled. Yeah, it really, luckily there was no one on board because that had been quite a, a roller coaster, but uh, that's how yeah. they did it. They had to static fire the brand new orbiters. No kidding. It looks like it's going pretty well here so far. Um, the cranes are moving along. They've got, I guess at some point, maybe that crane in the back isn't going to be needed anymore. And it'll just all be on the one big crane, the taller crane. I don't know if that other, oh, look. Live views from the crane operator who has like a joystick there that's controlling something. It really is cool to see behind the scenes stuff like that. I, I actually, there's some photos of, uh, oh, I'm, not sure what that was. That must have been something from the drone point of view there, like a green booster in the middle of everything. But uh, as they were moving this thing around, we saw some of our favorite uh, ground movement <clears throat> devices that we see around Starbase all the time. They were actually moving this thing with what seemed to be SPMTs. They had a few of those multi-wheel self-propelled modular transporters, and it was interesting because they, they had the SPMTs broken up into multiple sets where they could like independently move the shuttle. I guess they had some tight corners or something like that that they needed to get around. But uh, seeing the controller, seeing the crane, seeing all the specialized hardware that actually moves this shuttle around, it, I, I think it's accurate to say it's the last time we're ever going to see a vehicle like this lifted in this manner. Oh, without hey, can question. you hear me? Oh, hello, oh, Jack. No way, it's Jack. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you're right. This is probably, I mean, when, it, when else would it happen? And there's no other vehicle like this on the books. So, yeah, this is pretty special. How you doing out there, Jack? Thank you so much for getting all this stuff rolled out so we can, uh, we can share some views. Yeah, no worries. Um, I'm doing great. This is such, like, I'm, I'm almost at a loss for words. It's so beautiful. It's so crazy that we have the ability to stand right here. It's very nice to the Science Center for letting the media be right where we are. Um, and once this thing comes over the wall, <laughs> it's, I mean, there's going to be a space shuttle hanging in the air. And what do you even say to that? That's, this is so cool. <laughs> Jack, Jack, did you... Go ahead, Chris. So, uh, Jack, just from people who have never met a space shuttle, um, were you surprised by the size of it? I always find that people see a special for the first time, the orbiter that is, they're quite surprised by the size of it. Were you surprised at the scale of it? I mean, it's like a, it's like a space bus, <laughs> a space school bus, but bigger, obviously. I don't know. I, I, not really, but 
I'm, I mean, I grew up in Florida. I saw a bunch of shuttle launches as a kid. Um, and I've, I've obviously, I've been to the Endeavor exhibit before they um, were doing all this, you know, when it's just was so, sort of sitting in a hangar and you could walk all around it. It was really, honestly, really cool. Um, I'm going to miss it being horizontal like that, but not, not for long. Once it comes around the corner and we see this thing stacked, it's, yeah, I mean, shuttle is big. To answer your question, Chris, shuttle is very big. Um, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe my uh, my senses have been blunted by Starship. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd love to see, like, the, uh, you know, we see it in the, the illustrations sometimes. I think when we did the last flight for Starship, we had the size comparison. We had, like, the outlines of the different right. vehicles next to the Starship stack. And the shuttle was big, but because of the way it was arranged with the SRBs on the side and then the ET and the shuttle hanging off one side of it, right? It wasn't as tall as anywhere near as tall as Starship. Um, so just the sense of scale and stuff like that is definitely a thing you can only get. Did you get an opportunity, Jack, to move down to a different viewing location? Like, are you down next to the shuttle now or are you still up where no, the cameras no, are? I'm I'm next to where the cameras are. I didn't have uh, I didn't have time. I was busy trying to get a couple different cameras set up. I have a um, an R5 with a 16 millimeter lens doing an 8K time lapse. Nice. So that should be pretty cool. Even it's here's your here's a nice callback to Chris's question. Even uh, at 16 millimeters on a full frame camera, I can't like I can just barely get the whole thing in there. Um, so I should have brought a wider lens is the moral of the story. <laughs> they, they let you, they let you get too close. Like you thought you were going to be further away in the spot that yeah, the right. museum gave you to see this thing happen is uh, too close for your lens. Huh? Yeah. If you're looking at my shot, um, that is a 24 millimeter lens and you can see like, it, that's not even, that's not even close. But what the cool thing about it is we can go, Hey, let's look at the orbiter and zoom right in on it. So, Nice. Look at this. We've got some uh, lift action happening. I guess, I, I wonder if they're, are they looking at maybe the rear sling? Because that lift is sort of up near the aft part where that other crane connects. I really wonder if they're going to disconnect that rear crane and then just have it on the big yellow crane. And maybe that lift is in position to look at that or approach that or something like that. I'm not exactly sure what they're going to do. Uh, we don't have that specific information that they're going to do with the lift itself here. But anyways, folks, thanks for hanging out. They will disconnect the rear crane. I really do think they're going to disconnect the rear crane because I can't see that rear crane following over the, the wall and into the construction zone here. Like, I don't really see how that would work. So... Hey, Jack, don't, stand by. Don't, please don't reboot the pack. Don't don't reboot the pack, Jack. I hope you heard me. I I I, I did, and I already. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. All good. We'll see what happens when it comes back up. Um, in any event, we're gonna continue sharing these views with y'all, folks watching from wherever you're watching from. Thank you for joining us. But hey, also make sure you check out the museum's official channels. They have their own YouTube channel where they've been putting a ton of behind the scenes information. Oh, here we go. Look, we got the zoom and they're <laughs> going to be disconnecting the rear crane, I guess, huh? Wow. Um, please make sure that you give them a follow on their social media channels. We've got some links in chat that y'all can check out as well. But that's what's happening this evening. Literally like getting ready to pull the pins, it looks like. Yeah, this is different from a special <laughs> situation. You would not have this happening, but... It's it's great close ups this because there's a lot of responsibility involved in this. This is something they can't repeat. If they drop it, they can't go back and get another one. I think that that's that's definitely a true statement. If they drop it, they can't go get another one. Yeah, it was the same story at the KFC. I remember a lot of quite nervous special workers who said that some of the most nervous points were not the launch, which is something that always gave me nerves. It was the actual mating process because you can imagine the issues they'd have if they had a problem during a lift yep. with a flight orbiter. I mean, you that is, you know, that would have been seriously bad. And there was a lot of time taken over this. This process itself, we see right now, is not unique. It is very unique to this lift process. Is not this would not happen in the VAB. 
did they did they have like the the gantry that they used to lift it where it would just stay attached the entire time while it was moved around because they yeah. did, didn't use two cranes or how was it different? They did use two cranes. Um, okay. In the VAB, uh, you'd see them. One was on a lower level, still high up because it was the VAB, and one at top level. And that was the way they would translate it from uh, horizontal, the initial lift, and then sling it out until it's vertical, and then they'd bring it over the top of the transfer aisle. You could see the two cranes moving with it. No kidding. And they had a bunch of, they didn't have a big, I guess, construction crane or, or crane that's like outside. The crane that would do this was actually the huge gantry crane or yeah. bridge crane in the VAB itself. Bridge crane. And I remember when they brought it down from the roof for maintenance, it is a massive piece of hardware. It really was impressive. You could see that it was basically had the capability of um, lifting not just the orbiter, but of course the external tank as well, because that was a big piece of hardware they had to do. As they've had to do it this, um, for this um, here as well. amazing yeah, situation with the full stack, it's the first time they've had to do that for an exhibition. So it's, it's an impressive piece of um, stacking they're doing with all of this. And <laughs> I'm bringing up some wonderful <laughs> this, The this... nose-to-nose photo. Yeah. That's why I was pausing because I knew it was coming. Um, <laughs> this is this was Endeavour and Atlantis um, in a dance off outside the VAB. <laughs> <In a dance-off. laughs> I joke, but that is literally how it was advertised to us at the time by the shuttle people. You've got to understand <laughs> that the space shuttle workers they treated these orbiters like their own children, and I'm not even being I'm not even exaggerating in this because it was a wonderful thing that always resonated me in my early days of covering the space shuttle was the way the engineers would talk about the orbiters they would use the word her and she and they right. would say you know they care about them uh, we've had a few people say you can't call them she's these that's literally a, a naval term that goes back in history it's a historical thing but yep. it was applied to the space shuttle as a ship Endeavour and they had the both teams out and they had the teams for Atlantis on one side and the teams for Endeavour on the other side and literally they were their teams and it, it is a, a beautiful thing where just during the transition retirement process, they thought they had this opportunity during the, the sw- switch rounds um, to actually get them to both meet up. The, the other time that happened was Enterprise and Discovery at Jules when Discovery arrived and they swapped places because obviously Enterprise was leaving yep. and going to the um, Intrepid Museum. So it, it was it was a wonderful opportunity to do. And there's, there's a few little um, Easter eggs in this that Endeavour had some special wheel caps. Oh! This Look at this. Bring it up. It looks like they've got the uh, the aft spreader disconnected there. I guess they didn't have to mallet the pins out or anything like that. Because that big piece for the other smaller crane is now swinging away. There we go. That looks like it is successfully disc. Look, it's got little wheels so they can set it down, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So that looks like good progress. Uh, the entire orbiter is now suspended by the one main crane, and they should be ready to get the smaller uh, helper crane out of the way. I bet you those lifts are going to move out of the way as well, and hopefully we get Endeavor coming around the <laughs> coming around the mountain, coming around the side <laughs> of the stack in view of our other camera that uh, Jack is set up with over here. I'm just sort of, I mean, I, Chris, I don't even have the panel up. Um, I'm not pulling questions right now because we were doing a bunch of tech troubleshooting there at the beginning. But he, here was a question that I saw in our back channel. Do we know, was the propellant in the SRBs mm-hmm. part of the structure that held the shuttle up? Oh. Like, um, could empty SRBs hold the shuttle up? And I really wonder if they've had to reinforce these SRB casings. I, I wonder. Do you I'm know? Gonna, I'm going to say they've reinforced them. I I never have had that question before. I, That's amazing. Someone, I always challenge people to give me a short question I might not know. There um, you go. Th- it was solid propellant and literally burned from the center outwards. It's, yep. People think it emptied like from the bottom all the way up to the top. No, it actually burned from the center. There was actually a, a gap in the middle of the SRBs yep. in the propellant and it would burn outwards. And that's when they were expanded. Um, I'm trying to think if it was if it was on the shuttle launch pad without that propellant in it. Remember, the space shuttle was held up at the launch pad via the hull down points. The bolts literally bolted to the launch pad at the SRB points at the yep. bottom of the SRB, and they would blur. They had a frangible nut. It was a massive frangible nut that they actually blew. 
yep. at T zero to release the spare shuttle stack. So that is something that makes me think if it was empty casings and all that weight, especially to the side, because the orbit is on the side. Yep. I, I'm going to find out. I'll find out. Whoever asked that question, DM me <laughs> on X and I will get back to you and I'll ask one of the shuttle guys because I'm thinking it's got to be reinforced. Yep. It really and has to be. There you go. You can see the uh, way they've got it installed. That's the future. Uh, that's the future home of the exhibit. That is the exhibit. It's just not done yet. The building's not done because they're putting the shuttle in this stacked configuration and they're going to build the building around it. And look at this. The first step of the process, they had this big foundation in. They put the aft skirts for the SRBs down onto that foundation and then they put the rest of the casing, the bodies of the SRBs on top of that. So if the propellant inside the SRBs was part of the structural support, like the fact that that was there when it took the weight of the shuttle in the ET and everything like that, if that was important to holding up the shuttle, certainly they've had to do some sort of reinforcement in the inside of these casings. They would yeah. have never, like you would have never had, except for maybe fit checks for non-flight articles, empty SRB casings in the VAB that they attached the shuttle to. Question exactly. mark. I don't know if that's true, but I assume that that's true. Also, the fact is that it wouldn't have welded those casings together for an actual flight SRB because they do design to take them apart. That's ah. the whole idea of taking them apart. For this case, I would have thought they'd at least weld them all together So that because there's no need to take the casings apart anymore. It's yep. part of the um, exhibit. So I'm thinking it'd be interesting to find out if anyone there knows because... I, I'm quite interested in this now. <laughs> I want to know myself. I really want to know. We should ask. I, Jack, I, I know Jack is super busy over there. I don't know if Jack um, has the capability to ask anybody if there's like a PAO or, or media escort or something like that that he could he could talk to. But uh, Jack, if there is somebody that we could ask some questions to, it would be really interesting to toss some of those questions in. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Yeah, good deal. Um, can you see it yet, Jack? Is it coming around your way yet? It looks like the lifts are still inspecting it here. Oh, yeah, I can see it. Um, and it, it's like that, that other crane has already moved away, as you saw. So yep. it looks, looks like they're slowly, maybe they're just hanging out right now. But I'm excited for when it starts coming around, coming around the mountain. <laughs> coming coming around, around the, the mountain. Now I'm stuck on that. I, I thought coming around the mountain once, and that's all I can yeah. think of every time I think about yeah, it. Yeah, you, you got it stuck in my head. Thank you for that. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, good no, deal. This is, this, is, this is really cool. Um, yeah. and that's Jack's hopefully camera. Hopefully get a really good view underneath it, like as it's coming down. That's what I'm, because, you know, we can take a look. Because you're yeah. going to have to lift it over that wall. We should get a pretty good view. Yep. And again, if we if we hop back to Jack's camera, there we go. Um, this is Jack's view here, and you can see the top. That's actually the flight deck just sticking around the corner, the, the nose coming around as well. And as the big main crane does this lift, it's going to be swinging the shuttle closer to Jack's position here, and it's going to come right up next to him. And Jack has the ability to zoom in and look about look at look at different things that are happening as the shuttle gets closer to us. I I want to believe like it's coming out to the left a little bit slowly, but maybe that's just me wanting to believe that it's moving. <laughs> no, I was, I was doing the same thing. I don't think it's, I don't think it's moving right now. Yeah. Um, if you like pick one part of the structure and one part of the wrap and just stick your eyes on it, it's, it's, it's stable. Yep. Yep. Um, we've got a couple different things we can show here, folks, as we wait for the movement to sort of pick back up again. Shuttle Endeavor is in the air. There you go. Look at that. Um, Shuttle Endeavor is in the air. And let's see if we can't talk through a couple different things here. So we were talking, we were talking about how they actually mounted it. And these are the steps that they went through in order to install it here vertically. Like Chris mentioned, the entire shuttle stack would sit on those SRBs, right, Chris? Like they'd be yeah. bolted down to the pad by the tail end of the SRBs, right? Yep, that was all supporting it. It was on the M mobile launch platform, the LMP, which I can never pronounce. Yep, yep. <laughs> Put the teeth back in. But it was very important to note that that is why it also allowed it to twang when the SR when the SSMEs lit up at T ah. minus six point six seconds. That sensor would then thrust it forward slightly. It would twang back on these bolts, holding the SRBs and holding the entire stack. And then the command at T0 would be to fire the bolts with a frangible nut, and that yep. released the stack. It happened every single time that they released 
via these bolts being exploded. Yep. If those bolts had not fired, you're going to have the aft of the SRBs ripped off, and ripped that would off. have not ended well. So amazing how it overworked every time. They obviously <laughs> knew what they're doing, but that's what held it up. That Literally all that weight was held up. A full external tank of propellant, the orbiter, which is not light, yep. and full SRBs, which are extremely heavy, were released from bolts, literally bolted to the launch pad. Yep. And th this is this is something that I, I think a lot of people don't understand. You see the massive crawler transporter that NASA would use to move the shuttle stack out, right? And the reason the crawler transporter is so massive is because when they moved it, the SRBs were full. They had their propellant in it. You look at Starship. Starship is so huge, and they can move it down the public highway using just commercially available little crawler things, right? Like little SPMTs. It's really impressive that they're able to move the Starships the way that they do, but the Starships don't have any fuel in them. And yep. when they moved the shuttle, those SRBs were fully fueled and at full weight. So... Nowadays, here on this deck, they are not fueled anymore. Like we were talking about, maybe they needed to uh, reinforce them or something like that. But they put down those aft skirts, they bolted them into that massive foundation. And remember, there's a lot of special stuff about this as well, because California and earthquakes, how they vibration damp the entire exhibit, the entire structure from the shaking of earthquakes. There's an entire thing. We almost need to get an earthquake engineer on to talk about that. But they have to think about that. They put the big casings of the SRBs vertical on the sides there and after they got that done they brought up the did they do the nose cones or the et next i don't know what the next image is going to be let's see nose cones all right cool we've added the nose cones to the top of it there um after they got the nose cones installed they brought the et over and they mounted there you go the orange et in between the two and what we're standing by for right now what we see in the multiple cameras kevin's showing off over here because uh, we've got multiple cameras on the right hand side what we're seeing happen there is the shuttle being moved into this final position and when they're done with it it's it's flight config is the way I've seen it referred to it is going to be the space shuttle endeavor in its flight configuration big et the two SRBs, the shuttle itself, they'll get the wrap off of it. It'll have the battle damage from all of its flights. I say battle damage. Um, I like to think of it as the shuttles that flew into space did battle with orbit, did battle with space, did battle with reentry. You can see the scars. You can see the burns on the heat tiles. Just what happened to them as they dealt with those environments. You'll see it like that on the stack like it was getting ready to fly out of the cape. Right, Chris? Yep. Uh, actually, the <laughs> actual orbiter engineers would call them the battle scars. Thank you. So the you battle were scars. you were totally right. Yeah, battle scars. The battle will... scars of reentry. It's it's amazing to see if you go to a museum and you see flown hardware. You see one of the Apollo capsules that brought astronauts back down from the trips to the moon. You see the shuttles that brought astronauts back down from their jobs in orbit, and you see the scarring and like the heat streaks and stuff like that. And it just it looks like that thing could tell you some stories. For now, we have to tell you the stories. The shuttle can't talk. They've got it wrapped. Yeah, that's part of what I was talking about when I said I'm going to miss the, the the old way they displayed it with it sitting horizontal. Um, because it really just felt wild to be able to walk right under it, all around it, in the yep. entire room it was in. It was really neat. So uh, I, I do think, but Jack... At the same time, having a full stack is that much cooler, right? Yep. If if I'm not mistaken, the exhibit in the end will actually have viewing platforms at various levels where you can still get sort of up close in the personal. I don't think you're going to be limited to standing on the ground looking up at the majesty of the shuttle, which is going to be really cool to see, right? Um, but I do think they're going to have various levels that you can go to and look at different parts of the shuttle up close. Not the same as walking around all underneath it, but it will be cool to be able to get to those different levels. Yeah, and I mean, like you said, it's it's really a battle scarred vehicle. I mean, it, it's it's shown that it's space flown, yeah. um, and to be able to see all of those little details is really neat. And also, sort of neat to think about in in context of Starship because obviously tiles, um, not the same exact material, but still, it, it, it's interesting to think about you know a battle a battle worn, so to speak, uh, yep. Starship after a whole bunch of reflights. They're, they're going to look cool, um, and this is kind of a cool way to wrap your head around what that might look like once you are able to see a vehicle like this up and up close good deal hey chris if you can uh 
cover for a second. I'm going to see if I can bring up one more camera that Jack has deployed out there. I can, but you're leaving the audience with me talking about shells. So oh, you can no. take it for 30 minutes if you want. <laughs> Chat, are you all okay with that? If, if Chris <laughs> just talks about shuttles while we look at a shuttle that's being moved in real life here, is, are you all cool with that? Just let us know. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to thank some people. I can see in um, chats we had some support. Again, we appreciate every single time. It's not expected all the time, but it is appreciated. Oh, look, we've got pictures we can actually talk about. This was uh, Endeavour's <laughs> birthplace in Palmdale. Now, obviously, at this point, they'd stopped building orbiters because Endeavour was obviously brought back after Challenger. But they had Palmdale to do what was called orbiter modifications. And all the orbiters got their glass cockpits at Palmdale. Uh, via ferry flights to California. And this is the first parts of Endeavour being built. Uh, literally, they were taking the spares and working out. They did have to put some new parts in, but most of it was actual flight, uh, actual spares from orbiters, which were donated towards Endeavour's birth, which was incredible because it was something they were obviously planning to do. Um, unfortunately, the loss of Challenger resulted in, in NASA saying, well, we still need the fleet of orbiters required, which means Endeavour's there. Now, you can see there, you can see major MOD. They were literally there using this place as a facility to modify, like a service, almost when you take your car in after a certain amount of time for a service. That's what Palmdale was used for, but there you can see Endeavour on the left-hand side. And that is orbiter modification for 105, and that is what Endeavour was, OV-105. So that is what they use the facility for. Um, that's a lovely photograph. Back when she was a baby, as we say, again, people might say I'm being a little bit soppy there, but trust me, if you could get a chance to talk to the orbiter engineers with a space shuttle program, they would say these things, and it's rubbed off on me. It literally is. I, I like to represent what the engineers thought of the space shuttles because I think it was very rarely translated into the public, but I think it was important that they cared so much about these vehicles that a lot of the times they could have had problems they were solved because of the care and attention that were given to the orbiters. There you can see what was called the MDD, which is the Mate D-Mate device, as they called it, and that's how they inserted the orbiter on top of a SCA, which was a modified 747. Really great because they would lift it up, not, not in the same kind of crane lift that we're seeing right now, but in a sling again. And then the 747, the SEA, would roll underneath and it made it on top, on the on tra 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 points on top of the, um, the plane. And then that's how they'd ferry trip them. I think the next picture actually shows... There we go. There's NASA 911. The other one was NASA 905. There's actually some plane buffs who like to fight between these two planes. Which one's better? <laughs> I don't suppose to get involved in that. But it was the two SEAs, which have both been retired. Which is the now. one... Which is the one in Palmdale? Uh, I should know this. You should know this, Jack. In fact, I'll, I'll give you a chance to try and find out, because I'm not totally sure. I think it... Chat, can you help me out? Which one is... Um, where are the two orbiters now? I know 905 has got the meatball, it says Eric Fraser. Um, also, yeah, the, the cool thing about these planes was the extra stability they had with the tail end. Look, you can see the two little things. I've actually got a model of an SCA, and... It's beautifully impressive. 905 is in Texas. Yeah, 905 is in Houston, so it's 911 um, out in California. There we go. Thank you, chat. Very well done. All right, well, I, I, was, I was going to say the, the best one is the one, one that... Because one of them is being displayed with an orbiter on its back right now, right? That's the one in Houston, yeah. I think that, I think that might be the best one. Oh, there we go. I know it's, it's weird, actually, because right. I remember talking through the SCAs and I didn't think there was that much difference. There is some differences between the two. but um, Although I do, I do like the boxy tail fin, or the boxy horizontal stabilizer. Like, for whatever reason, that look uh, is just kind of... It just looks right. It did. I, I love the actual orbiters that landed in California because it meant a ferry flight was required. And there's something beautiful about seeing a piggyback ride of a special orbiter on the back of a 747. It was super right. impressive, and they had to do several stops to get. They couldn't do a single flight to KSC. They were using so much fuel up. They did plan to have a refueling plane for this, by the way, but they scrapped the idea in the end. But the alternative plan was to land on several stops, including like Briggs in Texas and places like that, and that's how they'd refuel and then over overnights. And you'd see crowds, and I'm talking huge crowds, and I'm not even exaggerating. 
of people outside the gate of where they were landed just to take pictures of the orbiter. It was their chance to get close to an orbiter when they landed during the refueling stops. And then eventually get yeah. back to the shore landing facility at KC. And I love the idea that sometimes the pilots would think it was a good idea to do a very, very, very low fly approach to the uh, shore landing facility and do a fly past. And that was like a special treat when we saw that happen. And they did it for the last flights, the last ferry flights. They did fly pasts. Very low. I mean, Jack, I hope you saw them because they were like 100 feet off the ground. And they were just with a big orbiter on the back of the plane. And they were doing these low fly pasts. And it was one of the most impressive sights I've seen. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I unfortunately never got to see it. But I, I can imagine just how crazy that would be. The other thing about Endeavour as well, the impressive thing about Endeavour was when she arrived in california for this very event we're seeing now many many years ago they took endeavor through the streets of los angeles and they had a route planned but they knew they'd have to really sort of like think on their feet as they're bringing her through the streets of los angeles down these streets they were cutting tr parts of trees down just to make sure the wingspan could fit and it was absolutely incredible just to watch this massive amount of crowd it was so impressive because i loved both the arrival into Los Angeles, they did a full, full tour, Hollywood sign, San Francisco Bridge, Golden Gate Bridge, they went past that, they went past all the landmarks. That observatory, you will know the name of the observatory, Drac, is it Griffin, Griffiths? Griffith Park, yeah, Griffith Park Thank Observatory. You. Or maybe they it's just Griffith around. Observatory. The crowds, again, and this, this is what's something that kind of pleased my heart, because it's a special. I know probably a lot of them were just like, it's big, special, we're going to see it fly past, but there were so many people out I think they said there was a million people watching it, and NASA TV live streamed it. This was back when NASA live streaming anything other than the launch was rare. They live streamed everything from chase planes to the T 38s that are following. They had so many views, and all the crowds below, I was like, this is incredible. The turnout they got for Endeavour before she landed at LAX was just wonderful. And then they took the trip through the streets of Los Angeles with people on their roofs watching it go by and you know i sometimes i like to think back to when i go to the falcon heavies made in flight as something to sort of like pump you up because it's just so insp inspirational but that is one of my go-to videos as well because it, it was just a cool thing to see but also the amount of interest in crowds out there i i think that's something right. where the space shuttle is no longer but i think there's people in here right now who probably identify with this that it was an incredible period for spaceflight where risk was taken because this is a risky it was always a risky vehicle and we're into a more safer era not purely safe because it never purely safe but a safer era of spaceflight and you can look back on the space shuttle program and saying that's where we learned the hard lessons that has made things safer now because there's no chance they would take those kind of risks now where they had to because there was no alternative. Now they've got the alternatives and it's a lot safer. I'm still working on this other camera. I'll keep, I'll keep talking then. That's fine. <laughs> you'll, you'll keep talking, but I'm, I'm still working on this other camera with Jack. Right. Actually, I have a shuttle question, Chris. Okay. Yep. <laughs> uh, so... What was the shuttle that landed at White Sands? Was that Columbia? STS-3, Columbia. Thank you. A question I can answer on, like, Brady's question. <laughs> 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 Brady, Google. Um, Find a question that Chris won't be able to answer about special. <laughs> and he got me. But, yeah, that was STS-3. Um, um, it was shuttle Columbia. And there's some stories behind that one because the crew got extremely sick during the mission. The water was tainted. For some reason, they're drinking water, portable water, to call it. And the crew got very, very sick. And then they did an auto landing test. And the auto landing test went a little bit wrong because they came in way too fast. So when they did take over for the actual where they were literally just rolling on the main gear and went to lower the nose gear, they were too fast. So they pulled it back and did a wheelie and then landed fine, safe. Everything went well. But yeah, if you ever go back, if anyone's listening to this and going, what, Chris? Google STS 3's landing at White Sands. It's like incredible. Actually, Robin Williams, uh, rest in peace, actually did a song for the space shuttle. And one of the lines was, land at White Sands? No way. 
It's literally the. It was like a big nerner. It really is. It's actually a line in his song. So I mean, fair play to Rory Williams for for thinking that because it was something where people go. Well, White Sands was always there as a third alternative landing site, but thankfully never used it again. It was like either KSC, or if the weather was no good, to go to California, Vandenberg. Uh, uh, Edward, sorry. That's Starlink for you, isn't it? I, kept, I went default to Vandenberg. Although, <laughs> <laughs> oh, sounds like we have you back. Jack, the irony is they nearly, very nearly had a second uh, launch site for the space shuttle at Vandenberg, Slick 6. One of your favorite places yeah. because that would have been and incredible. It, it is. Yeah. It got very close. And I'm so was... happy that. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was, I was, I, when you started talking, Jack, I'll, I'll definitely stop because you, you've got, you're the one in a remote location. So, um, but yeah, I was going to say that Slick 6 for Vandenberg, the space shuttle program was going to launch from there. And it's ironically related to this because when they lost Challenger in 1986, the US Air Force pulled out of their obligations to do shuttle missions to pearl launch orbits because they lost challenger they were, they basically got cold feet and that's when endeavor was brought back in to complement the fleet back into the plan to launch just from ksc so hopefully we'll see slick six which is now under the stewardship stewardships of spacex we might see some big rockets launching from there again pretty soon yeah that's what i was going to say is i'm so happy that after ULA is done with Slick Six, and now that you know, it's, you know, it's going to another launch provider. It's not just going to sit idle, um, which makes me very happy because it is a very, it is a very beautiful launch site. Um, but I asked you the question about White Sands because you were talking about, you know, the, the crowds of people that came out to see the shuttles land at Edwards. Did they have the same problem at Edwards? Did they ever like run out onto the dry lake bed there, or? Uh, and like get a bunch of sand uh, in the vehicle or is that just just the white sands columbia mission you know what it's a good question because there's two two parts to that first of all it was the gypsum that called it uh white sands that caused the problem they were still finding lots of bits of gypsum inside the actual orbiter many many years afterwards it was literally got everywhere it's like going to the beach and getting sand in your toes you'll find it days later whereas for some reason that Ed, edwards with the, with the the dusty landing site they had there, um, that was less of a problem for me, what I, all I heard. But also, they then basically went to the tarmac runway later in the shuttle missions. Now, it, it basically wasn't going to land on the lake bed. It was always landing on tarmac, so it was like not a problem at all later on in the missions. Cool. I think... What's, uh, your, favorite, uh, what's your favorite Endeavour mission? Uh, you know what? Well, we're going to go through some photographs. <laughs> Everyone's he talking wants about more these photographs. photographs. <laughs> yeah, because I was basically grabbing these old days. I was told, Are you got any photographs about Endeavour? Yes, yeah, I've got about a few thousand. <laughs> so, I, I do believe this would be STS 49. Um, if we're still on those, there, yeah, well, that's STS 49. And that was a uh, first mission. That was one. That was quite interesting because this one was one involved a flight readiness fire. And I was talking about the study fire earlier. But also, the interesting thing about this is the mission itself. If we've got a photograph of the EVA, the three-person EVA, during this, it would be a great picture to bring up because that actually shows really what kind of shuttle missions were. There were all kinds of things. Look at this. This was basically how they dealt with the space shuttle missions in the earlier days. It was a lot about retrieving, repairing, and then redeploying satellites, including taking a lot of satellites up with them and deploying them. But this is how they captured them. Oh, no, not going to use robotic arms. We're going to send three astronauts out and grab it. <laughs> And that's what they do. And sometimes they would literally, by hand, spin the satellite up. You sometimes see some um, uncrewed missions where you'll see it spin up the satellite before it's deployed. This is how they did it in the special. They literally got their hands on it, and they had like a bar on it, and then they would spin it up. And then some of the missions included a, a rocket motor, a PAM, a pa payload assist module, on the bottom of the satellite. So they'd pop it out of the space shuttle, just deploy it very, very, very slowly. It would slowly float away. And then once the space shuttle was well out of the way, it would fire up the rocket motor on the satellite and send it out to GTO. And that's how they would do it. And there's all sorts of things going on. And there's too many of these examples to mention. 
but you can see just what they got up to in the payload bay. They were real sporty EVAs. I mean, every EVA is sporty, and I think the Polaris one coming up with Jared uh, Isaacman and his crew will be very interesting as well, because that will be an EVA from a Dragon for the first time. But it was commonplace in the special. The airlock was in the back of the mid-deck, and it would come out into the payload bay, and it would be basically just to get up to all sorts of things with this one. And that was... Um, it was the first, I think, yeah, it was the first three-person EVA. Right, I think we're moving on to SCS-61 now. Here we go. And this is a big one for Endeavour. If you remember, boys and girls, that when Hubble was first launched by Discovery, they found us a problem. They basically, the mission was complete, deployment was done, everyone was happy, Discovery got back, they turned Hubble on, the scientists all sat around the monitor, they got ready for these exciting images, and they went, oh, there's a problem. It's blurry. They go, why is it blurry? The mirror was like a fraction of a millimetre or something stupid, you know, out of alignment. And that meant there was just no way they could fix it. There's like, well, we're stuck now. This this Hubble, this massive, expensive space telescope ain't going to work for us. So they, de they devised a plan to send Endeavour up on STS-61 with the, the first Hubble servicing mission, but also the one to replace lots of the hardware and actually include it kind of like, if you can imagine going to the opticians and getting glasses for your slightly out of line eyesight, it was like that. It was basically a module that inserted into it to make the mirror work. And then there's a, as somewhere there's a great clip of the NASA guy seeing the first images after this mission. And they're all just basically just in tears celebrating it because it fixed the problem. So that was a very big mission for Endeavour, and also I find all the Hubble servicing mission photographs incredible. You see all that payload stuff in the bay, that, that orange, kind of like brown-orange stuff? Yeah. That was called a mule. That's what they put in the back of the payload bay of a special, it was a mule, and that included capturing and holding on to uh, Hubble, and also was like the carrier for all the equipment they would install into Hubble during a servicing mission. There was a lot involved in Hubble, space, in Hubble servicing missions, including back-to-back -back EVAs, which was very rare in any mission, but for special, it was like the obvious thing. That photograph I love, because that is the um, SRMS, which is the Space Shuttle Remote Manipulator System, which is basically the shuttle arm. But that photograph is um, a cool selfie of Endeavour. I think we've got more, more photographs, Kevin. Come on, I can keep talking forever. You'll have lots. Hey, actually, we're 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 trying to work on another sort of special thing here. We have some friends out around Jack, and we're seeing if we can't convince somebody to come over and have a little chat with us here. So y'all keep looking at pictures, and we're going to work on seeing if we can get a little field interview going. How's that sound? I'm game. All right, cool. Actually, that's cool. a cool thing to go back to the live view because we have people wondering what's happening with Endeavour right oh, yeah. now, live. Well, there we go. And there's a, a site we see every single day at Starbase, a lift, <laughs> a lift. with people on top. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I don't think anyone can walk down the street who follows the daily um, shenanigans of Starbase and sees a, a lift down the street at some construction site and go, <laughs> I've seen many of you before because I know I do that. <laughs> And hey, y'all, if you're just joining us, I'm going to do the I'm going to do the shout out real quick, Chris. Um, these are live views from the California Science Center out in L.A. That shuttle Endeavor that has been flipped vertical, pointy end up, actually. And you can see on the right hand side, the ETs and the SRBs, they are installing it as a full stack in the flight configuration. And right now, in real time in California, Shuttle Endeavour is taking its final liftoff as they move it over towards that stack. This is a drone shot from the museum as well. So massive thanks to the museum for putting these cameras together. We have our cameras out there as well. Jack is working on those. He's there on the scene, and we're waiting for them to uh, swing. There we go. That's Jack's camera. We're waiting for them to you see the shuttle in the background them to swing that shuttle over towards Jack's camera here where they will be uh, mating it to the full stack. I, Jack, I like your camera, but the drone camera is pretty cool too here, honestly. So anyways, we're going to work and see if we can't get a little field interview going. The museum is going to continue providing these streams. We'll see if we get Jack back on in just a second. And Chris, there's probably more shuttle missions that we can talk about with Endeavor, isn't there? 
Oh, I hope so. No, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do believe the next one we're going to see is actually another milestone that Endeavour was involved with. That's SSTS 88, which was the first US module to take part in the ISS assembly. Now, remember, the first part of the ISS was launched by a Proton from the Russian side. But then they launched Unity, which was basically the first ever US segment of the ISS of the International Space Station. And that was launched by Endeavour back in 1998, I believe. I should know my short fact. If I get a short fact wrong, let me know, chat, because it's not my thing to get those things wrong. 1998, I'm sure it was 1998. Launched from 39A. You can see it there. The cool thing about 39A, while we're still on this, is that that is used now by SpaceX, but minus... The left, far left-hand side, the rotating service structure that was used to install the payloads into the cargo bay. But the fixed service structure, while it's had a lot of its bells and whistles taken off, is this still existing structure that they use today. They've modified it slightly, but it is the existing tower. And that is a cool thing about 39A, that it's been modified with its history intact. Even the crawler tracks that are used to rotate the rotating service structure are still there on the ground today. And I find that personally wonderful that SpaceX didn't chop down a tower and build a new one. They utilized what was there already. Lovely picture there. There's so many great pictures of the space shuttle fleet. Look at this. You can see the difference there, the plumes. The plumes from the SRBs, which are solid propellant, and the Hydrolox engines of the RS-25Ds, which were the space shuttle main engines. And they are still being used today on SLS, those SRB, uh, the SSMAs, and the SRBs, in fact, as well. The space shuttle, basically, heritage with SLS is very well known there because the SRBs are the same, plus one segment. The RS-25s are the same. They're testing them at Stennis right now, the RS-25Es, which are the single-use um, SSMEs. But they're making sure that all the ones that were left from the space shuttle program have been reused on SLS. I know a lot of people aren't happy about that. They'd rather not be used one final time for the ocean but there we go there's the eva involved the iss was so small back then it was just two modules and that's where it basically grew from it was an amazing accomplishment from the space shuttle fleet and the russian side to complete this it obviously included jackson european modules as well but the space shuttle was pretty much the workhorse for all of the installations the assembly parts of this really was i think we can go to sts 89 next, I do believe, which is a cool, another cool mission. There we go. Now, what do you see the difference in that patch there? What tells you something different? That's not the space station, is it? No. Another cool photograph from the launch you can see there. That patch shows a different. That's not the ISS. What's going on here then? I'm waiting for chat to catch up and see if they know why it looks a little bit different because this mission. Was too well done, Eric. Eric wins. I was watching chat at the same time, and Nathan was fast behind. This was Endeavour's mission to Mir. And this was after Mir had been hit by the Progress vehicle. That basically really was quite a scary incident. It caught the Mir space station quite badly, and it was pretty much the death knell for that space station, but not before Endeavour could arrive and help out uh, with, an, with a mission where Atlantis was the main spatial orbiter to arrive at Mir, but this one was, um, hopefully we've got actually a photograph where we can see the rendezvous with Mir. It's like a radar picture. It's actually how they used to dock back in the days and how they utilised it. I'm just waiting for my part to catch up there. But yeah, that's, um, there it is. There's the one. That's basically arriving at Mir. And you could see there, Back in those days, they were using this kind of layout, but in the later missions, they had um, computerized readouts for their rendezvous procedure, which wasn't at all easy. As you can imagine, rendezvous is not easy to this day. When you obviously see SpaceX dog a dragon, it's actually still a big accomplishment. It's not an easy thing to do. But with Mia and a big space shuttle, I mean, they were large compared to um, Dragon. It was pretty much a, a very careful process they had to go under. But yeah, that's the Mir Space Station. It really was pretty much in its last days by then. I'm seeing people do Armageddon references in chat. <laughs> There's a picture of Endeavour from Mir. And that was a photograph taken through one of the very few portholes. Mir didn't have many actual windows on it compared to the ISS. And it's 
amazing big window, which we're going to come up to soon because that is one of Endeavour's final accomplishments later. I might be jumping ahead a little bit there. But that's um, a great picture from Mia of Endeavour. Looking pretty, still looking pretty young for her age there. Less battle scars than she retired with, to say the least. Chris, you you said chat was talking about uh, like movie references, and this, if anything, this is like the one setup for inclusion of the science center in a movie, where it's like, oh no, there's an asteroid coming. Oh, we did no, the dragon's not flying. Whatever, starship's not working. I don't know what the what the backstory would be, right? But wait, Endeavor, it's still flight Herodor. It's stacked in the shuttle, and then they somehow refuel Endeavor and they launch it from uh, the science center. Is that Jack? No, it looks like a Look, Jack. It's Jack. <laughs> I, I think Jack is. Setting up to do an interview. <laughs> we were going to do an interview with Jack there. That was we're checking that out. <laughs> he just realized <laughs> <laughs> they gave Jack a uh, they gave Jack a helmet. It looks like, um, but that's it's such the setup for like a bad apocalypse movie. Like, oh, we can recommission Endeavor that's stacked with flight hardware at the California Science Center, and then cue somehow they load the SRBs. Yeah, they have cement mixers like dumping SRB grain into the top of the SRB somehow. I don't know how they would do it. <laughs> Anyways, we are working on a uh, Jack and his personal protective equipment. Uh, we should shortly be able to have Jack and friends. Oh, here's Jack again. We keep cutting to Jack, and I don't think that Jack expects that we're cutting to Jack here. <laughs> but uh, we should have Jack with a friend shortly there on the scene. Not moving around yet. They have the shuttle vertical, but let's continue yeah jack was just at boca and we actually sent jack back to california a day earlier than he was supposed to so that he could be at this event by the way folks um we asked the museum if we could come and do this we asked the science center if we could do this we don't charge for this we don't say like oh yeah well we'll come and do a live stream but you have to pay us to do it that's ridiculous um, we don't do anything like that. We want to help share this with people, and we're able to do that because y'all keep showing up. So the support y'all give us when you join the member program or you're doing super chats, y'all are gifting memberships and all the stuff that always happens with the support. This is the sort of content we turn that back around into. Um, we don't expect to make a bunch of money on the stream or anything like that, but we want to share this with you. They could launch a couple starships and uh, that pays the bills, but that allows us to come to these sorts of things and share them with you. All right. <laughs> we have a folder of 100,000 picks, 100 picks. Just a hundred picks. Everybody's posting up their favorite shuttle picks in our back channel here, and then we're trying to uh, cut to the away screen real quick, and then we will also be right back with the other view. Stand by just one second. We have Jack who's setting up the interview camera, and then we also are trying to get uh, get you all this other feed. Stand by, please. This is where I talk yes. about the logo, isn't it? Because the logo cool. is really, all we're getting is a logo right now. Yeah. There we go. That's better. The logo actually has a special in it. There we go. Yeah. Thank you. Chris, that's right. Everybody's like, yes. oh, why'd you have such an old spacecraft in your logo? And it's like, well, that's where we came from. But there's a shuttle on the screen right now in real life, and it's also in our logo. Yeah. I, I can keep talking <laughs> about the Endeavor's missions until you want to cut in. You can, you can cut me off at any point if you wish. If you want me to continue, because we do have STS-130, which is relevant to the like a Windows and Mir. We've got actually the biggest window in space on the ISS, which there was you a Coupler mission. Yeah, STS-130 was when Endeavour took Coupler out yep. to the ISS and installed it. I'm going to hop over and help Jack, Chris, and you tell shuttle stories. Just talk. I will do. Yeah, I'll okay, cool. Me. By, by the way, Chris, thank you so much. I know it's super late. Your time is like, what, 7 a.m. your time? 7 a.m. Yeah, I know, but I was so <laughs> oh. tired before you started the stream, and now I'm talking about Shuttle. I'm wide awake. No, you're talking about <laughs> Shuttle. You're good to yeah. go. I'm going to go help Jack, and uh, I am 100% confident you can hold down the fort. Will do. Yeah, All boys right. and girls. I mean, I am, I'm very much tempted to do what I promised, which was a mega stream about special. Obviously, more more civil time, and I'll be able to talk better. But there are so many Shuttle stories I could tell you, um, many of them not publicized which are just fun, cool stories, because the history is 30 years. We're talking about 30 years of flight. And just Endeavour alone, I only picked out some of her missions. She flew 25 times, which is impressive for a brand, what was basically the youngest orbit in the fleet, compared to the big siblings such as Discovery and Atlantis. 
uh, it's important. And of course, not forgetting Colombia. I mean, this is a, a rough time of year with the anniversaries for Chandra and Colombia. We should never forget them or diminish their accomplishments. But Endeavour, thankfully, is still with us and is going to be looked after so well in California. This exhibit is so impressive. I'm very impressed with it. And I would be very hard to impress if it wasn't because I do love the special. Yeah, so SCS-130, do we have any um, views we can show of that, Kevin? Are you doing multitasking right now? I don't want to uh, overpressure you into putting pictures on screen while we're watching Endeavour live <laughs> in this view now. There well, we Chris, go. Yes? As, as soon as you need a break, you can see in the uh, bottom camera there, we have our special guest joining us in a flight suit, no less. From the California Science Center. Were you in the middle of something? Or no, can we no, cut over I, and chat I, with them? I can be cut off at any point right now. This is more <laughs> important than me, yeah. All right. Well, uh, somehow, I believe I Jack is listening back. to us. And uh, we can probably cut over to them to talk with uh, Garrett Reisman out there with yeah. Jack at the California yeah, no, Science Center. Right, uh, did somebody us. tell Jack that we yeah. can listen to him now? Jack, go ahead and talk to Garrett. Do the thing. Hey. Yeah, wave. We've got That's Garrett Reisman here. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, so, again, thank you for you know calling us up and inviting <laughs> us out here. This is absolutely astounding to see. I'm glad that Jackie, you're excited about this because I, you know, it, it's a late night here, uh, and uh, <laughs> you're supposed to be in, in Texas, I think. So it's yeah. If you're on Central Time, it's even later. It, yeah, it's it's 12 o'clock my time. Mm -hmm. Well, Texas time. I guess my time is LA time. It's 11 here. Yeah. But. I, who cares? I mean, the shuttle <laughs> is in the air right now. Yeah, and... I don't know if you guys can see that, but uh, it's 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 moving. It's actually ahead of schedule. Yeah, I think we we expected it to still just be starting at ten o'clock, and an hour later it would be barely out of the cradle. So uh, we're doing great. Nice. Yeah. So, you have actually flown on this shuttle. Yeah. I, yep. Yeah. My first my first launch in two thousand eight was on Endeavor, and uh, so she's always going to have a special place in my heart. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I mean, this has been a, like a long, long time coming. It has been. Uh, so I remember I, I was fortunate enough to, to be here like every step of the way. Uh, I remember I, I, I first came back out to California after I left NASA and started working at SpaceX uh, back in 2011. And it was only about a year later that, that she showed up. And I got to sit on the tarmac at LAX when she landed and, and watched her taxi ride up. I got to sit right next to uh, Nicole Nichols from, uh, you know, Lieutenant Uhura from Star Trek. <laughs> oh, wow. That was really cool. Yeah, that was like, that was, that was pretty awesome. So I did that and then uh, walked with her through the streets of L.A. and saw all the people come out. And, and uh, it was just magical watching everybody's reaction. I got to sit in the, in the tundra. You know, the, yeah, they pulled it with the tundra? Yeah. I got to sit in the, uh, in the passenger seat of that thing. Nice. As we pulled her across the 405. It was me. They had a, like a stunt driver driving the thing and then there was this uh vice president from toyota senior vp and as we're walking out i knew that stunt driver was going to drive right but as we're walking out i called shotgun and it turns out that <laughs> even <laughs> this is true even if you are a senior vp at toyota you have to honor the rules of shotgun so, yeah well that's yeah. <laughs> good to know that shotgun privileges go that high up the chain that's, they that's do. important yeah, that's you, you, you don't mess with it could you call shotgun in the shuttle no you can't really do that though because it's not yeah the, 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 basically when they assign the commander and the pilot they've already done that so yeah yeah, yeah you can't you're kind of stuck if but only. i got to do that and then, then when the external tank came we we walked with that through the streets of la and been here many many times here when she was in the in her temporary pl uh, location at yep. the science center <laughs> I uh, did a lot of events and, and uh, did a lot of stuff for the Science Center, and, and, and now here we are. Uh, it was here for the SRBs, for the external tank the other night, and, it was, and, and that was actually a lot more uh, difficult in a lot of ways. And now we're, we're doing the, the real thing, the Endeavor herself. Okay, I, there's a lot to unpack here. First off, I didn't go to see Endeavor going through the streets. I, it's like I try to not have yeah. regrets in life, but I think if I had a number one regret in life, I'm not even kidding. That's, <laughs> that's probably up there because I lived here, and it was like a year after I moved here. And what were you like? We we're like, yeah, it's LA. It's like too much traffic. Um, I was. I <laughs> I'm was, not gonna go. Well, I was I had like a kind of a health thing going on at the time, and yeah. I was also just like that was. I had a camera, but it was before I had you know pointed a camera at so many rockets and had mm -hmm. so much fun doing it. And so yeah. it, it, it was like, oh, I should go do that. 
and, and then, you know, I, I didn't. Well, tell what, I, I got some good pictures on my phone. I'll airdrop them okay. to you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and, and you can just tell everybody you were there. The cool part is this is like my like small little... <laughs> just roast. <laughs> uh, this is like a small little redemption for me, uh-huh. just to be able, be able to see it lift. So that's really yeah. cool. The other thing I wanted to, uh, to pack on there is when you were driving the, the, the Tundra, like... They were they like watching you really close, like don't floor it, <laughs> don't floor I it. Try, I, I, was, I was passenger seat, so I didn't actually. Okay. So the guy, they, they actually had this stunt driver that was that was right, tra- so and, he, and he trained and he, he uh, they actually rigged up like a, a sled that was about the same weight, uh, and they practiced towing it uh, with another Tundra, uh, and they, they destroyed that truck. By the way, I, don't, I probably shouldn't say anything uh, in public, but um, <laughs> it was toast. I mean, you could smell the transmission oil just cooking. And uh, and he couldn't get it out of like low gear when when we were done. And we unhooked from it. Uh, we got it across the, the the 405, and then they unhooked us. And he was trying to get it back into normal gear, at like, the, no. and he was stuck in first. And the, the transmission was just locked up. And and I was like, look, dude, they got the shot. Right. You know, what are you worried about? It it towed it, the shuttle. It's uh, it's going to be a Super Bowl commercial. They've got the shot, and this the fenders could fall off right now. It really doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> um. And the other thing I wanted to ask you, we got a question earlier, actually, from, I think it was Brady, one of our photographers, mm-hmm. was asking, um, is the solid propellant in the SRBs like a structural thing for the stack? And did you have to re- replicate that, like with concrete or something? Wow. Or is it more like the steel? Um, this is the it, casings. Yeah. Uh, you know, so it is load-bearing, right? Because, right. Uh, in fact, there's massive vibration isolators at the bottom of each SRB designed to handle any possible, even the big one, uh, quake-wise. I'm dancing around this because I don't know the answer to the question. No, no, it's... They, I, they, I bet they did. I bet they had to put something inside because the casings alone probably wouldn't cut it, at least in the lower part. I would think that they would, but I have no idea. I have no idea. So I, I'll find out. I'll find out. That's, yeah, a, we're, great, that's we're, a great question. Inquiring minds want to know. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know now. <laughs> now you got me thinking about it. And then, sorry, I'm just like going. I'm I'm trying to like remember all the things I I wanted to ask you just based on the what you just said. Um, well, what are you thinking? I I got one cool thing to point out, which is I, I, you have other camera shots where you can see the the, the the endeavor back there, right? Yep. So that big yellow fork looking fixture that the crane is attached to. Yep. We got that from NASA because that was a, the same one that was used on every different shuttle in the VAB to lift her up and, and you know and, and that was another crazy lifting operation and it was done exactly the same way where you lift it with on both sides swing it under and lift it up and then you had to like transport it through this little hole because you know the VAB was designed for the Saturn V right and so you had to put it through the same hole that the upper stage and the, and the, and the I think the command and service module had to pass through and they had to turn it and then snake it through there and it was that was really pretty pretty nervy too so they, they they use exactly that same picture and we got it here and it's doing one more job i'd love to see it it's yeah, like a yeah. lot of people I, I know complain about the space shuttle main engines being used on sls and like getting thrown in the sea but no i, oh, I look at it like we're, we're live oh sorry <laughs> i look i look at it like uh they're getting their, they're getting to do their job one more time yeah yeah so yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it makes it makes me happy Mm-hmm. And then the other thing I wanted to ask, you said the, was it the SRBs were in some ways more difficult than this? You, you, you made a comment. Well, like- the ET, because the ET, uh, the external tank, we had to thread it straight down in between the SRBs. And, uh, and that was, so you really had just like, as you bring it down, you have inches to spare. So, so that was, uh, that was and, and so they actually had to stop. I gave up like about 1 o'clock in the morning and went home. <laughs> but uh, they actually kept going until about 7 and then stopped, and, and I came back to work the next day, and my office is right over here, so I drove right past it, and, uh, and I was like, it's not in the right spot. I, it was just dangling from the crane forward of the SRBs. Oh, man. And so I was like, hey, guys, you know, uh, I, I, I texted the, the science center folks right away, and I was like, uh, do you know that you got a tank dangling? And they're like, yeah, we gave up at 7 a.m. We're going to try again tonight. So it took like two days wow. to get that one done. But well, I, it, so far, so good. Knock on wood. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a good call. There's actually some wood to knock on. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, we all. I, I'm, I have Das and everybody in my ear, so I can I can hear you guys talking. If you talk, oh. they haven't been. But maybe we have a, a couple questions. Sure. If people want to ask them, but so, but like I'll I'll let them bring some up. Um, 
But re really quick, do you know where, like, where we're at chronologically in the lift? Like, are, are they doing um, some checkouts or on the on the fixture there? So um, yes, yeah, so I actually do know what's going on. So I had a big question, which was, how do you control it and roll? Okay. Because there's no obvious means of doing that. So that fellow that's up on that 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 kind of cherry picker lift right there is hooking up the power to. Uh, uh, what I understand is there's a, up in the uh, the coupling that c connects it to the crane. There's some kind of torsion device that prevents it from rolling, and he's actually powering that up so that they can control roll as they bring her on over. And then apparently they also have two lines with a guy standing on each on each line, also trying to hold it down. And I, I hope that they're like some pretty burly dudes, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there he goes. It looks like he's. Uh, done and and hopefully we'll uh resume the lift here pretty soon excellent yeah das uh do you have any any questions for us or, or anything you want to add in uh jack there's going to be a little desync here because i know that uh, we are bringing your field in your feet in remotely but right now uh let's talk about this okay. since we're getting sort of the final stack of endeavor here at the california Science center Ask Garrett about his first experience going to the pad for his launch on the uh, on the shuttle and what that's like, like the vehicle breathing, everything being ready, okay. loaded to go what to space. Your... Repeat that over to him, please. He didn't have an ear set in. Here, here's a DOS question for you. Uh, <laughs> what was it like, your first experience going to the pad and, and ro rolling up to the stack and, and wow, seeing all yeah. that? So it was, it was just like this because it was Endeavor. And um, on that on that first one, it's 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 really surreal. I mean, it's it's like something straight out of science fiction. You know, you 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 wake up in the morning, you get your crew together, and then you go out there to the and you wave and you walk in slow motion, and then you get in that Astro van and drive out to the pad, and you look up and you you know you're standing down there, and I don't know if you can tell in your shot, but if you look down there, you can see a, a, a fellow in a hard hat at the very bottom. So you get some idea of the scale of this thing, right? And you're standing down there looking up at the shuttle and the whole stack and the launch tower and it's just gargantuan you know and this is this massive beast this massive rocket ship that's going to blast you off the face of planet earth i mean it's like something straight out of sci-fi yeah and and then you hop in that you know you look around at it for a little bit and then you hop into that elevator go on up and now you're standing up there in the gantry and uh looking down and 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 then looking straight ahead to the white room and all the people in there waiting to put your suit on for you and it's just you and your crew and a couple, and the strapping crew, so just a couple brave individuals, and every sane person is, like, at least five miles away, right? <laughs> so, because, you know, that, I don't know what, we talked about this, I don't know what the SRBs are, are filled with right now, or, and if there's anything in the external tank, but, uh, but th at that moment, you yeah. know, the external tank is full, and the SRBs right. are full. So this is, the, the amount of chemical energy stored in there is... Insane. Insane, and... Uh, you know, it's basically just a giant bomb ready to go off, and so it's a, it's a, yeah, yeah. You, you don't want to be hanging around that thing unless you have to, unless right. you have a good reason to. So, so you get in, and and then you wait. Uh, we're gonna need to tell Jack that he needs to change or charge his battery here. Jack, uh, your camera seems to have needed a battery thing. If you could tell Jack that real quick. Maybe confirm for us, Jack, that you got that. Folks, that was Garrett Reisman out there, shuttle astronaut himself. He's been on our show here hanging out with us a couple times. Folks, you know something? I'm, I'm not going to ding Jack for that one. Jack has been juggling so much stuff out here. He's got one person handling all these different cameras. It's not a whole bunch of different people. We just have one guy out there, and it's Jack. So massive thanks to Jack. We're getting these things. I'm sure he'll get another battery in real quick, but uh, that is all fine. Jack is absolutely an MVP. Uh-oh, we may be getting a feedback here shortly. Stand by. Jack, we we're, are uh, getting a feedback again, cut out. just so you okay. know. <laughs> yeah, do you have us back? Uh, we got yeah, you do back you have now, back? Jack. That was a pretty quick uh, battery swap. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, also, I'm getting an echo. Yeah, sorry about on, that. Like um, I can hear. Also, I'm getting an echo on. Like I can hear everything over again, which is, makes it really hard to pay attention to what I'm saying. It's like a there. There you go. Thank you. You killed it. Uh, where did where did we lose? Like where did you lose Garrett? No. Well, now I can't Jack, hear you I fixed all. your echo, and now you don't have an echo. But now you should you should be good to go. Uh, we lost Garrett. Right when he was talking about the tank was fully filled up, 
and you're getting aboard and there's a lot of chemical energy in stored. Right. Uh, when the tank was fully filled and there's, we were talking about the chemical energy, like the uh, amount of chemical energy on board. Right. Like sitting in the white room like that, with, like knowing full well what's just Yeah, like those guys are really away. brave. They don't, they don't even get to go for the ride, you know? So, um, uh, yeah, my hat's off to them. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, there aren't that many. It's just a minimum crew complement out there. And, and then they take off and they, after they close the hatch and, and button everything up. And then you just sit there and wait. And then, so then the other thing is, uh, uh, not many people know this, but actually you know that whole countdown to 10, 9, 8? You don't actually hear that inside the shuttle. Yeah, you just hear like the mission control loop? Yeah, you're hearing the control loop, you're hearing the launch director's loop, and, um, uh, and then you're also hearing calls inside the cockpit that are all, that come at a certain cadence, so it's kind of like, it's effectively a countdown. Because you know when it, when it ends, you know when it ends, what to right. expect. But, uh, but it's things like you hear like 102, 102, like Navinit, 3 at 100 when the three SSMEs come up. And you're hearing these technical calls, these events that are transpiring, and it's kind of like a countdown. But you never, you never hear anybody count down from 10. Right. That's just for the people watching on uh, do they, television. Do they give you, like, uh, and we're at, you know, do they say, like, T minus 10, or does somebody call that out? Or, or do you just sort of there's know a, with There's the a flow? clock. you got a clock, and, um, uh, and then you you're, you're, you got a checklist, and you're, you're going through and, and looking for every step along the way. So you, you know where you are. Uh, uh, and, 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 but, but that's after you first have to get all the goes. So you sit there for a long time doing nothing. And then, and you also you don't know like every every um, time we tried to launch a shuttle, there was only like about a fifty percent chance they were actually going to go on any given day because the weather could be bad in like Banjul, right? Or uh, you can have a technical problem pop up or, or something's not working right. It, it, there could be a million different things, and especially weather related winds and. There could be anvil clouds within ten miles, or all kinds of crazy stuff like there that. Could be a hydrogen leak. Could be a hydrogen leak. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we got had a bunch of those for a while, so. <laughs> So it could be anything, and and, um, and and then you don't know if today is really the day or not until everybody says go, and then and then you're like, oh wow, we're really all right. This right. is actually the day. You know? It's like until those solids light, it's not, it's not the day. Yeah, yeah, right. Because even the mains can light, and you can still scrub, yep. Yep. and that that happened. Uh, not on my flights, but that that has happened. So so you can get down to, to within seconds and 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 think you're going, but not go. So when I actually, you know, when you actually, but when those solids lights, then then you're going somewhere in a hurry. There's no turning those off and throttling them back there. Right. Once they're lit, they're lit. Right. And, um, you know, people ask me what I was going through my mind at that moment when the solids light, and you know that you're definitely flying today. And the truth is that I was, it was a great sense of relief because uh, I was thinking, you know, th- thank goodness I don't have to redo the guest list because that's a pain in the ass, man. <laughs> you got to figure out what, you know, and then if you scrub, then you get like, okay, who's coming back tomorrow? And yeah. like, do, uh, you know, aunt so-and-so doesn't want to sit next to uncle such-and-such, so don't forget that. And you got to redo the, the whole seating chart and it's a big pain, so. Wow. Yeah, I mean, speaking from a perspective of a, like, photographer of rockets, mm-hmm. it definitely is the kind of thing where in some ways a scrub is like, okay, I get a chance to you know, re- make sure all my cameras are going to work that much more. On the other hand, it's like it's really taxing. It can be very yeah, taxing. It can be. It can be stressful, like especially for the not not so much for the crew, a little bit for the crew too, but but especially for the the families. And but I remember, um, you know, we had some scrubs serve a, a pretty useful purpose because a lot of times I think the folks uh, uh, in, in mission control and launch control uh, and 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 the crew, crew to some extent, but also like all, especially the families. The first time, like we, I was just down last week at the Cape for the Axiom Three launch. Nice. And um, and and we had a scrub, right? And and then you can see just everybody's all like tense, tense, and then uh scrub, you know. <laughs> and then and then and that stays with you. Like you come back the next day, and you're just a, a little more chill. Uh, everybody's a little more chill. And and I, and you know, I remember at SpaceX we had, uh, you know, being in mission control after a scrub, and 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 everybody just seemed to be a little more relaxed and, and focused and, and less stressed out. And that's actually a good thing for right. your for your control team. So so in a way, scrubs scrubs aren't so bad. Yeah, I, yeah. I like it. It's a nice optimistic take. Scrubs aren't so bad. Yeah, so bad. Yeah, more practice, more better. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, she's coming. She's coming, indeed. Hey, Jack, we've got yeah. another question over here. I know I'm going to talk over y'all a little bit there, but uh, oh. ask Garrett we've, if there's anything on okay. Earth a that he can no compare 
the SRB feeling too. Like when the SRBs kick in and it's time to go, is there a race car or a roller coaster okay. or something like that he's ever felt on Earth? Ask him that for us. Is there anything you can compare uh, the ignition of the SRBs and like what that feels like um, to like an, an earthly thing, maybe like a roller coaster or like a very fast car. Like, is it, is it a, a real kick in the pants or like how does it? Oh, it's, it's definitely a, a, a big kick in the pants. Uh, and, and you know, you're lying on your, on your back so you, you get it through through your back and you feel this little jolt and then a push. And it's not crazy. I mean, uh, you're, you're just a little bit over 1G going up initially. And then of course the G builds exponentially as you burn off the with the rocket equation, as you burn off the fuel, right. you get less mass, same thrust. So, um, so that G builds and builds, but initially it's 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 just over one, and so you're going up and you feel that, and it makes a lot of noise and it shakes, but the initial G isn't isn't too crazy. Yeah, I guess that makes sense because the thrust to weight ratio isn't like super crazy or anything. And yeah, it's just so laden with propellant as it sits on the bed. <laughs> But at the end, it builds up to three, and then it plateaus there, and you throttle back and hold it at three Gs because of the structural limits of the shuttle. Um, you know, Dragon goes up to about 4.5, so that's a, a, a bit more of a wild ride. Yeah, I've, I've heard the the, sec the end of second stage burn on a Dragon can be pretty spicy, which yeah. uh, sounds, uh, to me, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm just stupid because I haven't had the chance to do it, or I wouldn't have, like, a job necessarily at that point in the, in the flight. <laughs> Uh, but it sounds like a really fun ride. It is. I would yeah, definitely I, do I, yeah, yeah. I, I would love to experience that someday. That'd be cool. It's, um, uh, you know, staging. Staging on the shuttle was uh, was kind of a relief and relaxing because it, when the SRBs come off, one, you know, you you, you you can't help but think a little bit about Challenger when you're going through that. And so when those SRBs come off, it's still a, a relief. And but the other thing is that it gets much more smooth. So I was down in, uh, when I was in Endeavor. I was down on the mid deck during launch. Oh no, kidding! You were on oh, the yeah. mid deck. I was on the mid deck because uh, I was uh, ISS crew member and EVA crew member. So I didn't have a job to do during launch. So I was just down there, high five and Rick Linehan like all the way up. <laughs> and um, it was like, great. Yes, yes, yes. We were like we were like strap hangers. We had this like strap. We're holding on like on the New York subway, and then the other hand we're like high five and the whole. <laughs> and uh, it was great, but. Um, but when, but I, I took a, on my kneeboard. I, I, I wrote like this is what it's like in first stage, and you can barely read it. It's like a doctor's handwriting. It's like all garbled. That's a really good idea. Yeah, and then and then uh, and then when we got to second stage after the SRBs come off, then then I wrote this is what it's like in second stage, and it's perfectly legible. So it's 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 much more, yeah, it's much smoother, uh, and it and like so like I say, staging, and plus there's no decel because the the SSME stay lit the whole time. So you never get that kind of, you know, zero G and then back to, right. to be thrown. And so staging in Dragon, as it was on set the Saturn V and uh, on uh, Atlas for, for Gemini, and stuff, that's, that's much more violent. Yeah, I guess I didn't even think about that. But now that you say that, I, I feel like I've probably even seen that maybe in the right stuff or something, you know, or... You know, even just video of, of those sorts of launches where it's like, and no G, and then G again. Like, yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty quick, and you get you get that kind of whiplash, and uh, you know. That's yep. why you want tight straps, I guess, to yeah. keep you keep you in your seat. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> so this is just like, I mean, you've flown on this vehicle. This is a really special time, having it come back together with a full stack and having it be. Yeah. Um, there's the, the, obviously, there's a bunch more work to do on the building, but uh, you know what? It's really cool about this is um, if you're watching it, uh, I, I want you to all come come back here when it's when you can come in person, because what you we don't get like I've seen plenty of pictures of this uh, with the external tank and the SRBs in here, but in this in this space in, in this building, you get such a sense of the scale of it, and it's even much more different than the launch pad. When we had the launch pad, you had the launch tower next to it, but here it's kind of all enclosed. And, and standing here, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of losing, uh, I'm, I'm kind of at a loss to describe it exactly, but, but the fact that it's, that it's next to the rest of the structure gives you a better sense of just the scale. And uh, I can't wait to see it all the way in because it's, it's going to be spectacular. Yeah. yeah, that's a really good point because a lot of times with rockets, one, you can't really get close to them. Um, even when you can get close to them, um, I guess as an astronaut standing there looking up, it's probably pretty pretty easy to have a sense of scale. But 
for for the most part, uh, it's hard even when something is massive, just because you, you know the distance makes it look. You, you can you can tell your mind like that's massive, but it's you know a little thing on the horizon. But here it'll be just access like yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. cavernous space that it, it is going to occupy. Like it's just this is cool. Yeah. yeah, this is really cool. And again, all kinds of really cool stuff. Like you know, right here is the beginning of a slide. That goes from this level all the way down to the floor. You're pulling. You're pulling my leg. I am serious. No, that's what the no, way these stairs are. To, that's that's the slide hole. You're pulling my leg. No, come back and see the slide. Is, is there going to be come a zip back. line? We talked about that. I was just talking to Jeff Rudolph, who runs this place, and he said he wanted to put a zip line in. Uh, but the problem is, is that uh, the zip line coming from there straight down to the floor is way too steep, right? You would right, have right. to. You have to go all the way out to like USC's campus. You have to have to, like a series of yeah. yeah maybe if you had a bunch of like uh, yeah, that that might work. But. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, I, okay, I still don't believe that there's going to be a slide. Though. I'm telling you, slide right there. <laughs> maybe we should get some some of the science in here and back me up on this. <laughs> That's awesome. Jack, Very cool. I, I hope people Jack, like everybody watching that has the ability uh, to come. Oh, Das, yeah, go ahead. No, it was me. I was gonna let Jack keep talking there, but uh, it's in it's in the renders. Like there is supposed to be a slide. He is not pulling your leg. You're good to go. Um, ask him about the patches Dustin on his arm. Like, d- <laughs> does he have enough, <laughs> so, yeah, does he have enough patches on his blame. arm there? And ask him to talk about the patches on his arm, Jack. Das, das wants to know if you have enough patches on your arm. Uh, no, because I can, I can still hold it up. I figure a couple <laughs> more, and I'll, I'll, be, I'll start I'll start keeling over a little bit. Uh, but uh, tell, tell us about them, though. Oh, okay. What do you got? Um, so, actually, this one here at the top, that's Endeavor. That was my first flight in 2008. And then going down from there, these are my uh, two ISS increments, Expedition 16 and Expedition 17. And then we got SCS-124 uh, on Discovery that brought me home. And then Atlantis-132 was my last flight. So, that's another good so, I tell you, it's all about the patches. You know? So, there's another neat trick, which is I only launched twice and, and landed twice but I flew in all three shuttles and I got a whole arm full of patches <laughs> on just two missions so pretty you're, you're a savvy good patch trick. collector yeah that's a great it's, trick it's all about the patches <laughs> <laughs> well, he's an efficient patch. patch collector yeah nice oh, hey Jack man. ask is it, ask Eric to I can't tell us tell, a little it, bit about it how it looks like it's moving uh He'll give me a second this way a little bit but I think they still got the guy going back up there the the, the I'm, I'm, I'm guessing, purely speculation, but I'm guessing that they're having some difficulties trying to power up that uh, that torsional control uh, thing. Yeah. All right. Well. Uh, okay. Wait. Do we have another? We have another DOS question. Go ahead, DOS. We did, Jack. Um, ask Garrett how he's involved with the California Science Center there. Like he's out there supporting get, them tonight. Uh, what other this. sorts of things does hey, he can't. do with the Science Center? When he gets a chance, ask that to him, please. Yeah. A sec. Oh, he does? Okay. Can I ask you just a quick question? So, um, one, verify. For, this is Ken. Come here. Get on camera. Here. This is, this is Ken Phillips. I'll repeat. He's uh, with the Science Center. He's a very, very smart guy. Let me give you a mic. And um, he's got to go, so we can't. I'll just, here, let me just pin that right there. Okay. okay. Ask your question. Come here in the light. So, um, right. So, question is, first of all, Help back me up here. The slide starts right here, right? The slide starts right here. Yes, it does. Right there, slide starts. Uh-huh. We're going right from there, yeah. and it's going to be a heck of a ride, right? It's going to be a good ride. In a second, yeah. what's going on? Okay, so what's going on? We're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're mating or trying to mate the. Uh, Elsa, the- Elsa just like, is, dude. That's the second time that guy rocked the wear shot. Um, <laughs> we're live here. So, Allison, this is Allison. Come here, Allison. Oh there, there we go. Here we go. Because she just made a face because I did. Because Ken's got to go, Ken's and, and go. she's responsible, and and uh, she's like, "Don't ask a long question." So real quick, what, what, okay. are they having trouble f- powering up the no uh, the Switzer valve uh, uh, thing there? Yeah, it's the warp drive generator that's giving us some difficulty. Now you know that. <laughs> I, saw, I saw the guy go up there, and then he backed away, and then he went back. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's we, not usually not a good sign. No, no, sure no, that was a new guy. Level. We fired that guy. You we, fired the guy. New guy's <laughs> <laughs> no, what's happening here? <laughs> We're mating the, ex, the, the the orbiter uh-huh. endeavor. Uh-huh. Okay, which you flew in. Yes, in yeah. Way. Okay, thanks for bringing it back in one piece. You're welcome. Back I didn't have much to, to do. The, with it. The, to the I didn't come back with it. Oh, that's right. You left it, didn't you? Yeah, they kicked me off. Dropped him off on the Yeah, walked the plane. We're gonna mate it. Yes. Uh, lifting over the what we did, we rotated it um, around the axis, the vertical axis. That we're talking about about 17 degrees. 
and that lets it clear the gear building better. Ah, uh, okay. Lets it do a vertical lift. And when they get in, you see how the scaffolding goes into the corner? Yes. And you look at the, the scaffolding for the elevator. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They don't know whether they can... Uh, Control it? Well, they don't know whether they can thread the needle, so they may have it come past the center towards, of the stack. Towards us, and then move and back then in? And slide the wing back into the I corner. See. We don't know. They'll call that when they, when they get to that shop. So there. they don't know they're going to make it up as they go along? Yeah. That's how we always do these things. Seriously? From day one. All know. right. Here we go. All right. You got to <laughs> go. You. Okay. Got to go. Thank yeah, you. Get, get that back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, sure. Did you All already right. talk about the slide? Yeah. Okay. I didn't, didn't, I didn't believe him. Believe the problem was I didn't I didn't believe him about the slide. I need to call in some authorities. Start in a tube in the dark. Orange glow, double sonic boom, like you're re-entering the atmosphere, and then an S curve, like it's the landing path of the shuttle burning <laughs> off the fuel. It's going to be amazing. Then you land at the base of the dam. I, so. I can't wait to ride it. Yeah. I'm going to scream like a kid the entire time. Okay. Drug shoots. <laughs> Ken, stop with the, stop making stuff up. You're, 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 you know, you're, 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 you're curator here. You can't make stuff up. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So typ typical NASA space flight stream. No rails. Thank you for bringing him in. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Das was asking me, what sort of uh, what sort of things do you do here uh, for the for the museum? So uh, eyes and ends. So uh, I, I mean, it goes all the way back. I remember when Endeavor first showed up. Uh, you know, it did a tour of, of all of California. So they flew around Northern California, right. Golden Gate Bridge. Got some great shots of that. And then they they parked. They came down to um, Edwards Air Force Base. Uh, uh, Dryden at the time, and, and now the Armstrong Flight Center, and um, uh, they was parked there overnight. And, and the, the president, who's around here somewhere, Jeff Rudolph of the Science Center, had to be there um, to uh, 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 to be part of the event when it was going to overnight over there. Right. But then he had to come back here, and like in the middle of rush hour traffic, and getting from like you know Lancaster. Uh, down into uh, in the center of Los Angeles like solid in the middle of rush hour. He was drive. never going to make it. Yeah. So I said, hey, Jeff, you know, I got an airplane. So if you can get me permission to land at Edwards Air Force Base, I'll, I'll fly up there and then I'll, I'll fly you back. No traffic, no, no, no problem. We'll, we'll make it easy. And so that was like my first, uh, first time I really got involved with the, with the team here. We went and flew up there, saw Endeavor on the back of the 747 up at Edwards and That's then came amazing. back and yeah, it worked out. So, and, and ever since then, I've been just been helping out uh, from time to time, doing events here uh, at the Science Center, uh, helping doing some fundraising because you know you have to pay for all this. Yeah. And uh, uh, stuff like that. Yeah. Actually, yeah. before uh, we got that last ask question, I was saying I hope everybody that's watching that can comes out here to see this uh, because it's it's amazing. And you know, it can, if you can help out this the California Science Center, please do because it's. This sort of thing, as a kid, I can't even imagine how cool it would be to come in here and get to see something like this and get up close and personal with it. Ride a slide. A slide. <laughs> slide's going to be huge. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it, the, the more kids that are excited about space flight, the better, for sure. So, And it's not even just, like, I had a bunch of friends in town last year, and one of the things that we were like, okay, we have to go see Endeavor before they lifted vertical, because, mm -hmm. you know, that, yeah. that was the last chance to see it in, in, the, in the room there. And, and uh, I think... Next time I have family or any anybody in town, I'm, you know, I always recommend go to the science center, see the shuttle, see the A12, see all the cool yeah. stuff. Like there's so much cool stuff here. And they're gonna, ha you know, they're gonna have in addition to the shuttle, there's this whole giant building, and you're only seeing a portion of it. It goes way over that way, and there's multiple levels, huge. There's gonna be enormous galleries, all for air and space. There's gonna be a big robotics section too, but there's gonna be a, a, a SpaceX Dragon. There's gonna be a uh, uh, an Electron. Uh, there's going to be countless other aircraft and spacecraft. We got, you can see Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, and Shuttle, Dragon. So I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. It's That's gonna, amazing. It's, it's going to be really fantastic. That's really amazing. Yeah. What I mean, favorite? obviously Endeavor is the centerpiece, but it's not the only thing. It's like the crown jewel. It's a crown jewel. Right, right. Uh, but all the other things. Provided that they don't drop it, in which case. Don't, wait, we have to knock on the wood again. Knock yeah. on the wood again. All right. I'm not even a superstitious person, but goodness, <laughs> holy cow! Um, well, we can—I mean, we can keep hanging out and chatting as long as you want. I don't want—I know you—you you probably have like other. If you have other stuff you want to do, but I can also ask Doss for another question, or if you have anything that I haven't I just asked you see else we could drag that into you this. want to to hit, because something you know, sometimes I just I miss things in a moment. Also, yeah, feel free to drag somebody in. I'll I'll pin, a, I'll pin a mic on them. 
who's here that would... Mm. <laughs> I'm hey, Jack, for, while y'all are looking, uh, we definitely want to be respectful of Garrett's like, time. Kind of paying for, you were mentioning who's, you know, who's paying for it. It's the Ocean, uh, Aaron, and Space Center. So, so she was here a second ago, but I don't see her now. She must have got up and went somewhere else. Anyway, if Gary wants that, to does Dust have a, 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 another question? Dust, do you have it? Yeah, pass that okay. on, Jack. If yeah, Gary wants to make the rounds and go find somebody to come over, um, we can cut from this camera and we can talk for a little bit, give you all just a break if he wants to go and find somebody and not just, like, you know, ambush them as they walk by. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, if you if you want to make the rounds... Um, and see if there's someone that, that can uh, chit chat with us. Sure, but if, if you want to keep hanging out, we can too. Or we can like take five and they'll, uh, they'll take, cut to a take different five cam. Take five and we'll see, cut to a different cam. Cool. And um, I'm going to go, you know, they got good cookies downstairs. They have good cookies downstairs? Do. Yeah, chocolate chip. If only there was a slide that we could take. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, there will be. Once again, thank you so much. Uh, I don't know, we can keep hanging out, but in case we don't, just that was, this is really cool. So thanks. My pleasure, Jack. All right. Das, uh, we'll, we'll throw it back to you guys, and uh, maybe get a, get a cookie. See you, Das. <laughs> All right, folks. A uh, little off the rails with the stream, but we'll go back. This is back to the museum's feed here. Um, let's give them some time so that Garrett can go around. Definitely, I think we can get Garrett back over here onto the stream, but uh, want to give him some time to go and see if he can't find another guest that he might talk to. I mean... <laughs> It's like, what's going on? And he just grabs the guy with the hard hat, and the escort's like, he has to go over here. And he's like, no, no, but come over here. And they pin a mic on him, and they ask him the questions. Um, what a good bunch of people out there. It really is cool that they are sharing this with us, and they gave us this access. Garrett's out there hanging with us. Jack's got some cameras set up. The stream you're seeing right now is from the actual museum there, that view. It's going to be swinging towards Jack and Garrett. But we'll see if uh, Garrett doesn't find another victim. He was scanning the room for victims to bring onto the live stream and talk about all the cool stuff they're doing out there at the California Science Center. Now, I know we had Chris here a little while ago, but I do think that Chris might have been needing to head off to sleep. No, I'm still here. Oh, <laughs> Chris, you're still yeah. here. No, I couldn't. Well, I was like, I can't miss this interview with Garrett. He's... <laughs> <laughs> the part where he's like, someone passing goes, grabs all of them, and Jack sticks a mic on him. He's like, I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> Good times. Garrett is such a sport. Uh, massive thanks to Garrett for hopping on there and helping us set this up as well. He was on the show, uh, the museum show. Him and Mike Massimino were on the NSF Live doing their two funny astronauts do the news bit the other day. If y'all haven't seen that stream, we've got it here on the channel where we literally just handed over the reins to the stream to them and let their do their thing let them do their thing but uh chris how you doing i don't want to it's like so far past your bedtime right now but <laughs> yeah. the shuttle story is like how you doing um, i'm still here um the the fun thing i'd ask garrett when he comes back yeah is he he intimated on it he touched on it earlier when he said that he basically kicked off the crew um on sts 123 with endeavor he launched with Endeavour. Yeah. He basically was for the exhibition um, on the ISS. He's basically for an ISS stay, which means he was like a crew rotation. And that was back in the days where the shuttle that launched him then departed without him. So he might have got to see out, I'm sure he would have, look out the windows on the ISS, watching the orbiter that he'd launched on Endeavour. Oh. Fly away. Now, the cool thing is, it's one of the most impressive vehicles to fly away from the ISS because it usually do a full spin around the space station and it did a salute with the SS Amarius with its robotic arm. Yeah. So I want to see when Jack, when Garrett comes back, ask him what he got to see as Endeavour was departing, leaving him on ISS with his other crew members departing away without him. Because that would be cool to ask. I've never heard an astronaut talk about that before, ironically, and I, I would have heard about it before. Just the sights of watching his orbiter from a distance leaving the ISS. Yeah, that is a great point. And uh, I think we should be able to get Garrett back in a little bit here. And we will ask. I just made a note of that in our channel so we can ask him that question. That's a great point. Like, imagine seeing your ride to the space station pull away and, like, leave you there. I feel yeah. bad when, like, my mom would leave me at school or whatever, I guess. Like, imagine the space shuttle leaving you on the space station. So... Uh, Jack, tripod, 
Okay, cool. We're cool. I was watching another camera there. Um, we're still waiting for them. It looked like they were troubleshooting that uh, torsion thing where the engineer said they were, or I guess the museum person said they were going to turn the shuttle a little bit to get it. It's almost just like going through the, the passageway of the VAB, right, Chris? Where they had yeah. to turn it a little bit to get it to fit? The, the VAB was four bays. Wait, still this. It's still yep. there. <laughs> it's still there, yeah. Four high bays, um, and they basically roll the orbiter in into the middle of the VAB, which is called a transfer aisle. And that's an impressive, like, gangway area where vehicles to this day, including SLS core stage, are rolled into the VAB. There we go. Wonderful picture. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and that's where it'd be lifted up and through the right-hand side of this photograph, you'd see the space shuttle's been moved across yep. through a very small partway inside of the high bay and then brought down you can actually see the cranes there you can see the crane halfway up oh there yep. that's in the hunts the yellow cranes yeah yep halfway up and also right on the roof on the top part those are the two cranes they'd use at the vab and if you can look at the right hand side of the top part of that photograph you can see the gaps inside of the transfer aisle where the orbiter would be squeezed through it was quite a tight squeeze i just remember that Yep. Uh, ironically, just now, tiny squeeze to bring them through to the high bay, then brought back down on top, basically in parallel with the ET as it was brought down for the mate. These are Max's photos of inside of the VAB, by the way. He got the opportunity to go on top of the VAP for a launch recently, and he actually had a, a camera recording his walkthrough. And he's got a bunch of behind-the-scenes stuff that we had here for members on the channel. I don't know. I mean, it's mostly members watching right now, so the folks with your names highlighted in the ends, that, you know, the members of the channel, what did y'all think if y'all were able to see Max's view from inside the VAB on that uh, behind-the-scenes content we snuck out to y'all we didn't really sneak it out he had permission to do it i mean it's not like we snuck the camera but uh this is max's photo of that from i don't know if jack moved the camera a little bit or not but i think we can see more there's a yellow crane in the way now are we seeing more of the shuttle are we not is that an optical illusion or the crane has just moved in there and so i feel like we see more of it actually don't know the answer there but in any event, <laughs> um, Chris, what do you what do you want to do? Do you want to? You were telling shuttle stories uh, whenever you know we what? jumped I'm... in with Garrett. Do you need to take off? What do you need to do? No, no, no. I'm going to commit to this. I need to finish off my shuttle stories. Okay. <laughs> um... I, I'd feel bad if I um, said I'm going to bail and then wake up in a cold sweat going, I should have finished with SCS-134. I, I had Why an opportunity. Why did I get to SCS-134? <laughs> I think, um, Kevin, if I can preempt you, we'll go to SCS-130 still, because we never got through that story. Uh, with the coupler mission, which is, we're talking about windows on the ISS, um, it is pretty amazing that you look at the views they get from those massive windows, the coupler, but it's so important as well for the future, where basically you would have things like the um, arrivals of Dragon, Cygnus, and all these vehicles to the ISS, and they had a robotic workstation inside the coupler, which was a credible, basically, views of what you could see from not just Earth, but also arriving and departing vehicles. They called them visiting vehicles. So if we can get STS-130 up, we can look through it. There we go. That's SCS 134. Never mind. We can move on to that mission if we want to. <laughs> that is the patch there of um, SCS 134, which was the final mission of Endeavour. So we'll move on to 134. Um, that actually was quite an important mission in its own right for science because that took the AMS, um, which was still on the ISS today. It's no longer working. I don't believe. Chat, can, if anyone in the science community there, um, no, if the AMS-02 is still working on the ISS. It's been on there for many, many years now. It obviously is still there, but uh, it's just incredible. I'd, I'm trying to work out what the future was with AMS. So chat, someone help me out with that payload. Because I know about the shuttles, but the payload's a different kettle of fish, especially with some of those, like SS-134. While we look at this beautiful picture, this is better picture, in fact, of Endeavour. And these are our photographs from, um, I think it was Nathan... Um, Nathan Muller? I think it was Nathan Muller. It's one of our photographs, that I know for a fact. Um, really is very interesting. I don't think anyone knows about AMS. Anyone in chat? Does anyone know what I'm going to find out myself, in fact, because it's something I'd like to know my own self. 
But you can see two things on that photograph there. That's impressive a thing to talk about as well. It's called the tail service masts. Those two grey massive boxes either side of the SSMEs there. That is where they house the umbilicals which attach to the side of the Orbiter MPS, main propulsion system. And that provided electrical, fluids and fueled the vehicle. That's where it all flowed through the Orbiter into the external tank from there. And that is the version from Shuttle of what you see at Starbase with a booster quick disconnect. That is the same thing. And that's why there's two on either side, one for lo uh, lo uh, oxygen and one for liquid hydrogen. The ship disconnect on the Starbase one is for the ship side of things. So that's how it's different. That It's all on the base with the Space Shuttle. But that's a, a wonderful photograph there. You Very, very clean photograph of what you can see there from the hardware side of things. Moving on to the next shot. There we go. Look at this. That is from a WB-57. Again, that's been involved with Starship, as we know. But that is basically an important camera. It's not for pretty photographs. It is for tracking purposes. And it is for basically anything goes wrong. They'll have some photographs from that altitude, the high ascent altitude. There was, um, back in the days of Dig. Anyone remember that? The old social media platforms, way before Reddit days and stuff like that. There was people saying that there was photographs of launch from the ISS. And it wasn't. It was from the high altitude WB-57 planes that took the photographs of the launch. Again, on purpose for uh, photographic reasons, because they wanted to make sure that everything looked great from that photography angle. And that is one of the photographs in question there. There we go. Arriving at the ISS. This was something after Columbia. They installed a different technique to the arrival. It included the RPM, which is called the R-Pitch uh, Rendezvous Maneuver, where basically the orbit would arrive under the space station. It would then do a whole, full 360-degree flip under the ISS so that at the halfway point the belly was showing to the photographers on the ISS, they had special cameras on the ISS, to document the TPS on the belly to make sure there was no damage seen there because on flight day two they would take the SA, the robotic uh, arm from the, from the actual cargo bay of the space shuttle to take a uh, proper LIDAR of all sorts of photography from the wing lead and edge and areas like that on the space shuttle but they could not get right under the belly so they used this flight day three rendezvous to do the RPM to check the belly of the orbiter for any damage on the TPS and that's just before that photograph there. You can see they're just lining up for the, for the actual rotation. We've got a split screen on the left-hand side there, so we get some live views at the same time. That's Endeavour landing on STS-134. That was the penultimate landing for the Space Shuttle program, the last one for Endeavour. Um, it, bittersweet moments, uh, to say the least, but also celebratory because, let's face it, on a serious note, this, these were missions that were... Extended, in fact, because they were going to retire sooner than this, but they extended it by a couple of missions to allow for the completion of the ISS and make sure it was stocked up. Literally, it was logistics stocked up at the end of the final missions for the space shuttle program. The, in fact, the Atlantis SDS 135 was basically a big cargo mission. It was like a big CRS mission with a lot of payload on board. And that is where they set the stage for the new era, which was commercial crew. Commercial resupply, all those Dragon missions, the Cygnus missions, the ATV with the, the European Space, Station, uh, Space Agency, the HTV with JAXA, all those cargo missions had to make up for the loss of the Space Shuttle's up mass. And of course, the down mass was never recovered, but that's something where it goes. I'm, get, I'm being told by Keith that AMS 02 is operational still. That is amazing. After all these years. Thank you for posting that, because I didn't know what the status was with that. I, just, I assumed it had a lifespan of, of X years, but not as many years as it is now, because we're talking about it being around, what, probably working all these years past. It may, it may be like a, a Curiosity on Mars situation where... And you find all these robotic missions to the um, to Mars tend to last longer than they plan to last, which is always a bonus, but it's uh, pretty impressive. In fact, I can Google it. <laughs> I should have Googled it, Keith. Thank you. But thank you for telling us in chat. So, yeah, that is basically 
Endeavour's highlight emissions, but remember, she flew 25 times. We could have gone through each mission itself. They're all important missions, but those were the highlighted missions during those two parts in the history of the special Endeavour. I'm back here with you, Chris. I hopped over to help Jack out real quick, and I am uh, back in comms now. Oh, it's a shame, because I was going to start with STS-1 <laughs> and just go through them until you came back. <laughs> just go through every yeah. STS until it's you go now through. 11 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> We're up to <laughs> STS-57. <laughs> I think we'll pace ourselves on that. Uh, you don't have to do them all tonight. But uh, just to, to communicate the plan real quick, um, Jack and Garrett do plan to be back. They're taking a little bit of a break, and we're going to try to take some more questions from them, or I guess from us, as they're over there. But uh, Chris, thank you so much for holding it down while I hopped over to that other channel. That's one of the things we do, folks that are watching. Like, we are such a small team. I mean, I guess we're sort of a big team for what we do, but we're such a small team compared to, you know, a big media company or a news company or something like that, right? Like even a local news station. We get an awful lot of stuff done with a very small amount of people. So Jack's out there wrangling the interview, handling the cameras, talking to Garrett. Then he's got an AirPod in. We're just going to ask Jack a question, and Garrett's going to grab somebody by the collar and drag them onto the camera like we we were such a small team, um, and I hope what we sometimes lack in polish, um, we make up for in excitement and interesting content for y'all. We're not trying to sit here being too stick in the mud. We just like to have fun, and we like to share this sort of stuff with y'all. So, hope it's working out for you. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with us. Um, Chris, same with you. Like, like we don't have this huge, massive, oh, we wrote all this script, and we have this stuff we're going to present to you tonight. This is literally just Chris grabbed some of his favorite images of Shuttle Endeavor and is just talking to you off the top of his head about Shuttle Endeavor. Like, it's not scripted. We'd have a team of writers come up with this content that we're going to cover tonight, right, Chris? That's correct, but the fun thing is, if I'd had some sleep, rather than the one hour that I got, <laughs> oh, um, no. we could go for a long time. I want to I wanna ask Chat. I know Chat has said yes this before, but one day... When there's not a lot going on, and we've got like a, a subscription anniversary or something like that, just for, if I don't need an excuse, I'll just do it anyway. How, should we go for a marathon shuttle stream and just start from the start and see how long we can go for? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Let's just watch chat. There's not that many people in chat right now because it's a silly time of night. But I'm just, It is. Look at it. There we go. <laughs> so this yeah, is... I'm, think I'm thinking that's a popular idea. <laughs> this is this is like the uh, the hardcore fans. Like most of the people in chat um, have green names. They're part of the membership program. Every now and then we see somebody that's got a green name. Everybody that's joining us, thank y'all for hanging out with us. But that stream, Chris, I think we should we should definitely get that stream done one day. I yep. still want the Englishman goes on a shuttle grand tour where you get your rear end over here and you go and see all the shuttles. Now, you see, Daz, I know what your plan I'm is I'm just there. saying. You, you, you just want a clip of me crying like a baby? <laughs> no. <laughs> so no, I'm, we don't have to. I, well, I'm sorry. It's going to happen because when, that, when those doors open at the Kennedy Space Center, yeah, the visitor yeah. center I was going to go. I mean, I'm imagining that, but I'm imagining now this facility in California. Yep. I think it won't be tears. It'll be more gasps and open mouths. So, oh, no. cause it, it just looks, it, I'm, I'm, in, I didn't know it was this good. I'll be honest with you. I've seen the yep. designs for this. I knew what the plan was, but that first shot we got from Jack's wide camera, the size of the facility it shocked me. I would, I did not expect that. So this place I want to visit. I mean, there's no question about it. I want to make it something on my bucket list of definitely going to see because I love the space shuttle. I admire the special. I respect the special. I know a lot of people go, how do you love it? Because it was expensive and dangerous. The fact that it got to the end of its lifetime with three orbiters retired after the issues they had is a testament to not only the shuttles, but their workforce. So I can yep. combine the whole thing together because I think it's important to respect that they fought back. There was a saying called finish strong. Yep. They had T-shirts on it. Every time you saw an orbiter roll or an external tank arrive, all the workers had on the back of their T-shirts, finish strong. Finish strong. And they did, yeah. Yep. Good deal. It's definitely something we got to work out. Now, this is going to take a couple years because the render, this is a render of what the building is supposed to be like, right? Um, but they are installing the shuttle on the stack right now. 
and then they're going to build the rest of the building around it. Because think about it, like the VAB, it had the huge doors and it was built to have the Saturn V rockets roll out and then the shuttle could fit too, blah, 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 right? But here, they're not going to build a miniature VAB in California. They're going to install the shuttle stack in its flight configuration, the vertical stack configuration, and then finish the building around it. So they're still a couple way, a couple years away from that building being open. I think that's a render of the inside of the building there, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but it's going to be a couple of years. So then I'm like... Oh, yeah, look, we have all sorts of images of this. There you go, more images. And you see the different observation levels where you can get to different parts. Is that is that like a glass floor at the top, Chris? Mm. <laughs> Above the shuttle, like right. where you could go and look down through? Is that what that's supposed to be? <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt you, but there was two versions there. One which looks like the observation tower uh -huh. is almost like a version of the launch tower, the fixed uh -huh. service structure. <laughs> it's a glass floor look i want to go <laughs> <laughs> no way i think there was maybe an earlier one in there where it was like painted red and it looked like the red yes, structure yeah yeah and well, then this maybe oh geez the glad look at this right so you can look down oh, right they... through the nose of the orbiter into the flight deck <laughs> through the windows from a glass. Oh, that's a, they needed to add some supports to this render. Like they're like, eh, I don't know about that glass floor. I've done that at the Grand Canyon, by the way, where you walk out on the glass walkway and then you look down in the Grand Canyon. But uh, <laughs> that's amazing. I cannot wait until it's finished. And that is something that we need to go and see. I would love to go and see this with you out there, Chris. We're just going to do a field trip one day. Yeah, we're going to have to. I mean, chat's insisting we do it. So yeah, they are. It's, it's been approved. Um, well, it's chat, been approved and stamped. <laughs> chat would be paying for it, so they better <laughs> yeah, approve it. Like we don't, we don't get to pay for it ourselves. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jack, yes. you live there. We're going to crash on your couch when we come to LA. Like. Right. I was gonna make a. I was, yeah, I was gonna make a joke about uh, you meeting Leica, but you already met her, and that yeah, was I didn't meet Leica. <laughs> that was the whole thing. Um, but oh, hey, I don't know geez. if you noticed. It's it's being rotated. It's, it's translating and rotating. <laughs> we can see it from a uh, your view, I think, where we're getting more and more uh, orbiter, like that one crane. See, or that's not the crane. That's the lifting jig, I guess, that we see yeah, rotating yeah, around the, the there. Fixture. Yeah, that's the fixture that we see on. This is Jack's camera, by the way, y'all. Um, no kidding. That's rotating around. Hey, real quick. I know I haven't done this yet because because this has been such like a whirlwind stream, folks. But some quick thanks to folks that have been gifting some memberships. RC Horseman gifted five memberships. We got Stephen Arman became a pad rat a little while ago. Max E did a super chat saying one last stack. Blushy Boy gifted a red team membership in there. Bideford twenty dollars super chat a little while ago. Thank you to or thanks for all this coverage. And we've got, uh, let's see here, Craig Coca. Actually, Craig, that was something that we looked into asking about a fundraiser for the museum or to sponsor a tile. And that was not set up for this event, but we could definitely uh, work with the museum to see if that's something they do in the future. We do that for Intrepid. For the Intrepid shows, we run fundraisers and we help those shows support what the museum does with its outreach. And uh, that was not quite set up for this stream, but something that we could maybe help out California Sire Center within the future if they were interested in doing that. Sheriff Tracy was in there with five red team memberships. Alexander G did a super chat. I'm just going to go through them all because because we got a couple in here. Daniel Hogman, thank you so much. We've got uh, Davey with a question about the cranes. Jack, could you could you get like the model of the big yellow crane or something like that so we can answer the you know what's that big crane over there? I don't know if you could ask somebody if there's like a, somebody around that we could get that question from when you get a chance. Oh, Jack actually muted and walked away. Sorry, I was I was waiting for his response, and then I went over to look, and I saw he was muted. Um, Davey, we'll see if we can get that question for you. Good, good question. Jeff Rowe, gifted a red team membership. Yeah, I, Eric, I'm, at, I'm asking Jack. someone right now. That's nice, what thanks, I'm doing. dude. I'm asking someone right now. Perfect. Appreciate you. Uh, Eric Frazier as well. Mans on Mars did a super chat. Imagine the shuttle lifted by a Falcon Heavy would be an awesome one. Mans on Mars, I think we're going to go with two shuttles on either side of a Starship. Like, sort of in symmetrical mode, mounted on either side, because then the physics works. Um, thank you so much for the super chat. And then Snoop Dogg became a red team member there as well. I will read a couple more of these in just a minute, but I did see a couple red team memberships getting gifted there, filling in some of those gray names in chat. 
with nice green names. So if you're tossing around some memberships, thank y'all so much for the support. I don't mean to spend too much time on it, but we're able to do cool stuff like this because y'all keep showing up. <sighs> I am just reading a question in chat. It's come up a few yeah, times. Yeah. I want to cover it. People think it looks plastic. Now, that's not a terrible thing to ask because... A lot of people are probably tuned in thinking, well, well, that's not what I remember Space Shuttle looking like. It's actually shrink-wrapped, and it's something they've done before with Atlantis at Kennedy Space Center. They do that to protect the orbiter during this transport to its final resting place. I say resting place. It's not, I don't know. It's probably not resting place. To it, Basically to its final point during the lift. It's something yeah. that just protects the TPS. Remember... The space shuttle was designed to be as light as possible. It was still very heavy, but designed to be light as possible. And the TPS is quite fragile. And that's obviously something why they worked to ensure that firm liberations from the external tank were to a minimal, because it's a bad thing when the TPS gets hit by foam at hypervelocity, because it can damage the TPS. So that shrink wrap you see right there is why it looks plastic right now. Once it's in position, they'll remove that plastic sheet, and you'll see Endeavour as she was when she landed on SDS-84, Dave. Thankfully, on all the exhibits, not cleaned up the orbiter. They're letting their battle scars still be there from the re-entry, and I think that's a very important thing to do. I think it's yeah. a nice touch to make him look as authentic, authentic as possible, I can't speak. With, um, Chris, with it, with Atlantis, that's like a specific thing. Like, when they clean Atlantis, they have to do it very specifically so they don't clean off any of the re-entry effects, right? Yep. But they clean off the dust from the facility that blah, blah, blah. Like, there's an entire thing about how you clean the space shuttle, because they want to keep it tidy they don't want dust to build up on it but they have to do it in such a way that they don't clean off the stuff that's supposed to be there you don't yeah. want it shiny brand new right it went to space if you're a shuttle nerd as i am um you will actually be able to recognize an orbiter if you took the name away yeah and just said right name the shuttle i i could do it and a lot of people could do it because there's there's differences in the battle scars on the bot on the, on the mid body from the re-entry and also the tps tiles in their final launches, that was their final configuration. The darker tiles on the belly were the newer tiles. The older tiles were greyer. And you would almost have like a fingerprint of the space shuttle. You could recognize which ones had um, more black TPS near the main landing gear doors on certain orbiters. And then you could basically identify them just from that. And luckily, they are keeping all these orbiters, all three orbiters, in the same configuration that when they landed on the final mission. So yep. you can identify them that way. Yep. And there, real quick, there's a, that's actually, I will say, the coolest shuttle display that we had until this started happening. That's Space Shuttle Atlantis out at KSA VC at the Cape, sort of like with the arm extended and the cargo bay doors open. You can see the nose and you see that wear and tear is probably really the right terminology to use, right? On the nose of it, but it's it's displayed that way there at KSC VC. And this was the way that this is presented is, is so amazing. If you ever get a chance to go to the Cape, you should definitely see Shuttle Atlantis. And when Endeavor at the California Science Center here is done, this is going to be an amazing exhibit as well, which is why we spooled up this so that we can help share it with the folks here on the channel who, I don't know, on occasion, like shuttles. It's a thing, right? We like shuttles. We do. Let's see here. Oh, here we go. Is that, that is Endeavor right there. Looks a little newer in that picture, doesn't it, Chris? Yeah, that's baby picture. That was when um, she was rolled out of Palmdale. And you can see there the forward RCS with the, um, where the noses are covered. And they were obviously removed before they were put into a flight configuration. But, yeah, looking brand new there. Yep. No battle scars yet because she had not yeah. gone to a re-entry yet. Hey, Jack. I hate to, to butt in, but uh, we have Garrett back. So give me a second to get the camera set up. And uh, we'll do, like, uh, oh, we have an answer to the, the question about what they did to the SRBs that they had to be filled. So we, oh, really? We'll do, like, a, a question or two, and then uh, we'll, we'll just uh, see how it goes. Nice, good. Uh, when you're ready to go, just like step in front of the camera and like wave. All right. <laughs> we'll get Garrett Reisman here back in just a second with Jack Byer out there at the intro, the intro, science center, the California Science Center. What is this view? Is this looking? 
This is when they were working on it. This is still inside a facility. Chris, what are these pictures we're showing now? Where are those from? These are inside the orbiter processing facility. All the orbiters had to wall. They're actually one's been converted for CST Bo uh, Boeing Starliner, CST what CST one hundred. Um, but it, all the orbiters were inside the OPFs. They originally planned the orbiters to be in like a an aircraft hangar and turned around within a few days for their next launch. But that soon became an impossibility, and they spent about three months on average. There we go. There's a great wide shot of the OPF. You yeah. could not see the orbiter because of the amount of gantries that have around the orbiter, because that's the amount of work they had to do after a mission and prepare, preparations for the next mission. No kidding. The shuttle's inside of all that right there, so they could access all of the bits. I mean, you wouldn't crawl around on the wing of the shuttle. Um, you'd have little walkways and stuff like that where you can access all the different parts, right? Yep. No kidding. I've actually seen a video. You'd never get away with doing it these days. That's actually a great picture, by the way. That's the door they had to the MPS. You can actually see through the doorways of the up uh, into the main propulsion system there, the big pipes and what have you. But that was a small access in that aft of the orbiter there. That's like the uh, the that's inside the MPS. Yeah, MPS, like the the aft end of the shuttle where all the machinery for the engines, like the business. I guess not. I don't know which is the business end of the RS twenty five, right? Um, but the the turbo pumps and all that sort of stuff, the stuff that didn't stick out the back of the shuttle, was inside and closed in the aft end of the orbiter, right? Yeah, these are um, pictures I've read, taken from L2. If anyone's interested in L2 and talking about, well, they got an L2. Well, short example is this. <laughs> these are inside the orbiter. I mean, these are taken for permission. We've got a tour. We no literally got kidding. a tour. And um, knowing our guys, um, <laughs> we didn't just take the flight deck. We didn't say, flight deck, done. We said, can we look at the back, please, as well? Can we look in the MPS? Look at the, <laughs> where the SSMEs we own and what have you. So we got a lot more photographs. And this is in this is endeavor, so it's great to have these photographs before uh, it was no longer possible. Wait, so time out, Chris. These are like NASA space flight pictures that we got to go and take. These are our pictures, yes. No kidding. These aren't no like kidding. NASA pictures that are just released Whoa. that everybody have. These are like L two pictures that did we have? I spent the afternoon grabbing a lot of L two pictures to put into a folder for, for Kevin to show no on screen. No kidding. <laughs> All right, there you go. Anyways, if anybody doesn't... Oh, look, hey, there's a bunch of signatures, Chris, in a font yep. sign. That's a story, by the way. That obviously is no longer there. That is the the walkway in the OPF yeah. towards the orbiter crew hatch, and you'd walk through, and the pipe there is basically for um, air conditioning because, obviously, on the ground, she's she's there, and she's it's not a, a big space. And um, during the final days, as you can see there, the, the actual team that worked on Endeavour would sign that wall. <laughs> and our guys got to sign it, by the way. No kidding. Yeah. That's there was a, too... a thing. There was a thing. Sorry, I, sorry, guys. There's, no, cool. there's, a, there's a sign when the orbiters were rolled out. There'd be a sign saying things like, we're behind you, Discovery. We're behind you, Atlantis. Behind you, Endeavour. Yeah. And if you zoom in on that banner, which they all walk with in front of the orbiter, ironically, um, all the crew, <laughs> all the, the engineers that worked on that orbiter for that mission would sign good luck messages to Endeavour or the orbiter on that sign. And I've got zoomed up. I've put them on X. Um, we've got zoomed in um, on the signatures. And someone put like, good luck. Good luck, Endeavour, and good luck, good luck, this, and putting little alien signs next to me and what have you. It was like a cool, fun thing, and it was like another thing that I could bring up as identity of how the engineers cared for the Optus. That is something the engineers did for Endeavour. They gave her special wheel hubs and signed it, and what? they got into trouble for it. <laughs> because what? they said, yeah, their bosses said, you were not approved to do this. They were still in their NASA mode, probably, <laughs> whatever, but... That was actually designed by the engineers. They put special little, um, these, these little um, shuttle design wheel caps on them. And um, yeah, it was a cool thing. I actually know one of the people involved. That's why I know the story. I got into trouble for it. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> There's the aft end. That's basically where the SSMEs were attached to the MPS. <laughs> no kidding. Really hey, Chris. Yep. It looks like we've got uh, Garrett and Jack waving at us here, so we just need to cue them in somehow. I'm not exactly sure how we should do okay, that. Do you. we just like... All right. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Go yeah, ahead, Jack. Let's Talk. get started. So, thanks for coming back. No problem. 
Um, We're back. So it's, we, 12, it's 12 15. I was getting late. Right, yeah. But we I got to go progress. to work tomorrow. L- luckily for me, this is work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, we've yeah. had some progress, so maybe like a little quick update on, on where we're at. I don't know if you can tell, but she, they rotated her about 45 degrees, which is where they want her to be in roll. Uh, and now, uh, hopefully pretty soon, they'll start lifting her again and, and bring her in. Uh, and then, uh, as Ken Phillips told us before, it's questionable about whether or not they'll be able to thread it through that little gap or if they'll have to bring it out and then push it back in. But they're going to make it up as they go along. So that's, that's going to be exciting. All right. Well, I, I'm excited. <laughs> it's 12.15. I don't even feel like it's 12.15. So. I, I feel like it's 12.15. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, I do have an answer to your question. Uh, uh, das asked us about, um, or somebody wanted to know about what's inside the SRBs. So it turns out, first of all, the external tank is completely empty. There's nothing in there. Okay. Uh, in the SRBs, they are completely empty. There's nothing in there. It's just the casings. It's just the casings. It's just the casings. So wow. It turns out that um, the, uh, the the people up at what used to be Thiokol, you know, up at uh, um, I guess Northrop Grumman now. Yeah, Thiokol, then ATK, ATK, then Orbital ATK, Orbital ATK, ATK, yeah, Orbital ATK, Orbital ATK Northrop Grumman, Thiokol, <laughs> something. Those guys, the guys up at Utah, they they, they said that. Um, Actually, that the propellant inside the casings doesn't provide any stiffness or, or any structural integrity. So um, it's all the casings provide all that. Huh. Actually, it kind of makes sense because I, I should have thought of this as, is, uh, you know, they have to re- resist the barrel stress of, that, of, that, of, that, of the combustion pressures inside. So they have to be really strong. They have to be a lot stronger than the, than the thin walls around, uh, right. like, propellant tanks right. uh, on, on, on Falcon 9 or on, on the external tank there. They're very thin-walled. Uh, in fact, I know on the on the Falcon Nine, those the 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 walls, uh, which are the tanks, uh, if you were able to shrink them, they would actually be skinnier than the side of a soda can. So the proportions are that like that thin. That's wild. And yeah, yet, that's not even like that's not even a balloon tank. Like there, I think what was it the was it the the Gemini rockets? Uh, the early, I think it was the early atlases. They used like the balloon tanks, where it's like it's held together by the structural integrity, <laughs> of, or the by the pressure of the of, of the, the propellant, of the, which of is the propellant. which is wild. So that makes yeah. me think. Well, the external tank we had to keep pressurized. We had we had to keep all this pressure yep. in there and for structural integrity. But uh, but so here for the SRBs, those the, those steel casings, the the wall thickness is so is so thick that it provides all the structural integrity. Oh, we just got some lights. Oh, now they went off. <laughs> Turn them on. A, 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 a gasp so, went up in the crowd. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, now they're, they're completely empty, and, but they're 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 fine. There's, there's still the load path because the only thing that actually connects them uh, to the floor are, are the same eight bolts, four in each SRB that held it to the launch pad. Yeah, the bolts are like this. They're yeah. they're huge. I remember seeing one. I think it was the the Air and Space Museum in in Le- Leicester. I'm probably mispronouncing it. It's mm-hmm. like they had they just had a little bolt. Uh, well, a big bolt sitting there, and it's it's crazy just to think that the entire vehicle was held and will be held by <laughs> what you said it's eight, four for each, four for each, four for each. Actually, uh, I have I have uh, two uh, sets of half nuts back home because uh, you know when you uh, this I don't know if many people know this, but when you fly, uh, you know, so you have eight bolts, right? Right. Uh, eight nuts, and when those nuts have uh, pyros. Uh, explosives in them. They split. So they split in half. They're frangible. They split in half, and then the two halves fall into a sand catcher. And then after the shuttle's gone, somebody goes out there and, and finds them, and then they clean them up and they shine them all up for you, and they make bookends out of them. And so uh, I've got uh, two of those uh, back in the house, two sets of, of bookends, and uh, which begs you know, normally have seven people on the shuttle. So it begs the question: What do they do with the eighth? So somebody at, at down, I think at KSC, has got like a whole stack of them in, the, in their garage. <laughs> They're just like, yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, another one. <laughs> My precious. So, uh, yeah. So, so that's that's it. And 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 uh, and and just that connected to the vibration isolators for the earthquakes. Right. Uh, with the empty tanks, and uh, they've done all the analysis, and they they think it can handle anything. The uh, the San Andreas. Well, San Andreas is not right here, but anything this fault system could throw at it, which is saying a lot. Good. Well. Hope, hopefully we see this thing stand for a good long time to come. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I, I mean, it, it just got a lot louder here because it is, it's getting lifted up. I, I mean. Oh, it's moving. It's moving fast. Yeah, yeah, it's moving. And I see guys climbing the scaffolding. That's a good sign, too. Excellent. Oh, wow, it's really going. 
Yeah, this, this is this is happening. Wow, cool, man. So exciting. I thought I was gonna have to leave. As, as soon as I give up and leave, and it's gonna like go in lickety split. Oh, but... it is. Isn't that always how it goes? Yeah. It's like if you're if you're taking out your telescope, all of a sudden, bam, cloudy sky. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh man. Man, so, look at that. Uh, I can I can throw some questions at you, or okay. if. if uh, Go ahead. I'm gonna, I'll answer and, and watch at the same time. If that's all right. Yeah, because this is this is beautiful. Instead of doing the relay with DOS this time, we will uh, read some questions here. Okay. Uh, first one is, what was it like? You know, because you got dropped off at the ISS, uh-huh. and then saw it was Endeavor, right? You saw Endeavor mm-hmm. leave. Yeah. What, what is that like? Be, you <laughs> know, seeing your ride up, like you know you have another yeah. ride coming, but you, I remember. The, I remember. Um, so uh, actually, the, the thing I remember the most is like, so it doesn't leave right away. It, it stays. You close the hatch, but they stay docked for overnight usually. And so uh, I just remember when we closed the hatch, that um, I remember because I, I just trained for like a year with these other six people. Right. They were on the other side of that hatch, and they're all over there. And now I'm all over here. And I turn around, and I see Yuri and Peggy, and my thought was, I hope I like them because. <laughs> <laughs> They're the only humans I'm going to see for the next at least a month until the Soyuz shows up. So, uh, fortunately, I liked them a lot. They were they were both great. Uh, but that was that was that was a little weird. I remember uh, being on the other side of the hatch and knowing that I'm I'm we're done. You know, I'm not part of that crew anymore. Now I'm part of this crew and having to kind of change my allegiance, if you will, <laughs> uh, switch the patches out and whatnot. So, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I can't. That's so sur- surreal. Isn't the right word because it's real. Yeah. Um, what, here, I'll, I'll grab a. I'll grab the next question here. Okay. Whoa, man. Holy moly! Look, you can see where they they got the holes in the bottom there with it for the uh, feed lines where they connect. This is really happening. This is really happening. Now that's surreal. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, they, they didn't send me a question. They just said, FYI, there's a shuttle right behind you. <laughs> like, yeah, holy cow. Space shuttle right there. <laughs> also, Das, I'm, I'm still getting reverb. Uh, if you can kill that or kill me. Oh. Here it comes. Translating. Yeah. Up and... Well, this is the part you said where they, they weren't quite sure how they were going to do it, and so I guess now we're going to find out how they're, how they're going to do it. Yeah. Look, they got guys up there way by the Ford attach point yep. getting ready to, to hope he has a nice, good craftsman socket wrench. <laughs> <laughs> don't uh, don't pull a, a Minuteman or whatever it was and drop the bolt. <laughs> oh. Also, uh, wow, I hope one of them has a GoPro on their forehead. That would be really. That'd be a really cool shot. <laughs> um, we can all, we can almost see the body flap now. Yep. Yep. It's crazy. I never noticed it until I saw a B two landing. Um, the B two has like a weird little body flap kind of thing. Oh yeah. Like its tail. Uh, I don't know if it's a flap or what the tech like aeronautical term is, mm. but it always kind of reminded me a little bit of of what you see there in the shuttle. Oh my God! It's so hot. How do you how do you feel right now? Uh, it's just neat to see it move that fast. I mean, because it, it was just kind of creeping along there for so long, and now it, now it's really hauling. Yeah, it really is. It's hauling the mail. Oh, we're about to get to the uh, to the engines there. Yeah, she's almost clear. Does it have like the, all the turbo machinery and no. stuff on it, or is it just no, uh, no. the nozzles? No, so just the nozzles, and, and there's nothing behind it. They they. Uh, the SSMEs that were in there, they, they held on to for the SLS. Makes sense. Um, so yeah, they're gonna they're they're, they're flying. The, the shuttle engines are all flying again with SLS, but just once. Uh, so unfortunately, but so it goes. At least they get to do their job one more time, like yeah, you were saying earlier. Yeah, yep. But yeah. So they just have the the nozzles. There's there's uh, everything uh, uh, inside there is the, all, all, that's all gone. Oh my God! This is amazing. I, I mean, we're like we're we're standing here and we're talking, but I have a camera right here on the ground that I'm going <laughs> to pick up and take photos. <laughs> I don't blame you. Uh, but I, 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 I'm gonna take one too. <laughs> I want to ask, like, 
and f- and feel free at any point, man, to just be like, shut up, I want to watch this. But, um, <laughs> I want to ask. You I want to take a, a, a time lapse. Nice. Yeah. If you want, you can throw it on that tripod. I have a little phone holder thingy. I don't want to get that fancy. Then, I, then I, if I do, if I get that fancy, then I feel obligated to like be good at this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now you can just be like, oh, it's just a phone picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was handheld. <laughs> good strategy. This is like the most off the rails interview ever, but I can't, I can't not take a photo of it. There she comes. She's coming around the corner. That's so beautiful. Oh, man. What a sight. That's wild. So, yeah, you can see the, the sort of the cutouts in the, in the, in the wrapping, both at, for the bottom and up, and up at the top. Yep, yep. So the bottom, you see the doors. Uh, you can see the outline of the doors as well. Uh, and... Um, yeah, we always, you know, one of the big concerns, uh, there's, there's a bunch of different events that occur along the time that, that give you a, kind of a sigh of relief, and one of them was getting those doors closed, because you can't come home with those doors open. Right. And there's no good way to get to, we actually had a tool that we would fly, it was like a T-handle. Like with a, cr- a with you a, crank them closed if you had yeah, to? Yeah, yeah, but the, the, the problem is getting down there, so there's no handrails or anything, it's all smooth, right? So how do you get around the around the back of the elevons and... Uh, over to the feed lines. It, that it sounds was, like an EVA I would not want to have to do. I remember talking to Bob Kirby about it once, and the only the best idea he came up with was you could take a laundry bag, and it, there, there's actually a rope, a coil rope in the back of the payload bay. You could tie it to that, to that. So you have this big laundry bag stuffed full of like whatever we can, whatever clothes we had, and then you tie it to the rope, and then you try to thread it in the in the little gap between the uh, elevon and the and the and the body flap there. Yeah. And then you could come around the backside and hold on to that big bag of laundry with like one arm, and then reach with the other arm and uh, and try to get the tool in there to close the to crank the doors closed. Holy cow! Yeah, that would be tough. This is so amazing. I'm, I feel like I'm a broken record, but I mean, what else do you say at a time like this? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I gotta do it. I love it. They really do have like two guys holding onto those <laughs> those lines coming down from the. Do you think they had to like fixture? Yeah. draw straws or like I want to be no, the guy? No, I think they got the biggest guys they had. <laughs> <laughs> you see those two lines that are, there's, are coming down to the vertical stabilizer. Yep. Yeah. With the it's two like, there's like lines. just people holding those. <laughs> is it like a group of people or is it literally like one guy? I think it's like one guy. <laughs> I, want to meet, I want to meet that guy yeah right that's a lot of pressure yeah I wouldn't, wouldn't want that pressure oh my gosh my right so endeavors in I, the air it's at least partially I think that, that it looks like that at least part of the wingtip is now over the wall All right, I'm going to put my camera down, but I'm going to pick it back up again in a second. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, we're, 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 yeah, we're filming. <laughs> it's okay. You, you can say hi. You can ask him on camera if you want, if it's, if it's shuttle we'll Come and say hi. Say hi. No. This, is, this is Diane. Say hi. Oh, I see. She's a docent Hello. here. Hello. 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 I've got a mic for you. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was the one I was wearing, but... Yes, um, we're really happy. It's finally happening after some <laughs> ten years, and it's going to be great. You sound pretty confident there. Yeah, I'm so confident. <laughs> <laughs> Completely confident. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, it's I just hanging out it's there. Good. I'm not driving that thing because I'm just making. Yeah, I know. Just yeah. no patience, well, huh? You, know, you gotta have. You gotta be patient, patient when you're driving a crane that big. Evidently, evidently. We're, <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I mean, that's the, not, a, not a job stress that I would want. <laughs> well, what, what did you do today, sweetie? Oh, I, I lifted a space shuttle. <laughs> I 
This looks like, looks like they're rotating it. So the cutout you're talking about, that they're going to see if they can mm -hmm. get it through. Like visually, so if you see, see there's a, a, a tower there. It's made of like kind of steer, steel yep. girders. Yep. Um, that's actually going to be the viewing tower. That's where uh, visitors are going to be able to go up kind of like as if they're ascending the tower to, to board the, the vehicle uh, and uh, it's going to be taller it's it's that's the, the actually the other sections are right out behind that wall and um, so there's a gap there between the edge of that tower and the scaffolding and they got to get the wing in that gap now the question is can they control it carefully enough that they're not going to contact anything as they bring it straight down that gap or so they bring it towards us down and then slide it in carefully this way that's, that's I think what they were debating about. Got it. Yeah, that's not that's not a lot of space there. That kind of cracks me up that like they're just kind of making this up as they go along. It's like something we do at SpaceX. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, design iterate. I guess uh, what is it? Fly, fail, fix, fly again. Like there's no. no that's not the iterative cycle we want. No, right now. no, no. We don't <laughs> want to move fast and break anything here. No. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's still pretty big. Still pretty big. <laughs> Here it comes. Interesting. Oh my god. Okay, camera. <laughs> yeah, that's a good shot. I'm like supposed to ask you questions. <laughs> <laughs> We're too busy sightseeing. That's amazing. Just wow. Ooh. I think I think that's just that those two guys turning it around. No kidding. <laughs> well no. I mean, there's like no wind tonight. You couldn't really ask for better, better conditions. I know. Yeah, it's it's uh, perfect. And we've I, think, got, I think it's supposed to get down to like under two knots, so that's pretty darn good. We've got like a bunch of rain in the forecast for the next week or so. And I know. Don't say that because if if it gets stuck right there, that's not good. Oh, okay. I don't know. I'll shut up. I'll shut up. Hey, you're the you're the one that said the D word. I know. I know. I know. Oh my gosh. It, it's in the air one last time. Wow. I don't have a lens wide enough. It's like every every shot of, that I'm going to shoot today is all going to be vertical, which I normally don't do. Wow. All right, no, well. No. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Oh, <laughs> Let me take a look and see if they're yelling at us, if they're enjoying us enjoying the show. Yeah. Um, and if you if you have places to be, obviously don't do not let me keep you. But if we can keep hanging out as long as you want. I'm just kind of watching it. Yeah, it's not. Now it's not getting exciting. I mean. It, there's times in my life where I'm like, I wish I had a little button on the side of my head that I could press and just like engrave a moment mm. in my conscience, yeah. consciousness. Because you know, you 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 see something cool, you see so many cool things, and you, you just or you just want to preserve that moment. But you know, human memory is kind of weird and fallible, and it changes with each time you remember it and all of that. Yeah, and and then, and then you can't tell if you're remembering the actual image or remembering the photo of the image that you took. And, exactly. Yeah. Exactly, and so this is this is definitely one of those moments where I'm just like, make sure you know cameras, photos, taking photos, shooting videos, streaming, all that is is well and good, but sometimes you just got to stop and look at it. Yeah. I'll tell you what. How about we go off mic for a while? Okay. And um, 
we'll come back on uh, Are you guys doing the maybe game? a little bit later once it uh, once okay. it gets a little bit closer. All right, yeah, sounds good. Like I said, we're here because of you, so thank you for the invite. And as much as you want to sit here and no, it's great that you're here covering chat, this. It's fantastic. Like, we, we we love we love doing it. So. I, I love the fact that you get to share this with so many people. It's, uh, it's awesome. All right, we'll throw it back to you guys. Uh, thank you for letting us take a moment to stare at this thing in the air. See you, Doc. All right. Good deal, folks. That's uh, Garrett Reisman out there, astronaut who actually went to space on Endeavor that's in the background there. And Jack Byer, our folks, or our guy out there who uh, was setting up cameras and helping us share all this stuff. At, at some point, you know, we sort of stopped even asking questions, and we told Jack and Garrett to just do their thing. Like, you don't have to turn around. You don't have to look at the camera. Just enjoy this. You're right here next to it. And uh, y'all just turn out and do your thing. And what a special moment to share with them. I don't know where y'all are all around the world that are sort of watching. There's 2,000 people watching right now. But uh, I do hope that y'all enjoyed that sort of interaction with Jack and Garrett there. That's just cool, honestly. It really is cool. <clears throat> We're going to get Jack to, uh, actually, here we go. Let's see here. We're going to get Jack to aim his camera back around here in just a second, and we'll get a couple other camera feeds here. This feed you're seeing, there's Jack again. <laughs> nice. Um, the feed you see on the left-hand side with the California Science Center logo on it, that's actually provided by the Science Center. They are streaming it on their channel as well. Massive thanks to them for giving us permission to be there with our own camera and sharing these views with everybody. Hey, there's actually people checking in. Where they're viewing from? I asked, and then I didn't read it. Where are y'all watching from? You're appreciating what this is? UK Ross on Y, that sounds like a UK name. You're in Arizona. SN31, Manchester, UK, Northern California, Dale Clark says. Who else do we have here? Uh, let's scroll down this way. Netherlands, we've got some folks watching. So it should be daytime over there now, right? we got Portugal representing east coast of Australia. I'd have to look up what time it is there. Asheville, North Carolina, River Dave, you're up with me. I'm in Charlotte myself over this way watching what's going on. Oh, so I'm not, I don't know how to say that, Drone Prince. Wor Wor Worcestershire? Worcestershire? Yeah, I don't know how to say that. I can't say it if it's a sauce either. Montreal is watching. we got some more folks from the Netherlands. Got some Florida, some Indiana. Folks burning the midnight oil over here, joining us from the States. Los Angeles, Salt Hill. LSR is from Israel watching right now. Some more Australians in there. And Idaho just came through. Philippines, looks like. Ontario, Canada, South Africa, no kidding. The Ocala National Forest in Florida. Joseph Flieger, Flieger actually says Texas. We got New Zealand. It's people all over the world right now watching Space Shuttle Endeavor on its final liftoff here as it has its crane assisted takeoff. No SRBs involved today, but the uh, crane and that lifting jig there bringing it closer and closer to its position. This is Jack's camera now, isn't it? This is Jack's camera. This is Jack's perspective. No kidding. I'm going to get some tagline zooms here. There's the two folks. Sort of keeping a hand on it. When you lift, you do these heavy lift operations like this. You want to make sure you got people paying attention to it for sure. The sensors and cameras and all sorts of stuff out the, out the tail of that crane, I guarantee you. But having a couple human beings down there spotting what's going on, keeping those little taglines on, making sure. They're all on radios, too. Talking to each other, talking to the crane operator across the board this is why jack set up the camera here i know at the beginning of the screen we were a little rough because we didn't have the views from our camera when it was over there on the ground it was on the other side of that wall and it was so horizontal it wasn't vertical yet and uh this is why jack chose this spot having a single person out there just choosing one spot he could have been over on the other side where he saw it when it was horizontal but he chose this and this view right here is specifically why Jack chose this spot. No kidding. When's the planned opening day for this? It's still multiple years in the making, Crafty Game. Remember, they're going to be building the building around it. Like, I don't know if anybody remembers out at Starbase when they had to, uh, you know, put the crane through the roof of the... Was that the high bay back then? Because the high bay was too short. 
because they had the building and they couldn't actually lift the stuff inside the high bay because the building was already built. Uh, here they are building the <laughs> they are building the structure. They're stacking the space shuttle, the full stack there in the flight configuration first, and they're going to complete that building around it after the shuttle is in place. I believe, I was reading through some of the stuff, and I, I, if I remember correctly, I think they're leaving the wrap on the entire time it's exposed to the elements. So in an effort to preserve it, they're not just going to let it sit outside. It's going to have that winterized boat wrap, if that's the right way to say it, on the entire time that it's out there until they get the rest of that building installed. So not the last uh, heavy lift operation that a crane operator with a lot of experience is going to have to do, because at some point they're going to be lifting the building structure over the top of the space shuttle to install the rest of the building. When does it launch? Unuse the count. Uh, we do not expect it to be launching ever until we need to call Shuttle Endeavor back in because an asteroid is approaching the Earth and we have no spaceflight hardware left. I don't know, due to sea level rise or something. We can't launch from the... No, well, this is pretty close, too. I don't know. It's like the, the makeup for a sci-fi movie as to why they had to take the roof off the California Science Center and launch the Shuttle Endeavor stack straight from the museum. I made all that up, by the way. That's not part of the marketing materials. <laughs> Anyways. They're shooting for 2025. I got some information over here that they're they're sort of shooting towards no earlier than 2025 to open that facility up. So now, folks, we're watching this sort of go along here. I'm just reading chat. My name is John Galloway with NSF. You may know me as DOS. I don't get to be on a lot of streams. I'm busy a lot of the time, so we have the rest of the NSF crew um, holding down the fort. But it's good to be back on a stream hanging out with y'all. So I'm just reading chat. Y'all got questions uh, that I can answer. If not, we'll send Garrett after him. <laughs> we'll give the question to Garrett, and he'll chase down the person that uh, knows the answer to us there. But we're just hanging out as they're swinging Endeavor around towards the rest of the stack. Oh, no kidding. Thanks, Eric. <laughs> a bunch of kids will sneak on it at the museum, and a robot will help and launch it. Rich, be rich, probably. What's going to happen is they're going to be having like a sleepover night at the museum, and the, the kids are going to get onto it somehow and launch the shuttle. <laughs> Somehow, I don't know where they're going to get the SRB fuel from. I don't know how they're going to fuel up the ET. Um, I don't know how any of that would work. But <laughs> kids spending the night at the museum. It's like a scouting trip or something. And they end up la launching the shuttle. It's night at the museum. I don't know what number they are on for those movies. Like three, four, five. Space Camp 2 sequel. It's yeah, the Armageddon say, sequel. Yeah, yeah Jack. In the, movie, in the movie Space Camp. I'm pretty yeah, sure yeah. I saw that movie already. Exactly. <laughs> I would watch it again. Do a, do a, let's do a reboot. There you go. The reboot. And Jack, if, if you jump in on occasion or you have anything to add or whatever, just let us know what the status is. Um, you take photos. Don't worry about us. We're just hanging out here in the stream, all right? Okay. I'm going to have to do another battery swap on this camera here in a little bit, but uh, I'm just going to let it run dry as I shoot photos and make sure my time lapse is, is working properly. Good deal. We'll uh, yell whenever it says change battery on screen. Because everybody will see it. <laughs> Chat, help Jack out. If if the video here says uh, change battery or whatever, what did it say before? Um, we'll all tell Jack that it's time to change the battery. I can't say thanks enough to Jack for heading out there and changing his travel plans to, to get this camera here spooled up so we could share this perspective with y'all. This is just too cool. <laughs> Eric, get you some sleep. Eric Fraser needs to go to bed. But uh, we always see you, your name over there in chat. Thanks for being a part of it. Laura Emerson as well. I, know, I noticed that name as well. Watching from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Harry Stranger. It's like the good old tank watching battery swaps. Exactly. Mary, Boca Chica Gal had that down to an art in the original tank watching days. We really have diversified our tank watching here. Like... <laughs> Technically, there's a tank on screen, right, Jack? You remember the battery swap? Yeah, no, she did. She she <laughs> she's a pro at it. I mean, it was it would. I remember the, like the camera would go down and it would be back in five seconds. And I was like, Are you, really? Are you sure? Are you sure you put put a new battery in? <laughs> <laughs> I always I, pretended. And to answer what Chad is on was I do have a dummy battery with me. And it's on my other camera. 
uh, the, the time lapse camera. Time -lapse, so. Yeah, yeah. Time lapse camera more important. We can deal with the live with the live camera having hiccups on occasion. Joseph Flieger should have been asleep hours ago, but you can't miss this. I mean, it's going to happen one time, Joseph. You're never going to see a space shuttle. I I don't know of any vehicle you'll see stacked like this. Like even a starship, like Mechazilla, the chopsticks stacking a star starship on top. That's it's not old hat yet, but at some point they're going to be doing that so often. It's like, all right, cool, another stack, great. Um, but here with the shuttle, this is the final time that a space shuttle will ever be seen being placed into this position, in this flight configuration, pointy end up. Painter Girl, this is amazing. This this is really cool. <laughs> Raptor, wait a second. Wait, it's not a good day when the Raptor vacuum engines decided to skip work. Please make sure you light Raptor vacuum engines. We need we need Starship to make it all the way to orbit next time, please. Uh, but if you're talking about working like in your human job, not your space your Starship engine job, uh, skipping work just so that you can see this. I, if you need a note, let me know. I can sign it for you. <laughs> you know it's true. Y'all know what I'm talking about. No skipping of Raptor engines. Is that our music? Chat, do y'all hear music? Did Kevin start playing music? Okay, that is our music. It fits so well with the loading icon. I don't know, chat. Y'all need me to keep talking here? Is everybody going to fall asleep to these uh, smooth tunes? All right. I almost feel like he wants us to do like an inspirational speech or something. I didn't prepare a speech, though, Jack. How do you feel about exploration, Gus? <laughs> I, I want to go to the California Science Center and explore this exhibit when it opens. How's that? I'm not even sure how loud the music is. <laughs> yeah, just make it up, just improvise. We choose to go to the moon. <laughs> That's different, just, look, wrong show, okay? If only we had the technical advisor for all mankind here to talk about whether or not uh, shuttles can choose to go to the moon. <laughs> just because you feel like it. Jack, is that the moon in the back? Is that a light on a we crane? Choose to stack this orbiter. <laughs> <laughs> Is the, is the moon up there, Jack, or is that a light on a crane I'm seeing? Not from your angle, but it'd be uh, to like the left of the... to the right from your perspective. I think it's the moon. Uh, I'm not I sure. I don't know. I, I actually don't know if it is or not. You probably got a structure blocking you there. I think that's a drone up there hovering. Y'all see the flashing lights? There was actually a uh, one-mile keep-out zone this evening for helicopters. In the media release, they asked that uh, the news helicopters, uh, I guess, adhere to the one-mile keep-out zone while they did this operation. Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple drones. River Dave, anything can be in... Unidentified aerial phenomenon. If you're bad at identifying aerial phenomenon, that's a drone. We can identify it. Let's 
it's STS-136 gopher integration. Nice. One stem nerd. It's not a bird that's flashing red and green. I'm going to go with drone. Also not a plane. Unless it's really far away. Or maybe it's like an osprey or something hovering there. There's a big bird on the screen. Space Shuttle Endeavor. There is a drone. Yeah, up in the, the background. You can probably see the green, green and red. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we can see the flashing. Yeah. Looks like they've paused here for a moment. Yeah. This is so neat. <laughs> I'm just what are they very thankful to be here. Very thankful to be able to share this with people. Yeah, man. Absolutely. <clears throat> I saw a comment earlier. Uh, it was Space Shuttle Endeavor dressed up in its Halloween costume. Wearing a sheet like a ghost. I think they should have cut out two eyes. Like holes for the eyes up near the flight deck. Hey, I know this new music. Nice. <laughs> yeah, if only it was Halloween. It would. It's a pretty good ghost costume. Yeah, it is. It's got little drapey bits and everything. Like, mom mom cut the <laughs> eyes out. There's a camera guy right next to me that heard me say that, and he's laughing. So, <laughs> quality joke, Doss. Nice, nice. Look at this drone shot, folks. That is the drone that's looking back down at, Ch at Jack. I guess they might have heard us talking. I waved. You waved. Nice. We should, like, Wait, Flash actually, hang on. Morse yeah, code. No, flashlight. Here. <laughs> We're going to see what their stream latency is. I think I see the deck where y'all are. Pretty bright light behind you, Jack. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Jack, it may be time for uh, battery time with Jack Bayer. <laughs> On your camera. Look at this. I actually think these are uh, cell phone cameras that some of the museum staff are running around with. Just the way they move, they look like something with a really small moment, like a cell phone. Jack, you copy that battery swap? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I'm doing it right now. Good deal, I'm no dude. Mary, Thanks. okay? Give me a, give me a minute. <laughs> you got to make the NASCAR noises, like the... <laughs> Like the the air gun noises, impact. I, do you understand? I'm surrounded by press. I would I would never. <laughs> hey, folks! If you're joining us, these are all live views of Shuttle Endeavor out at the California Science Center. Some views, like this drone shot, provided by the Science Center itself out there in Los Angeles. Some of the other shots, we've got our own camera out there. Jack Byer is shooting. There you go, that's Jack's camera right there. This and is the, we, so we've reached the part of the night where I wish I had a wider lens. Ah, uh, cause it's too close to you? Yeah, I already have a 16 millimeter prime. I think I'm gonna get an eight or something. Not that I'll ever have an opportunity for this again, but it never hurt to have a nice wide angle. You'll have an opportunity for this. One day the exhibit will be done and you'll be inside and be able to go look at it. Yeah, very true. Yep. Loopy, this is in fact Popsky jams. If anybody ever watched my Twitch stream long ago in Far Away, we listened to lots of Popsky jams, one of my buddies that uh, makes music. And I actually commissioned this song from Popsky. It's called I've Got My Eye On You. For my beautiful wife. And it's in the rotation here to play while we're watching space shuttles get lifted. I'm not keeping her up. She's sleeping on the other side of the house right now, so.
It does actually really fit with this. Good choice, Kevin. Thank you. Jason, we saw the first motion a little bit after, I think, 9.45 local time out there in California. That would have been 9, 10, 11. It was 9, 10, 11, 12.45 our time. It's 3.55 right now. So about three hours and 10 minutes since we saw that first motion, if I did the math right. It is 4 a.m. my time, so if I did the math not right, I'm sure somebody will tell me. This is going to be the coolest thing in California. Sorry, Disneyland, Ari Mitchell says. It's Ion Grey Wolf, like I-O-N. Because my wife is a chemist by trade. If we ever get a space cowboy situation, we'll at least have a shuttle ready for launch. We just fill in some of the commentary here with the chat. Give me some inspirational things to read out with the music in the background here, chat. Was that a was that a Cowboy Bebop reference? I feel like that was a Cowboy Bebop reference. It might have been. Is there another space guy? I mean, I, now I gotta go look up the name of the episode. He's coming down again. Yeah. It's probably where they're lining it up with those mount points, getting it sort of down to that position where they're they're using the actual structural mount points of the shuttle to bolt it to the ET. It's got those big, the sort of tripod thing up near the nose. And then in the back, the two mass... I don't know if y'all have ever seen the way a shuttle bolts to the ET, but uh, it's just these massive struts ridiculous I can't even tell you how big they are <clears throat> I can they're that big like they're that big <laughs> Jack zooms in they're that big nice Jack <laughs> they're exactly about that big they're exactly that big right there and it's got the two positions and then down below it Jack go down just a hair please because I Ooh, think crane just got a lot louder Maybe it's spooling up or down or something. Maybe it's crawling. I wonder if it's crawling when it gets loud like that. Just watch if it has some motion like that. You can see, y'all see those orange, the sort of yellow things down at the bottom there? That's where the uh, oxidizer and fuel would flow from the ET into the shuttle so that it could be fed to the RS-25s. And it almost looks like they've got the big pass-throughs, like the, the piping that would flow that prop, the flow the propellant, I guess, into the shuttle down there on the back of it so look at this oh that's that wasn't the crane they're bringing a um, aerial work platform up ah gotcha they fired that up to, to power the hydraulics to lift it up maybe can i jack can I say something? I know you're down there on the one side. Folks, Jack is right next to it down there. Um, but that drone shot that we keep getting, can I just say yeah, that it looks it? right? Like, it's just the way the shuttle's supposed to look. There you go. Yeah, it's such a weird machine, right? Because it's, it's side-mounted, and, and it, it, you know, the thrust is off-axis, and it, it's just... But at the same time, for all its, for all its oddity... It, it really does just look right. I don't yep. know. There's something about a something about a space plane, right? It's it's like when it was over on the side and they were lifting it. It's like, oh, there's an ET and SRBs and there's a shuttle and all right, I get it. Um, but now as it sorts to sort of comes together here in the correct configuration, it still needs to go down quite a bit because the aft end of that shuttle is going to hang off the bottom of the ET, right? getting the center of axis or the center of thrust from the angled RS-25s on the bottom of the shuttle, firing through the combined center of mass of the shuttle and tank and SRBs. That's why it sort of took off the pad at an angle, right? So it does need right. to go down quite a bit, but it just, it looks complete. 
when it's got the yeah. ET and the boosters and the shuttle all rapidly yeah. approaching the right configuration. I think the coolest thing about this is that it really will kind of seal the deal for the, the shuttle grand tour, right? Not just the Chris show that we want to do, but oh yeah, you know, it, it, it's an incentive to see the shuttle in each of the different configurations. And I mean, what a cool, what a cool thing that we get to have this piece of history sitting here as if it were ready to launch. It's really exceptional. Yep. Oh, they killed our lights. <laughs> <laughs> Exposure still looks good, though. Oh, you see what I mean about wanting a wider lens? Like, I, yep. I don't... You can't fit no the whole thing. There's no way at this point to get the whole thing in there. Yeah, that, that time has passed. <laughs> yep. Hey, there's your lights back on. They, they lit it up again for you. Hey. <laughs> you know what? There was something that wasn't quite right to me. And look at the wrap on the tail. You know that tail's supposed to be straight all the way down. And you get these sort of like sharp angles at the back of the shuttle. Right. But the way the wrap is, it's sort of bridging the gap like a right. duck web foot or something. It makes it look something. like it's like smoothed out or something. Yeah. yeah. It's like That's silly. Yeah. Shuttle 2.0 or something where they made it a little bit more swoopy and a little bit less are you, angular. Are you, trying, are you trying to summon Chris by saying Shuttle 2.0? <laughs> so you can no. talk about... You can talk... Uh, but, okay, so this is interesting. This is the part that Garrett was talking about uh, where they're trying to thread the needle. So I'll, I'm going to zoom in here for you if you're looking okay. at my feed. Yep. You see this, this big truss right here on the left-hand side, that big green structure? left hand side this okay yeah yeah, yeah. The, it's sort of the the structure in the back i see it yeah so the wing is going to have to go a very sophisticated point the wing is going to have to go oh. in there they have to get that notch they have to yeah. get the wing in that notch so so that is sort of a, a tricky bit that we are at right now and that's where he was saying they're not quite sure how they're going to do it until they do it and and here we are no kidding. This is so cool. Hey, Kevin, I don't know if you can get uh, my present up, but I can illustrate what Jack was just talking about here on stream. I don't know if I'll actually know when it switches here. I'm actually going to draw on it, but I'm not sure if we can do this. There we go. So everybody see where I drew right there? And this is the structure in the background Jack was talking about, right? There's this sort of thing. And they have to get the shuttle's wing down here. I may need to move up a little bit here, but uh, this is where Jack was sort of talking about. Like the wing needs to slot down in there and it can't hit this structure right here. So that is the delicate balance where they need to make sure they don't make any contact over there and they sort of fit the shuttle in the slot between the ET and everything on this side and this structure here that's part of the viewing platform and they're just putting it right down in that slot is what's happening. There we go. All right, yes, DOS art, <laughs> it is. We've had that set up but we were so many other things going on we hadn't done it yet. And uh, here we are. Thanks for pointing that out, Jack. If you see anything else like that, uh, let us know, because I did not know the background, uh, like the far side that we can't quite see there, you know? Yeah, yeah, no worries. As, as I can, I will I will point things out. You can see, um, do you want a little, little zoom action here? Uh, yeah, go for it. You can see they're, they're working with the, the a tagline now on the fixture. Uh, or some sort of line that is going down to the bottom. I assume someone will grab onto it so they can have finer control. Oh, look, there we go. Um, There's the person grabbing it. And then we've also got somebody over here on the left-hand side near where that structure is. I don't know if maybe they're just a spotter or what we've got going on there, but they, they certainly do appear to be spotting. <laughs> but, Doing yeah, their job, nice. Where we're at. This is like... You know, like when we when you see a starship full stack, Dawson, and, and it, it like, especially these days, it's like, oh wow, they lifted it so quick. 
Um, but then it gets to that last little bit, like the last yep. six feet or the whatever fiddly it bits. is. Yeah, this, we're, we're entering into that phase of the lift here where, uh, you know, you want to take things slow. You don't want to bump anything into anything else. You're going to, this is like where all the fine control is necessary, which if you think about it, I mean, check this out. I'm going to, I'm going to commit blasphemy here and move the camera away from the shuttle momentarily, but so rude. this is something that just occurred to me. Yeah. Chris is going to fire me, but oh well, it's worth, it'll be worth it. This just we got another me. camera. You're good. What do you, what do you see right here? You see the crane in a wall, right? On the other side of the wall. Yeah. Do you, do you know where I'm going with this? <laughs> the the guy driving the crane can't, can't see, see anything. anything. <laughs> oh, you're right. Not yeah. only is he on the other side of the stack, he's on the other side of the wall. The crane operator, they are on the other yep. side of the wall. Cannot see anything. Now, there are cameras and all sorts of stuff that they have installed on these cranes, and everybody's on the radio, but you don't have any Mark I eyeball contact with what you're doing with these crane controls. Right. And then this is the, like, as we were just saying, these are the fiddly bits, and yet, <laughs> I mean, how, how it must feel to be that crane operator and not be able to see a darn thing and just, I don't know, what do they got? A game of telephone? Probably a bunch of radios. Obviously, yep. not a game of telephone, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yep. Well, something they practice and work on and are experts in. Um, right. You don't just pull somebody off the street and say, hey, you know how to drive a... Oh, what type of crane was it, Jack? Did you did oh, you get the crane model? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. It's an yeah, LR. Yeah. It's a Lee Bear. It's a LR 1750. LR 1750. 1750. So you don't just pull... And actually... Good. Garrett was asking me if... Uh, how that compares to the cranes in Starbase. And I was like, eh... They're using 11,000s, and uh, for, to stack the first tower, they did the uh, 13, uh, what was it, 13,500 or something yep, like that? Yep, yep. Uh, There's another digit think, in those cranes. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an additional integer. Um, but I think, I could be wrong, but, so nobody quote me on this, but I think one of the original big cranes that we saw show up at Starbase, um, that w I slash we ended up calling Tankzilla, was a 1750. I think it was. I could be wrong, but I, I think that was also a 1750. Yeah, we'd have to dig way which back really, into the archives and figure that out. Which really puts it into kind of scale, the the difference of masses and the, and the different vehicles, given that uh, Tankzilla was called Tankzilla, and then it became kind of funny after the fact because it, Tankzilla isn't supposed to, you know, connote it's a big beefy vehicle, it's a big beefy, a big beefy crane. And yet, it ended up being dwarfed by all of the other, all of the other cranes that SpaceX brought in. So, yeah. Hey, Jack. Uh, Alex is saying in our back channel that uh, they have a 1750 at Starbase for the engine stand in the Rocket Garden. Ship 28 is oh, nice. attached to a crane like this one right now down there at Starbase. Thanks, Alex. Nice. We could show a live reason... feed of it if we wanted to. We have a camera that's looking at it right now. For some reason in my head, they have like because they did they do have two LR eleven thousands. We're like way into the weeds now, but they do have two LR eleven thousands. One at the launch site, one at the build site. But I think the one at the build site is currently being uh, dismantled and carted away since they're done with Mega Bay two. Anyway, yep. crane stuff. Thank you to coming. Thank you for coming to my TED talk about cranes. <laughs> hey, there we go. <laughs> there is a crane at Starbase. That is currently not the big, the taller yellow crane, but the shorter crane that's attached. Did I get that right, Alex? Alex will correct me if I'm wrong. But that is a live view from one of our Starbase cameras with a same model crane doing work out there at Starbase. California crane watching merch. Nice. Oh my God. Yes, please. Yes. The who do I have to, I mean, I know who I have to talk to. It's Adrian, but. Nice. Yes. I need that. I need that desperately. <laughs> We could also do like California Crane Kitchen. I don't know, it might be like a spoof kind of thing. I don't know. California Grain. C C crane Kitchen, nice. I'm gonna read a couple more things out of chat here. Um, Aaron says, wish I could be there in person to watch it. 
but I probably get thrown off the viewing platform for making truck backup beeper noises while they slide the shuttle into its parking spot. <laughs> <laughs> Any beeping noises happening? Jake? We can we can hear that there's a lot of background noise because your mic uh, noise suppression is fighting the background noise around you. That's why Jack sounds a little underwater, y'all, because Jack's in an active environment. Jack's right next to where they're lifting the shuttle right now. <laughs> There's somebody yeah, cheering, I'm, I'm, laughing. I'm sur- yeah, I'm surrounded by people right now. There's not really a way to get away from it. And yeah, also no, no, no. Machinery that's doing its thing. No, no, just like if I'm just explaining, like technically, why Jack sounds a little stuffy. It's not because Jack's stuffy. It's because it's the noise suppression fighting the background noise. Because Jack is literally there, like right next to this thing. Um, that's what's going on there. So, no, no beeping noises. Really, just like again, trying to engrave this moment in yeah. my memory i mean i guess we're doing a stream so it'll all that'll always exist which is nice yep. um, which i actually really like the streams for because every now and then i'll go back to a certain one and, and rewatch it and it's really nice to to have that sort of memory of the event versus something that's like sort of blurry and nebulous in your mind but yep just really trying to appreciate what we're seeing here this is so cool yep it's the only time it's ever going to happen and Jack, there's there's a ton of other people out there in the world, another 2,000 people that can appreciate this because you rolled out and you put a camera. The team from the museum, California Science Center, also sharing all these views. Somebody's out there flying a drone and through the magic of the internet. Um, we're sharing this with y'all. Science Center sharing this with y'all. It truly is a time to be alive. Indeed. It's just the time to be alive. It's not a wondrous time to be alive. It's just the time. Um, no, this is really this is really cool to be able to see. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see here. I'm gonna I'm gonna grab a couple more things. Uh, a couple folks pointed out that potentially the crane might be able to be operated by remote control. Oh I'm yeah, that makes sh- sense. Sure, if that's what's happening or not. But if if there's anybody you could ask, maybe you could ask if they. No, is a crane operator down there with a joystick or, or something like that versus sitting in the cab of the thing? That might be a thing. Um, yeah, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look for a comms person and ask. Good deal. I do not think that the crane operator is using our live stream to figure out how to position the shuttle. I appreciate you know your does. confidence. It is really low latency. It is low latency. <laughs> I appreciate the confidence, but I don't think the crane operator should be watching the live stream right now. Um, we don't need that view. Please watch the actual shuttle. Let me keep scrolling up to get some more questions. Emmy, Emmy, I hope I hope you don't mind me reading this one out. Emmy says, I failed my driver's test the first time I tried. I don't understand how the crane is parallel parking a shuttle without any vision. That's insane. It, it may be that they have cameras. It may be that they're using a remote or something like that. But uh, any way you slice it, it is definitely a highly skilled lift operation. This, a lot of people coming together to make sure that this happens the way that it should happen. <laughs> Tony McCoy says, give that crane man a drink when this is finished. <laughs> I think that's a good call. Let's wait until it's finished. Still scroll. I'm just reading some things straight out of chat. Debbie Lynn, it is fabulous crane work. It's good. Look at the skyline in the background as well. No kidding. Madison Swigert, you, you saw some of the things on social media with that uh, ET that was uh, wobbling around. Now, remember, some of those things that they showed you on social, they actually time lapsed those and sped them way up. So, played in real time, that tank may have not been looking like it was moving at all. And when you time lapse it, when you speed it up, we see this in Starbase a lot where you see things that are, they look like they're, wow, they're really out of control. They're swaving all over, but it's because it's been, the video's been sped up. And you see those subtle motions in time-lapse that are not very apparent because the motion just isn't as, as fast in real, in real life, in real time, right? Everything's done delicately. It's, it's a ballet, Liz to fit the shuttle into the proper slot there with the ET on one side and the structure that one day people will be able to uh, hopefully walk around on and get up close and personal with Shuttle Endeavor out there at the Science Center. (laughs) 
this is history in the making. Our grandchildren will get to see this magnificent piece of history. Debbie Lynn put that one in chat as well. That is, it's one of the reasons stuff like this is so important. I hope kids that never saw a shuttle fly appreciate it. Like come back and look at this and be like, whoa, that's how we used to get to space. Like now we've got stainless steel crew cabin. We've got space stations up there. You can go to the Holiday Inn in space or whatever, right? And I hope we get there one day. I hope we have colonies on the moon. And people can buy tickets to go to space. You can go to, oh, I just commuting to space to work today. I don't know if we'll ever get there. Maybe you'll just live in space if you're going to work there. But being able to look back and see where we came from. And the wacky idea, like, wait, it did what? It hung off the side of the... What? How did that work? Well, physics. Some smart people did some math and figured out the physics and made the shuttle fly. Josh, Joshua Dunn. Here's one from Joshua Dunn a little while back. Joshua remembers these launches in high school and watching this arrive in L.A. and now seeing this get into position. What an incredible journey for such a great piece of American history. This is one of my big things, Joshua. I, I lived in Atlanta for a long time. If you've been around the streams a while back, you probably heard me tell this story, but Atlanta's not that far from the Cape. The shuttle was still flying. I could have taken a weekend. I had flexibility in my schedule, and I could have gone down and see a shuttle fly, and every time I was like, eh, I'll see the next one. No, I'll catch the next one. I don't need to go down there. I'm busy. I'm tired. Whatever. I, I could have made it happen at some point. And I just never did. I never did see a shuttle fly with my own eyes. And that's one of the things I, I can't undo. I can't go back and ever see a shuttle fly because they don't fly anymore. I know not everybody has those sorts of opportunities, so hopefully we're, we're able to share them with you live. But if you ever have the opportunity to, to see a rocket launch out at the Cape, out at Vandenberg, something's happening down in South Texas, wallops is flying, whatever it is, right? If you ever get the opportunity... You're in Orlando, and everybody wants to go to Disney World or whatever, and there's a launch happening, which is more and more frequent these days with the way SpaceX is launching these things, right? And you have the opportunity to make the 45-minute drive over there and try to catch a launch. You should do it. You should go and see human beings send something into space by harnessing all the stuff we figured out how to do. It really is a thing to experience. We'll show you as many as we can online, but until you feel a shuttle launch, like shaking, or you feel a rocket launch, um, shaking your body, it's something that, I say it on the stream all the time, it's something that you feel. It's not something that you just watch. It's something that you feel. Look at this enhance on the backside. Nice. <laughs> Tinker, you seen one from a school bus on the way to school one morning. Looked like a missile. GG hopes they can reg reg replicate, actually. Sorry. The rumble of those engines somehow, it's something that you'll never forget. You feel it, don't you? Like, it's just it's an experience when these things take off. You can be like a connoisseur of launches. You can, oh, that has SRBs, and it's like this, and... Today it's cloudy and it sounds like this, and oh, that's the crackle. It's a nice clear day and you get this really clear crackle as the exhaust breaks the sound barrier over and over again and causes all these ripples in the fabric of, I guess really the atmosphere is what it is. Space time, just say space time, it sounds cooler. Yeah, but it's not, I mean, technically it's going it's to space. It's time for it to go to space, so maybe a bit of a stretch there, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, the, if you've ever watched one of our streams and seen the intro, the insane crowd scream is all of the media's <laughs> reaction to SLS lifting off the pad. And, you know, some of those people like uh, good old Chris G. We love you, Chris G. We miss you. Yeah. Um, like you can hear his scream in there because one, he's Chris G. Yep. Uh, and two, because he has seen the shuttle before and he's getting to feel and hear and see those solids once again. And then there's all of the other launch media that, you know, obviously many people, many members of the media had seen a shuttle before, but there's also the ones that hadn't yeah. that got to see now those SRBs and feel the, you know, the force from those, from, from all that thrust. And yeah, that's a really good, that's a really good comment from the viewer there because 
I, I do hope they have like some big honking subwoofers or something you can stand in front of <laughs> some, <laughs> somewhere in this exhibit and like you know the kid like have a button at kid height and the kid can just walk up and press the button and scare the crap out of their parents <laughs> like something like that would be really cool you know those uh like sometimes the science centers have it and it's like experience hurricane force winds right and you step in the little have, booth and you those here you put your dollar in and it blows. Yeah, they have one at the science center. They need yeah, one of one. those, but it's like experience a shuttle launch and you step into the booth and you put in your dollar or whatever. You press the button and it's like in the booth and it shakes you like you were watching a launch. I'm, I may or may not have been here with uh, colleagues of ours. I'll put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> there, there may or may not have been a discussion of who was going to go in the hurricane thing. <laughs> No kidding. Hey, here's another one from uh, Madison. The shuttle has a certain charm compared to what we have now. Starship's the closest we have upcoming, I think, that captures that. I would love to have seen Venture Star make it, though. It's just, hey, I'm look, so I mad about Venture Star. To this day, I'm, I'm so <laughs> darn mad about Venture Star. We've talked about it on stream many times. Where, oh, yeah. Yes, they were having problems with the, what was it, the hydrogen tank or the oxygen. I think it was the oxygen tank because it was composite and... Uh, you know the 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 program was canceled, and and yet it was a it was essentially a solved problem. It was just something that was going to take time. Yep. Um, and or, you know, right after it was canceled, there's like, oh, by the way, we solved this problem. <laughs> it's like, oh god, why? Oh jeez. Uh, it would have been a cool vehicle, and really, just any space plane. And that's part of what's so special about this vehicle is, it's so massive. I mean, we have the X-37B, which is super cool. Yeah. Um, but it's teeny tiny. You know, we have Dream Chaser, which is super Dream Chaser's cool. Dream coming up, we, yep. Yeah, teeny tiny. Like, nothing wrong with any of that. Like, I'm, I'm all for any space plane because I think they're cool. And it's just, to me, maybe it's because I have old person brain. You know, it's just the right way to do it. It lands on a runway. It takes off vertically, lands on a runway. Um, yep. But uh, it's just, I doubt, I sincerely doubt we'll ever see a vehicle like this again um, in our lifetimes because there's different things to optimize for that the shuttle was optimized for a very specific set of things and that's like those requirements are essentially obsolete at this point yeah it's it, it the different things like I, I love the capsules i love the fact that we have access to space because we have capsules that can splash down and land in the desert or whatever right but a capsule coming back down versus a shuttle or a space plane gliding back down for a landing on a runway as if you were arriving in an airport from space right um clearly a little bit more involved than pulling up to lax somebody in chat said that they're uh they're stacking the shuttle faster than the baggage claim at lax can get them their bags it's not stacked yet <laughs> but please remember this isn't an official stream for the california science center um this is the nasa space flight the nsf stream <laughs> where we have our own commentary. Hopefully don't get any mean emails from LAX bag handlers or anything like that. It looks like they're lowering it a little bit more and then pausing and then lowering it a little bit more and pausing it. Probably um, watching the clearances. We've got we've got we've got one tagline off to the left. You can I don't know how well you can see that. Um, one is taut and the other is not taut. I don't know what the opposite. Uh, loose, I guess. Loose slack. So, slack would be the. Only. I don't know if they're doing a little bit of rotation or, or what right now. But it seems to sort of, you know, they're t taking it easy, they're taking it slow. There's a whole bunch of people on the scaffolding. Actually, you know what? Um, if you're looking at my camera, I'll give you a little zoomy zoom here and you can see because they're definitely a bunch of people on the scaffolding getting awfully close to this vehicle yep. as they get it closer to the stack. You can see the forward attach point there. Yeah, here we go. You can see a guy in a high vis up there. You see the, the black A, the black triangle that's sort of to the left there? That was the forward attach. And we're, we're basically, we're not going to be able to see these people for much longer. There's someone right there. Yep. You can see a bunch more people on the scaffolding there, because once this thing gets a little bit closer to the stack, they're going to be obscured. But it's all sorts of people spotting right now. Yep. Just eyes yep. on it from all sorts of different angles, making sure all the... I imagine there are people tasked to each clearance. Like, you're watching this angle to make sure this clearance is good. You're watching this angle. Right. There's that big aft. You can see the big uh, bearing-looking thing that's the aft attached. Then just underneath it, you've got the uh, places where the propellant would flow in from the ET to the shuttle. 
itself. This is so epic. This is so cool. I'm so <laughs> thankful that we that we uh, threw a hail mary here and decided to try and get out here and and get a feed going and Jack, just zoom once that again, one. Thank you to the science center. Zoom that one back in again down on the bottom, and I'll I'll draw over where uh, those sure. attach points because we still do have a little bit of ways before we get there. Um, right here, there here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the part that attaches to the shuttle. Maybe I drew that sort of a little bit high, and then just oh, underneath it, again. those are the propellant lines where the propellant from the ET, the ET is over on this side, right? The shuttle is going to be on this side in the end. That is the right. most terrible shuttle I've ever seen. <laughs> I was one trying to draw those, a shuttle. Uh, one of them would be liquid oxygen, and the other would be liquid hydrogen. I can't yep. tell you which is which off the top of my head. Uh, Chris probably could. Chris could. But that's where they're actually going to bolt the shuttle up to the stack. So go ahead and it's the zoomed out shot is too good, but we had a really good shot of where the shuttle is going to take. Here you can actually see it moving down now. Do you want me to leave it here? Or do you want me to pan, nah, uh, to tilt up? Jack, do whatever whatever you think the right thing to do is. What is that I little just... shack control center shack on the left hand side? You see I that know, like let's do an extreme close up. Somebody installed an office over there. Whoa. There's not like a crane operator sitting in there, is there? I not that I can anybody. see. I think it just looks like a standard, you know, construction yeah, construction site yeah. work. So there's a little uh, security kind of camera deal. looking into the construction area from there, it looks like. <laughs> wow. It, oh, it's coming down fast now. Yeah. Like folks, if you're if you're watching it and you want to see how it's moving, you can pick a point in the background, right? Like pick a bit of scaffolding or pick something and then just watch the shuttle move past that. Like if you just focus on the shuttle as a large piece, it's sort of like, oh, is it moving? But if you look at a little piece of scaffolding, you'll see that the shuttle's sort of moving relative to it. And Jack, I, I think I see exactly what you're talking about. It moves a little bit, then it stops. And I bet you it's everybody checking in, everybody making sure everything's okay. All right, proceed a little bit more. Moves in and stop, you know? Yeah, it's pretty nifty. Oh, and now, it's, now it is moving closer to the stack. Check that out. It is. Out. Yep, it's going towards the stack right now. You want me to give you a zoom on the aftertouch? Or do you want me I, to stay where we're at? I think the lift is going to block that. And you're, you're above the plane of the shuttle's wings. So you won't be able to see that attach point when the shuttle's all the way down, will you? Or all right, the way? No, I will not. I guess down from the shuttle's perspective, which is really towards the stack, right? Right. Do you know, Jack? Are are they? Like, I guess that the crane is what's moving the shuttle this way, and the taglines are just to sort of pay attention to it. It's not people pulling the shuttle towards the stack, right? No, I don't even think they have. Oh. Uh... Tripod. <laughs> Thank you. I don't even think they have lines on it from that side yet. Although, what is this? What is this guy? I gotta hang on. Hang on. What is this guy about to do? That's what I want to know. You see that? He's got like a big rectangular thing on a stick. Is that like <laughs> a like a sh shuttle booper? I, I think it might be a shuttle. Like, booper. is that like a like a pad? Oh, he, oh he's a, he's about to boop. Is he gonna? He's, what? We, we, he, he might be about to boop it. I, I got to ask, I think I know the question, but there is no way to move the camera to the right, correct? Like you're sort of at the um, extent of where you can go? I can go a little bit further that way. Is it, Walk that way and see if you can see the underside of where we can see this work before you move the camera. Like how far are you allowed I to go that way? I'm not going to be able to get to a point where I'm like... Yeah, um, okay. You know behind or underneath the, the, the belly, but I might be able to get edge on just barely. The problem is, is there's a, a, so many photographers here. Yeah, Everyone's yeah. kind of cycling in and out and around. I sort of had to like claw space <laughs> for, yep. for my cams. Um, but I can, I can, as soon as, you know, there's, there's room over there and it's not just full of people, I'll, I'll try and, and go over there because I imagine it's going to be um, pretty time consuming as they get this thing yeah, perfectly, yeah. Uh, perfectly set up. 
He yep. did not boop it, by the way. I, I need to update the boop update is he did not appear to boop it. Um but we'll we'll keep an eye on the booper. <laughs> Thank you. Holler if you see booper action there. Um, yes, I will I will let you know. I, I wonder if it's like <laughs> <laughs> Look, we've reached that part of the stream, y'all. It's 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I am. It's, uh, what is it, one thirty over there, Jack, if I did the math correctly. But, what is uh, sleep? <laughs> what is sleep? <laughs> oh, well, I booped a space shuttle. Yeah, this, they didn't have to boop it. The crane was, uh, was well in control, and they did not have to wrangle it with the booper. Here, I'll give you a boop. <laughs> <laughs> nice. A proper uh, Heather shuttle nose boop there. Yeah. From out at the cave. You gotta boop it. It's moving again. It's moving towards the structure, isn't it? It is It is indeed. Uh, it appears to be moving sideways. Yep. Let me read just a couple more... Things out of chat here. Wow, where'd my chat window go? Here we go. Man on Mars had a question a little while ago. In an alternate reality, how would the shuttle need to be modified to be able to go slingshot around the moon once and head back to Earth? Has anybody ever done that math? Like, if you filled the shuttle's payload bay with propellant that you could somehow, I guess, use to feed the ohms, I don't know that you would try to use the RS-25s. <laughs> when the ET wasn't attached, um, could could that the was... shuttle's payload bay fit enough propellant to give it the delta V required to go around the moon? I haven't Going done back that to math. The, the Cowboy Bebop reference. Oh uh, gosh! In, in in that episode, right? They had the they had no external tank. They had like some kind of JATO. The JATO Rato, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then and then the the way they explained away the the no external tank is when they got to orbit, they like opened the, the payload bay and a little tank comes out of the payload, which is silly and ridiculous. But at the same time, it would be kind of cool if he, if shuttle had ever gotten to the point where you know, there's so many different derivatives or, or versions that they could have done. Oh, we yep, might be yep. about to get a boop. We might be about Uh-oh. to get a boop. I'm still mad we never got shuttle C. Oh wait. Yeah, kind of did with SLS. The boop's in position, like the boop is extended. We can't see the actual effective end of the boop. I've, I've I've taken many steps to the right, and I it looks like he's not yet booped it. Not, it's, I mean, it's <laughs> it's in position in case a boop is needed. It's a technical <laughs> term. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's like a, a guide stick with a pad on the end, folks. Like like that's what we sort of see is this guide stick with a pad on the end, and it's it's probably to it's sort of like a tagline, like a physical tagline where you keep control, you keep hands on things, you can feel the motion if it starts to move in a direction, and that might be what it's for to make sure that the shuttle tiles, which are all facing the stack right now, right, don't contact any of that scaffolding. I guess is the right way to say it. So, anyways, I do see people ask on occasion, when's it launching? You're probably kidding, but just in case you're not kidding, we are uh, not anticipating Shuttle Endeavor to fly here. It's being installed at the California Science Center out there in Los Angeles, California, in its flight configuration, its launch configuration, really. It's got the SRBs there, vertical. It's got the external tank. It's got Shuttle Endeavor itself. All flight hardware that'll be installed here at the museum. And uh, there are multiple other shuttles out there. Udvarhazi, just sort of sitting in a hangar, right? Here at the Science Center previously, they had Endeavor sort of up on these earthquake uh, dampeners, but it was sort of in a hangar while they prepared for this for a while, tried to get funding for this exhibit, right? I visited it back then. Out at Atlantis, you've or out, I, I, out at Atlantis, out at the Cape, you've got Atlantis, which is in that awesome space configuration, sort of at a jaunty angle, as if it's flying inside. But uh, this stack, where they're displaying the full shuttle stack in its vertical launch configuration, is what they're assembling out there in California tonight. Still a long way before the exhibit will be open. They'll have to build the building around it after they've got it in place. But what we're seeing right now here tonight is the last time 
that a shuttle will be lifted vertically. Well, we said take off, lift off, right? It's a little play on words, but uh, this is the thing. People are going to be seeing this here at the Science Center for many years to come. There's the render of the exhibit, what it will be inside the building with the vertical shuttle observation platforms that you can crawl up and look at it at different areas different altitudes elevations whatever that's going to be too cool whenever it's actually finished we're, we're getting close here i mean i'm i'm seeing the gap close slowly yeah. and steadily it's just a little bit to go do you I mean, know jack i i actually don't know this answer how is the shuttle physically attached? Like we know that like there's it, a big a big thing that touches the shuttle and then it's attached, but is it like right. a bolt or does it expand? Because the shuttle would have to detach from the tank, right? Right, and you wouldn't want a frangible bolt like right next to your TPS. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, a really I, good question. I don't actually know off the top of my head the action of the mechanism that secures the shuttle so, to the mount points. I'm immediately thinking of uh, the, the the old uh, shuttle carrier aircraft on the forward attach point. They had the, like the they had the little the, like little text right below it that said, you know, <laughs> black side down or something or something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boom. Well, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. If we, can, if we can get Garrett back at some point, I will see if we have an answer for it. Yeah. I'd be I'd be really curious, like is like what if it's frangible or if it deconnects, is it like a hydraulic thing that releases and then the tank can go away? Is it a frangible thing where you know you wouldn't want it to frange? I don't know if frange is a verb, but you wouldn't want it to fragment and have fragments right. potentially impact the bottom of the thermal protection system, right? I do right, know right. that on Delta rockets, like the Delta Force, they have frangible uh nuts actually that are captured inside of enclosures so that when they fragment the fragments are all contained in an enclosure um i don't yeah, know i just like, feel like if it wasn't if it wasn't a frangible nut then that makes sense but at the same time any kind of hydraulic like capture mechanism or i just feel like that's just so it's got to be so massy like yeah it's, it's, a lot, it's a lot of mass to carry around you would yeah. ideally want it to be on the side of the external tank, because then you know you're not carrying that extra mass to orbit. But I, this is a really good question. Yep. A, a lot of people in chat are talking about uh, explosive bolts, frangible bolts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I I would love to find the schematic of exactly how that worked and how the fragments were captured or deflected or whatever. Because then after you detach, you have to plug the hole with TPS, right? Right. There has to be a little door to, to close up. Yep, yep. <laughs> Jack. I like how every time we stop talking a little bit, Kevin starts turning the music up a little bit more. <laughs> Davey in chat says that uh, somebody is going to need to put a remove before flight sticker on the roof of the building. Once it's done, <laughs> <laughs> that would honestly that would be a pretty hilarious like uh, thing to paint on the side of the building, like a big <laughs> remove before flight mural. Remove before flight on the entire top of the building. <laughs> There's probably a designer somewhere that like architected this building that's suddenly woken up from a sleep, like bolt upright all of a sudden. <laughs> We're going to say thanks to just a couple more people here. I've seen this one come through a couple times. Uh, it was a question from Kenneth Cannon, and I've seen it in chat as well. What type of earthquake protection will the Science Center take to keep the, st the space shuttle stack safe and stable during trimmers? And there is an entire dampening system down on the bottom. And I believe it's underneath where the... The aft skirts of the SRBs, which carry all the load, are mounted down on that platform. I think underneath that platform is the dampening system that uh, helps damp out any vibrations from the earth shaking. You do an entire thing about that, like walk around that and look at it and be like, how does that actually work? And it's like, 
bunch of ball bearings on a plate or something, you know? I don't know if that's the actual answer. Das, it's explosive bolts. <laughs> it's, it's explosive bolts. It's protected from earthquake by explosive bolts. I'm almost sure that's no, no, not no, the... No, 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 the, the, no. Oh, you the asked the question. The I, yeah, it's explosive bolts. Yeah, yeah, okay. So the, um, I, did, I did not ask the question. I, I'm sitting here Googling it. But, <laughs> you Googled uh, it. Well, I wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> and each That's why we get along, Jack. With an explosive nut held the tank and orbiter together, large umbilical door openings in the aft of the orbiter let the aft bolts pass through and also had the fluid and electrical connections. Ooh, and here's a 1982 press manual. I'm going to link you the press manual. <laughs> Thanks. In case you want to do some perusing of it later. Yeah. <clears throat> R is for random says, nice to see this piece of history getting preserved. You and me both are. Random. I'm not sure which part of your name I'm supposed to say. Are they booping? They might be booping. Oh. I can no longer see the booper. Yep. We've got a, like a museum internal like cell phone camera or something here that shows the big uh, balls that are facing the sockets on the space shuttle and the sort of closing the rate of closing between those things it looks like is there a wrench involved here like when the shuttle socket goes onto the ball does somebody like reach in there with a wrench and crank it down <laughs> I don't know. Get it? Hey. Oh, there's a booper. Look, they're maintaining contact, just like a tagline. It looks I'm like they're maintaining I'm, I'm, I'm contact. Walking like edge on. I'm trying to see if I can if I can get eyes on the boop. We've we've got. I guess to, it makes the, sense to use, to use to like steady it. Yep. We've got to, the museum camera that shows the shuttle approaching the stack, and it. If they're not touching, they're really close. I don't know if those two padded surfaces are just very close to the shuttle. And they're feeling if the shuttle comes towards it or if they're actually making very light contact. Like, what are those, Swiffers? Or something? <laughs> I mean, there's something very padded and light, <laughs> I guess. I have to make sure it's clean. It is a construction site, after all. <laughs> they got it wrapped like a boat, Jack. <laughs> Yeah, getting pretty close. Yep. I think this is I'm from told the we are getting pretty close. Backside, it looks like. <laughs> A little context on that camera. I wasn't really clear where that camera was looking from. Here we go. Here's that side camera again. Oh, there's the drone. Hey, Max B, thanks for the super chat a little while ago. What do the wrench to tighten those frangible nuts look like? Well, it was probably had two flat sides and was hopefully slightly larger than the nuts were. I actually don't know. We can probably find a picture of that, but uh, thank you so much for the support, Max. We got the question about the earthquake protection. We talked about that a little bit. Kat Krugulski. Thank you for becoming a Pad Rat member. There's the close-ups of the poopers. God, they're so close. I don't know that they're touching right now. The way the space shuttle will be displayed at California Science Center reminds Kenneth Cannon of the James Bond 007 movie, Moonraker. <laughs> Wait, was it? We always we always mix this what? up. There's Moonraker, but there's also uh, yeah, there is the, the other only, one. Uh, everyone's always like, it wasn't Moonraker. It was the only lived twice or whatever. It was. I forget which one it was. <laughs> I'm loving the booper cam. This is great. It is. It really is a fantastic angle. Jeff Rowe, a little bit ago, gifted a red team membership. Thank you for that, Jeff. Tony McCoy. One of those names always pops up all the time. Yeah, you exactly. Are you are you Mike's brother? I know I've made that that joke a bunch of times, but there you go. <laughs> it's spelled the same. It looks like uh, Tony McCoy became a Pad Rat member a little while ago. Ethelene White, 
joined the membership program as a pad rat as well. Thank you, Ethelene. Sheriff Tracy gifted a red team membership. It's a name Thanks, we Tracy. see literally all the time. Hope you're doing well, Tracy. Here's a great yeah, question. I mean, it, it really, it really makes ahead. all the difference. I mean, we, I had to change my flight to, to run out here. It, Look it's at this. not trivial. So they made like the members and everyone becoming members. They made hand contact for a second there, Jack. One of the folks right here that are that's sort of spotting the very specific attach point oh, yeah. is like pulling the wrap back. Look, we are so close now. Yep. I mean, he could reach out and touch it. Reach out and touch it. Thank you, Jack. I had to do it. No, you didn't. He, you see him pointing? <laughs> he's like, is this, is this a show? Is this a shuttle? <laughs> I feel like some Ikea instructions would be helpful here, like insert ball A into socket B. It would, no, you have to get, like, it would be like stromding into... <laughs> oh, yeah, stromding yeah, into always, it's, yeah, it's shuffle var or, or yeah. something, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. And then there's one of those little cam things you have to tighten down at like a quarter turn or a half turn. Yeah, and you tighten it too much, and then it's like broken forever. So one side of a thing you're building is like, like a little kinda... wobbly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> tell me it's tell me it's almost uh, two a.m. local, but without telling me it's almost two a.m. local. <laughs> Good times. There you go. So, like on the uh, seven forty seven, it says black side down, white side up. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> Telstar says that's the ultimate birthday gift to unwrap the satisfaction the satisfaction of ripping off all that cellophane. I don't know, honestly that would be a really cool time lapse. Yeah. Even if it only took a, a short period of time just to see it all come off. Look at this so close we up now. Talking, we were talking earlier about the external tank and, and how the foam looks so good. Oh, Jack. We've got a tape measure. There's a tape measure happening now. Measure once, stack once once stack one final time they yeah. measured a lot to get here like there were a lot of measurements that had to be made but uh, look at this we had that question about the external tank foam they they spent five years restoring the tank foam restoring the, the tank, tank foam this tank was the one that they used the foam from for the the columbia investigation yeah so um it had a significant amount of rework that had to be done but it's not it's not painted it's it's foam it's so, the foam yeah, so it, no it, it seems like it, it, it's, you know, it's had some extensive work done to it to make it look as good as it does, and it really looks fantastic. Yep. Look how close we are. I mean, that tape measure keeps getting shorter and shorter every time he rolls it out. Here we go again. So close you can almost read the numbers on the tape measure. Right. Hey, folks. Big thanks to Molly Miriams here. Just gifted 20 red team memberships. If you got one of those gifts, say thanks to Molly over there in chat. Opens up a lot of behind the scenes content that we put out, early access to photos, things we don't release publicly. Here on Discord, or sorry, here on Discord, here on YouTube, you get access to some special streams and stuff like that we do. Not very often, there's as a treat, special treats. Not every day. The best part is that you can go back and watch the, the member streams that we've done, and you know what I'm going to say next, and that is, uh, the, the, I think the very best member stream we've ever done is the one where you and I did last year at the Spaceport American Cup, yep. where the, 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 the whirlwind, the <laughs> whirlwind, the dust devil, yeah. whatever you want to call it, we're, that was that was amazing. If you if you're a member and you haven't watched that yet, you need to absolutely watch that, and if you become a member. Make sure you check out the Spaceport American Cup stream we did. We did, I mean, we did a bunch of them, but we did a specific, like, members-only stream where we were up on a lift and a, a whirlwind. It was a like dust divine devil hit us. Yeah, yep. it was great. So. <laughs> <laughs> so many people in chat saying uh, thanks for those gifted memberships. And Apocalypse Cow tossed in 20 Red Team memberships to Apocalypse Cow. Thank you so much. We see that name literally all the time in the streams. And the reason we're able to bring y'all stuff like this 
is because y'all keep up, keep showing up and doing stuff like that. Miriam and Apocalypse Cow. Gifted memberships, people doing super chats, people, ah, you know, letting ads roll. I know everybody hates ads, but honestly, we turn the ad money back around into stuff like this. Flights for Jack to get back to California from covering Starbase to cover this, share this with y'all. He's almost having a real yeah, time now. Good. Jack, Cruiser and the Frank. To Starbase as well. Yep, the flight to Starbase on the way out there as well. Uh, Cruiser Frank just gifted five more Red Team memberships. It's so cool because, I mean, I, I know there's people out there who don't even know the membership program exists or, or you know, might not sign up for it on their own accord or might not be able to afford it, even though there's like a, you know, the, the like $5 level or whatever. Yep. But it, it's just cool that people can, can do the gifting thing. I think it's like my favorite thing YouTube has added in recent memory. And so yep. it, it's like, you're doing a nice thing by giving somebody additional content to something that they might really enjoy, and you're also just uh, helping us out, which is which is awesome. Yep. Telstar86 gifted one as well. It's getting so close there, y'all. It actually looked like they might have backed it off just a bit, but they really need the alignment to be good to go. I, I imagine that that's one of the reasons that it's sort of a ball and socket set up right because at some point when you get pretty close that dome the top of the ball and then the shape of the socket helps guide the two things into the proper alignment as opposed to something like like a flat uh slot tab that fits into a slot or something like that right that dome actually helps the alignment once you get it close enough but you still do it really slowly you do it very intentionally very methodically to make sure that uh these things get lined up and then that dome the ball and socket sort of does that self location at the end i've seen similar setups out at uh like united launch alliance launch pad where they roll the entire launch structure out to the pad from the vertical facility the vertical integration facility and then when they put it down on the pad they have these two half moons and the dome shape of the half moon and the cup shape of the the transporter they get it pretty close, and then when they sort of put it down, it sort of guides it into position until these huge concrete pillars take all the weight. So engineering, how does it work? Well, it works like this, folks. You, you can look at the ball and you can look at the socket, and that's that's how engineering works. Yeah, I know it's not the quote, but any sufficiently advanced engineering is there you indistinguishable go. from that. <laughs> yeah, I know it's not the actual quote. I think it's like an Arthur C. Clark quote, but it's moving yep. again. It's moving ever so slowly towards the stack, like just barely perceptible, but it's it's moving. You know, the other amazing thing is that the massive crane and the massive space shuttle, they're big, they're big things, right? And how tall that crane is and how accurately it can move this space shuttle around. It's crazy that we can even build things that do things like that, you know? I just gave you a, a zoomed in shot. I, I think from the angle that I'm at, we're going to be able to see the forward attach point line up with the, the bipod there. Oh, yeah. So, I know, I know it's not the super cool wide, but the wide is tricky because we don't have a lens wide enough to... Well, this is thing, so. this is a cool shot because once you realize what you're looking at, like the wrapped plastic part on the left hand side, is the nose of a space shuttle. Right, and That's, you get a human for scale. It's a it's a two story building. Remember earlier when Garrett said he was riding on the mid deck of the shuttle, the flight deck's right. up on the top. You're on the flight deck. You're looking out the windows, which are all the way on the left hand side, right? But the mid deck is actually underneath that you crawl down a ladder to the mid deck where you're literally sitting in chairs that they would bolt to the floor then they could move the chairs out of the way once they were doing stuff down there and then put them back in for flight or, or for re-entry i guess right um that's where they would sit it's like a two-story house plus there was stuff underneath that as well right i mean really with with any of these rockets whether it's falcon 9 or starship or the shuttle it's like you're you're essentially riding a skyscraper or a very large structure yep. you know, it's, it's it's crazy. It really is. I mean, my hat's off to all the literal rocket scientists and engineers and everyone that makes this stuff work because it's it's truly just unreal what we can make fly, especially the space shuttle, given the whole insane side-mounted configuration. Uh, 
and uh, the, you know, off-axis thrust. It's just, it's just wild. What a wild machine. You know, the other thing to, uh, to remember here is that NASA did this over a hundred times, made it a space shuttle to a stack, right. rolled it out and shipped it, right? And all of the ballet, the ballet that we see happening here and the alignment and getting the shuttle in the exact right position, NASA did this over and over. But this here at the Science Center, this is the first time that this has been done, not by NASA. You know, I wonder how many of these people that are working on this operation right now were actually part of the NASA folks that uh, did this for NASA. Like, are there people on the team like shuttle mate experts who are here helping today? That'd be a great question for the uh, for the museum. Yeah, I'll see if I can find somebody to ask. It's actually, it's kind of clearing out now. No kidding. Hang on, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go see if I can find somebody to ask that. Yep, good deal. We're getting some waving hand motions there. Yes, Bob DeBuilder, shuttle mating expert. You want more shuttles or not? See, I, I think those big mount points are going to recess into, like, those ball, the shiny ball will go into a recessed socket, and we'll see those balls mostly disappear. Like, the shiny dome part will be mostly covered up. There's Jack's view. You see the little triangle, the black triangle with the red end caps right front and center in the screen there is the forward point that'll attach. Look at this. It's like pushing the wrap out of the way. But you can see where that wrap is sort of cut open, right? And there's that big area. I have a feeling we're going to see these recess into there. Man, I'm just, I know I'm a broken record, but I'm just so thankful I got to huh. see this happen today. How cool. This thing carried yep. so many people to space and back. It did so much. I want to like, like slap it. Like this baby did so much science. Uh, <laughs> like did you just film. try to, <laughs> did you just try to slap the shuttle jack? <laughs> Doss, it's 2 a.m. and I've had very little sleep. This, this, this baby can hold so many people to space. Yeah. And payload at the same time. There you go. Slaps roof of shuttle. This bad boy can fit so much science in people. <laughs> and space stations.
Hey, Jack. Hey, what's up? Uh, if you've got a comms person around, might you ask them? It looks like their stream may be ending. But I don't know if you could ask what the plan might be there. We've got sort of an end screen up now that says, thank you for watching. Follow us on social media at California Science Center. Is there anybody you could ask what the plan there is? Yeah, I'll see what I can do. Good deal. Thank you. Still getting some live views. I don't know if this is just like an outro trying to make sure people uh, know to follow the museum or if they're intending to switch back to these other cameras or just stay with this wide camera. We'll see if we can't get the uh, the information. Like we're still seeing, well, let me make sure that's live. Yeah, that's live. We still get views on, a they we still get views on occasion, but uh, they may be shutting that down here. So let's uh, see what we can get. Nope. There it is, Kevin. <laughs> so please make sure you do this, folks. If you're watching over here, um, originally the plan was we were going to shut down our commentary and stream, and I expected that they were going to keep their stream going for a while, even if it was you know no commentary. That sort of thing, just a static view, but it looks like we may not have that. We still have Jack's camera here, um, but please head over to the California Science Center's official channel. I'm gonna link you to their stream here in our chat. Just make sure you head, there you go, thank you. Head on over and please toss them a follow on their channel. They've been doing such a good job with the uh, social media coverage of this. There's so many time lapses that they put out. Photos, they put like a time lapse camera underneath the external tank when they lift it into position and all of that sort of stuff. Please make sure you click that link. Go over and toss them a sub on their YouTube channel because they've got so much cool stuff there for you to check out. And then also on their website as well. We'll get a link over to the website. Massive thanks to the folks at the Science Center there for letting us do this. It, it Jack wasn't kidding when he said it was Garrett's idea. Um, Garrett said, hey, we should do this. And we said, yeah, that's not short notice. We can make that work. And we got Jack back out there and we went through tech checks on the gear earlier today and made sure a little, little bumpy start there at the beginning, but we were troubleshooting a lot of stuff and wanted to go live. But uh, it all fell into place. It usually does when we're when we're on the scene. But please make sure you toss a follow to the museum. There's their website. We'll get their Twitter in here as well. Just tell them thanks for us, if you don't mind. We will come up with our plan as well. Jack's going to uh, figure out what his schedule's like. We still have our view for, for now, I guess, but at some point, I know a lot of y'all have been up for a very long time and lacking the close-up views and stuff like that. Maybe time to be getting some sleep. There's their, thank you, NASA Spaceflight. Your gentleman and a scholar. Putting a link to the California Science Center's Hey, Doss, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, Jack, I can hear you. I have some answers. Ah, might have been a little hiccup with the audio there, y'all, but uh, Jack is back with answers. Um, first off, the the crane driver is is um, not on remote control. They're able to to do a, a you know relay, but the crane is is mostly, I'm told, um, like large movement control, whereas. 
I had no idea. The find control is these guys on this orange lift right here. Really? Yeah. Like controlling it via the. There's a, they're, they're at the control box right now <laughs> on this side of the thing. And so the actual uh, assembly that spreads out on both sides of the shuttle is what can move it very fine increments? Yep. You that can one. almost see that. Look at where it attaches to the front of the shuttle, and it looks like it has some uh, some range of freedom up there where it could move the shuttle back and forth on the attach point where it attaches to the yellow gauge. No kidding. Yeah. And the other the other answer I have is um, yes, there are many many people for, that worked stacking the the shuttle um, nice. in, the, in when the program was still active that are out here helping that, it, nice. that were integral to being able to make this happen today, um, including people that I think were had worked on on SLS as well. So I, I would I would say probably centuries of, of <laughs> human time experience. experience yeah work yeah so uh the answer there was many like an, an emphatic many nice it makes perfect sense like that's how you you get the thing stacked you get the people who stacked it over a hundred times you know yeah exactly So what's your plan, Jack? You've been out there for a while. Um, we're getting down, maybe not to brass tacks, but to frangible bolts. Probably not frangible anymore, I would guess. But uh, well, what are I've you, got what are more you batteries. Do? Yeah, I've got a chair. I've got some water. I'll be here <laughs> as long as you want me to be. <laughs> you can't pry me away from this. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a couple yeah, I mean, discussions can, can... in the back channel here and, and see what the plan is going to be. Yeah, I'm up, I'm up for whatever. We can uh, wait till this thing's like fully bolted down, or we can. I mean, it's it's so close right now. It's not like they're gonna pull it back out of here and be like, oh, never mind. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, it's, I'm up, I'm up for whatever. <laughs> Chat saying you should stay there till sunrise to get the uh, sun rising on the stack shot. Oh man, <laughs> that's you know, media access ends at 10 p.m. or 10 a.m. tomorrow. 10 a.m. So. Yeah. I do have my Land Rover. I could just lay down on the sleeping bags I have in the back of my Land Rover. And... Who, who am I kidding? I, I wouldn't sleep. <laughs> How could I sleep knowing this is a couple hundred yards away? Crank it up.
Hey folks, we're still here. I do think we have a plan though. We just need Jack to check in. Yeah, Jack's checked in as well. Um, what we think we can support is we'll go ahead and leave this view going for as long as Jack is out there and uh, Science Center's cool with it, it seems. Originally our plan was to send everybody over to their stream that would be the views of the shuttle when we were done with commentary and then theirs would go on till the morning, right? Um, but Jax is still over there and has the uh, camera going and there's no reason for us not to keep hanging out, playing some music and sharing the view. Don't expect there to be any big views, any big moves or anything like that um everything now is just the final securement and that's why they ended their stream but jack is game to keep the camera going and kevin is game to keep the stream going um over here maybe we'll update the ticker at the bottom of the stream to say that uh it's going through the the final attached final mating but that is our plan here with the nsf team we're gonna be back this what afternoon evening Let me go to nextspaceflight.com real quick and see what time this other stream is because we have a stream happening out of the cape this evening live stream schedule ng20 is an instantaneous window at 1207 p.m eastern standard time which would be noon so we're going to be live over there at about 11 a.m. Eastern Time. That puts us at 5, carry the 1, 10, 6. That's about six hours from now. We will be live here on the channel bringing you coverage of NG-20, that Northrop Grumman Cygnus capsule flying on top of a SpaceX rocket out of the Cape. ISS resupply mission. So I'm not going to be on that one. We'll have other folks of the team making that one happen but that's the plan for this evening we'll leave this camera going as long as jack can stand it and we will go ahead and turn down our commentary for now jack are you still there you want to pop in real quick and uh let everybody say thank you to you let's see if jack unmutes folks Oh, don't do not do not thank me. <laughs> don't thank you. Uh, Whatever, yeah, don't dude. Thank me. I I appreciate it. Um, but really, thank you to the California Science Center and to to Garrett for for having us out here because this is, I mean, once in a lifetime, right? Yep. You're never gonna see it again, folks. That's why it was important that we uh, got this out here for y'all. But in chat, don't listen to Jack. He's not your dad or boss. Tell him thank you for rolling out and changing his schedule and, and getting all this stuff out there and setting up everything again solo mode not a team of 15 people i know all the other uh, news agencies and stuff like that they're all going to take off and go off do their thing and jack's still out there sending y'all a live stream of it so say thank you to jack for the stream tonight yeah, remember, remember when i said it was uh it was really crowded with photography everyone's gone oh everyone's <laughs> gone yep everyone, it's nice and nice and chill now I'm, it's I'm, over it's, yeah, but no, we still got a vehicle to attach to a to a stack here. So I got to see a guy with a booper in his hand. You know, there's still <laughs> stuff happening. So I'm gonna let my my time lapse roll out and uh, and finish off, and then I'll see what I end up doing. I guess I could always, if I wanted to, I could sleep a little bit and then come back out in the morning for that sweet sunrise shot. But uh, either way, we'll be live for a little bit longer at the very least as my time lapse finishes up. And yep. just once again from the bottom of my heart. Thank you to all of our members and everyone that supports what we do so that we can do cool stuff like this. And I'm, I'm incredibly lucky that I get to see cool things like this. And I think we're all at NSF incredibly lucky that we get to share things like this to people around the world who might not otherwise be able to see or experience it. So I, I just, I'm just very thankful that we get to do this. So yep. thanks everyone. Absolutely. Folks, you got Jack's social media up there in the corner. If we have anybody that can do a link in chat as well, he's at the Jack Buyer over on the Everything app. Probably be posting a time lapse over there when you get it off the camera that finishes up, but make sure you toss him a follow. And thanks, y'all, for saying thank you to Jack. Also, Kevin was pushing all the buttons here this evening. 
You don't hear him on the stream. We hear him on the stream sometimes. Y'all don't hear him on the stream, but there he is. Look at him. Look how happy he is to be running space shuttle live streams. Doesn't he look happy to y'all? <laughs> Say thanks to Kevin as well for making all of the technical stuff on the production side happen this evening. We had Crispy on. Y'all know we had Crispy on earlier. Crispy really did make it um, here. We really Part of the reason we wanted to get this done was so that Crispy could hop in here and tell some stories because he is the shuttle fan extraordinaire. He started NASA space flight over 17 years ago because of the love for shuttle and the community that was built around that. And uh, that's why we're all here because Chris Bergen started NASA space flight many years. Look at that. Is that a tracking camera on the left-hand side? That's sweet. But you heard from Chris earlier in the stream, and uh, hopefully we have many more opportunities to hear shuttle stories and enthusiasm from Mr. Chris here on our stream. So I'm, I'm holding him to that shuttle grand tour. We're going to get him over here to the States when all these exhibits are open, or maybe if they're not. And we're just going to drive him around. We'll show him what driving's like in the States. To all the different space shuttles that he loved for so many years. It has and to happen. It has to happen, Jack. It has to happen. Like literally it grand to tour. Especially because whenever he, we tell him like what kind of drive we're about to do, yeah. he, every time he <laughs> remarks, he's like, Oh, I could I could drive across England in two hours or something like you know, something along those lines of like, Oh, I could never do four hours in a car. I'm like, Chris, yep. try twenty four. Try twenty four. <laughs> try, try thirty try thirty six nonstop. <laughs> like it's we'll we'll oh man, talk about member content. <laughs> just Sweet. strap Chris in and, and make him endure it. We can, we can get him into New York City to see Enterprise, and we can go down to Uverhazi, and we can go on to, I guess, to see Discovery. We can go on down to the Cape to see Atlantis, and you then we'll be like... Florida, we have to get him to have uh, sweet tea, and we can just have, like, a... We can have Chris review sweet, sweet tea. tea. Like, the look on his face. <laughs> I, I need to see the look on his face when he tries sweet tea. He's going to be like, sweet what is this? iced tea. Nice. <laughs> And then we'll put him in the car for 30 hours to drive from the Cape over to Starbase. We'll have to stop by Starbase. No shuttles there, but maybe they'll have an HLS nose cone or something for us. And then we'll get... What is it from Starbase out to LA? It's like 24 hours according, oh, okay. to, the, according to maps. But, you know, when you factor in gas stops, sanity stops, um, and, and food, it ends up being more like 30 to 36. Good grief. <laughs> Maybe we'll fly him from Starbase to LA. That's a drive. <laughs> he could go by. He could hey, go by West Texas hey, if though. You want, if you want, if you want uh, road trip cam, I can make it happen. It will be, it'll be like we're playing Desert Bus, except it'll be <laughs> in real life, <laughs> and we will lose our minds. You know, we'd put a like a switcher on the dash, and we'd put cameras all inside the vehicle, like the wheel well cam and the passenger cam, and then the, like the back cam. Like we would rig up a vehicle with cameras and cannonball it well maybe not cannonball it live but uh you know <laughs> road Real trip life, it live plus. let's do it yeah <laughs> let's do it that would be a thing we'll get chris over here to uh share that with i guess to share that with chris honestly is the right thing to do anyways i sit here i'll just keep talking y'all but uh my name is john galloway for nsf you may hear people refer to me as dos either way <laughs> I think my mom calls me dust these days, but uh, thank y'all so much for showing up. Thanks for all the support. Thanks for gifting the memberships to sp spread the love around in chat. Um, just giving more people opportunities to share in some of the stuff that we can do. I can't say it enough. Jack can't say it enough. We're able to do what we're able to do because y'all keep showing up. And whether you're doing super chats or you're gifting memberships or whatever, you're just letting ads roll. You're just here. You're just saying things in chat. You're just asking questions. Or you're talking with other people that love this sort of stuff, too. Or you're over you're retweeting something. Whatever. I'm going to say retweet. I don't care. You're on one of the... So whatever it is that you do to be a part of the community, we're able to do this because y'all keep showing up and y'all make it happen. So we'll be here as long as we can to continue sharing what's going on with space. You know what to do if you need to make it back to the channel. Toss us a follow, like, and subscribe. Whatever. Y'all know. We're going to go ahead and shut down our commentary for now. We appreciate y'all sharing this experience with us. And we will see you nerds later. Stream is going to keep going. We're just going to stop talking. Thanks for watching, y'all.
and here we go. Chamber pressure looks good. Nothing to be igniting the flare, correct? Right?